We don't get caught on the table. I'm still with two Cali clocks and ten rollers. Cali clocks and ten rollers on table two. I'm table three, Tony Rudd and Zach Wilkinson. Tony Rudd and Zach Wilkinson on table three. Table four, Scott Chisholm and Colin Pilcher. And table four, for Scott Chisholm and Colin Pilcher. Table five, Jordan Templeton and Michael Oliver. Jordan Templeton, Michael Oliver on table five. On table six, Luke Rickleford, Andy Burton. On table <coughs> Luke Rickleford, Andy Burton on six. Table seven, Dallas Kavir and Ben Mackey. Dallas Kavir and Ben Mackey on seven. On table eight, Matt Challen, Thomas Jones and Knox. And Matt Challen, Thomas Jones and Knox on eight. Table nine, Danny Evans and Martin Fisher. Danny Evans and Martin Fisher on nine. On ten, Daniel Wiley, Stephen Campbell. Daniel Wiley, Stephen Campbell on ten. On eleven, Rob Duncan, Steve Thompson. Rob Duncan, Steve Thompson on eleven. On twelve, Dean Moore, Scott Dunbar. Dean Moore, Scott Dunbar on table twelve. Table thirteen, Lee Ray, James Peck. Lee Ray, James Peck on thirteen. And on table fourteen, Ryan Fleming and Jason Shaw. Ryan Fleming. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go Yeah. <laughs> 
Testing, testing. Okay. Well, morning, everybody. Uh, well, just a few adjustments there, just to try and get me online. Mm -hmm. um, well, morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to, uh, well, not so sunny Scotland, but... Uh, yeah. The final day. Yes, it is. Final day of the RPA tour. Um, we're on with the amateur event at the moment. Um, 
Oh, this is last 32, isn't it? Um, this match is the last 64. For some reason, it, did, oh. it didn't get played last night. That was because uh, Scott got to the final of the uh, main event, weren't it? So yeah, that'll be why. Was there two matches that, uh, because of that sort of incident, that sort of happening? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Oh, and then, uh, of course, I'm drawn in this box now by uh, Luke Johnson. It's come all the way from Reading. Not <laughs> far for you, that is it? Yeah, bit of a trek. I know, and, uh, and you're waiting for the winner of this one, so you're telling me, is that correct? I am indeed, yet yeah, last 32, so looking forward to it. Mm, that's good, and I mean, with uh, Scott Gillespie uh, 4-1 up, uh, shouldn't be waiting too long, hopefully. Hopefully not, hopefully not. I was told 9 o'clock, so come down and it's uh, waiting for another match is a bit disappointing, but it is the way it is. Well, we all get told 9 o'clock, don't we? Well, that's it. Get down here for 9. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's all good stuff. So, uh, have you played um, any of these guys before at all? Um, um, yeah, I've played uh, Scott before, Scott Ross, um, at the last tour, actually, in the Open. And uh, lost 7-4, I believe. It was a good game, but... Yeah, I've, ne- I've never played Gillespie. It'd be nice to play Gillespie. Yeah, I've played Scott once. Uh, played him in the world when I was at Lakeside. Um, it was only one, one of the flyers, but uh, that's the only time I played him. Six four five three. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, these two are really good quality, aren't they? And, uh, did you watch the final last night? Did, was you um, watching at all? No, I was playing uh, Greg over at the in the corner, so I didn't get to watch the final, unfortunately. Oh yeah, you beat uh, Greg Batten last um, tour's amateur winning, didn't you? Yeah, it's uh, about time I sort of pulled my finger out this, this year. <laughs> you're not you're not giving up yet, are you? You want to win this one today, don't you? Well, that's that's the plan. Hopefully, but that's what you're here for, isn't it? I'm sure you'd be all right. Who you got today then, Mark? Well, um, I've got Harry Irwin in the pro event. Uh, we get a bit of a line, don't we? We have to play till half ten. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it helps. Not a lot, but it helps. Uh, has Scott come too far here? I think he has for the, uh, for the Reds. Yeah, if they've already wanted us, oh. I mean, Scott Ross, look at the, look at the odds on that. Seven to one. To win yeah, this it's match, massive. Which is, uh, I'm just wondering if there'll be a few people. I mean, he's ca- cause he's capable, wouldn't he? Of yeah, winning this yeah. One, yeah. There's no doubt about that. I know he's playing a good opponent in uh, Scott Gillespie, but uh, he's more than capable. He's now gone to 4 to 1 because of uh, Scott messing up this frame. Yeah, and, uh, if, well, I mean, if. If you don't make anything of these reds here, he's in a bit of trouble, and he can see jealous. You'd expect this to. <coughs> Sorry, Scott Ross to get these anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd expect him to get these. Looking at some latest scores in the uh, amateur event, I uh, see uh, Chris Bowen is 4 2 up on uh, Stuart McCulloch. Uh, we've got Tony Rui, um, he's 5 3, he's leading Zach Wilkinson by 5 frames to 3. Uh, Scott Chisholm is beating Colin Pilcher 5 2. And Danny Evans is 3 2 up against Martin Fisher. And Stephen Campbell is uh, five two up against Daniel Wiley, so uh, they were sort of latest results so far in the uh, amateur. So who's your uh, well apart from yourself, who's your tip of the day for the amateur? Um, it's a difficult one to be honest with you. I think um, you got to say Andy Blurton's got a really good chance because 
you know, he, he got to the semis of this last event. He got to the semis of the main last night as well, the Open last night. So yes, um, um, got a good chance. Yeah, he's been really consistent over these last couple of tours, hasn't he? So he's been yeah. doing really well. And there's, he's, oh, he's playing uh, Luke Ridlesworth now, isn't he? I wonder what that score is. Uh, oh, he's a, oh it's, well, and he's 6 0 up. I didn't even see that 6 uh, on the side. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, Luke, Luke's getting a treatment over there, isn't he? <laughs> well, so he just needs the one more frame because all these amateurs now are best of 13. What's your thoughts on that at the moment? Is it good or bad, or um, would you I, rather have a double limb? Or I, I was saying I prefer it this way. I think if you, I just don't like the do- double elimination tournament. It just it's a long process. You know, I'd rather know if you've lost, you're out. You know, if, if you lost, you're not good enough to win the event. Simple as that. Right. Yeah. So I'd, I'd rather play a longer race um, and just be straight knockout. To be honest. Oh, that's good. I mean, I mean, making it the best of 13, it does give you guys a better run for it, because you've been playing, was it best of nine for a couple of years yeah, or something in, like that? In a, yeah, in a best of nine, it really is anyone's game. There's a little bit more a little bit more to it. In a, yeah. But, yeah. I'll tell you what, Gillespie's got these out well, hasn't he? He has, and... He's got a chance here, hasn't he? Yeah, if you can play that red down the top, bottom right, sorry, and maybe stun across for the red in the middle... I mean, it's still a tough out, isn't it? It's but, very uh, tricky. But he's been given the chance. He wasn't expecting that chance after he messed up in yeah. the, earlier in the clearance. So there we go then. We should be able to see this is in. We might be on this shot. It's just missed. missed. Well, Scott Ross needs to get these. Don't need to get back in this match. What's the uh, Ryan Davy score? I'm sure the Scottish. I think he's playing another Scottish lad. Just have a look. Yeah, there's nothing up on this, so I'm not sure whether the tablet's working or what. But uh, well, can you see him playing? Can you? Oh, he's over there. Isn't he? <laughs> So yeah, that's a good shot. It's still tricky, this, isn't it? Because I don't think that yellow passage does it. Can you see there in your line at all? Um, from one of the camera angles, it doesn't, no, it doesn't pass. Doesn't pass. So he's not flicking that off that red, is he? That's, that's, that's kamikaze. Massive. That's a massive shot, that is. But what else has he got on? Well, you has, know, has he got to go up and down and try and sort of land on it in, one of the, in the top corner, in the middle? Or, I don't know, it's it's a big shot, this. Definitely wanted to land on it straight, didn't he? So he could just drop it in the. Uh, yeah, in the can middle. he can he get the white on the blue spot and maybe play the cut on the yellow? I don't know whether the black would be in the way. Yeah, that, again, that looks tight, doesn't it? Let's see what it is. Just playing a little Ooh. containing safety. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it, really? I mean, he's lost control, so. Uh, and Gillespie here has got a good chance here of getting a good safety as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Just he's to... looking at the cross double. Again, that's a massive shot, isn't it? But it, it's definitely on. It's... Oh, oh God. dear. Well, he's not on it, but. Um, he's still at the table, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit of a slice of fortune, but. Uh, It's never double, is it? Well, tap it. Mm-hmm. The bar's open. <laughs> I think they've made us all aware. Well, up, up and down? Yeah, I mean, he he's, should cover the pocket minimum, really. He could be leaving that in the other corner, though, won't he? Mm. On the pace. Ooh, oh, he's, he's missed it. Played it pretty bad. Do yeah. that. Let's give the frame away. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
So that's uh, Scott Gillespie 4, uh, Scott Ross 2. That's a massive break from Scott Gillespie there. I think you'll be taking reds. Sorry about that, folks. Just have to nip to the top table. Go back to the match then. Uh, Mr. Lock Lockman Luke ever? Um, no, uh, Scott Gillespie's broke off an absolute dream, and he could he could go reds or yellows yeah. Oh, I see. All right, so we're just waiting on the first ball. He's uh, taking on the new one. Scott and Mel having a little word with each other. I don't know what that was about. I think it was about because um, obviously we're, we're showing it in the stream um, that they're not allowed to concede the frame without the sort of black sort of being potted. So uh, oh, I see. I um, see. We sort of don't want to sort of encourage that happening on stream. I mean, what happens sort of in the arena is a bit different, but on the street it's not. It's not. It's not sportsmanship for the game, I think. I know mean, he's got respect yeah, for the players. Especially with it's a the tough one, isn't it? Collar you know? on board as well. Yeah, and we shouldn't be conceding for him. So anyway, I think uh, I've seen him off. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's probably right, isn't it? So, and uh, if you sort of betted on, you know, Scott Gillespie, you don't want to see him doing it himself either, yeah. himself either at all. But anyway, back to the game. So uh, we're just waiting for him to select what well, he's obviously got to take the others because uh, you can see any problems here for him, Luke? Here? No, I think he's landed perfect here to screw back on his difficult ball with the on the pink spot. Is yellow on the pink spot? He's screwed back now. Yeah. Oh, sorry, just, I was just going to stop you there. Um, I'm just looking at the odds. I mean, when, when we came up here. I mean, Scott Ross was seven to one. Yeah, and he, he's only won one frame. I mean, he's now come seven to two. Yeah, that's it's amazing. The odds change so quickly in this game. Mm, definitely, someone's keeping a close eye on it, aren't they? Try and get on your one and three. Yeah, he just didn't quite screw back enough mm. on the last shot. Shouldn't have any problem here though, should he? Because I'm too red should do the job in the house. Mm, I was have to get out of his chair again. He's been busy this morning. He's yeah, had really. to uh, Speak to one of the players who's just come back and smacked the uh, one of the uh, table and shook his hand. That's the end. He's out. Oh, looks like Mel always got his arms full today. <laughs> Professionals ain't even come on yet. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll act in a good manner today. <laughs> so, it's got Gillespie. Go from the two. Okay, that, them odds changed again. Look, as soon as another one, that black is slot loss has gone six to one. <laughs> so, five two. I think those odds are about fair, to be honest with you. Yeah, they are now. Yeah. I mean, so again, it's got Gillespie. Still needs two frames, isn't it? You know, I'm not saying he's not capable of getting yeah. two frames, but. Uh, Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
It looks like Andy Blurton's run, isn't he? So uh, one of your tips of the day is through. Yeah, pretty convincing that was. How did uh, Rob Donkin get on, do you know? Was he still in 32 as well? He was, yeah. I've got uh, his name down here. I've got your name down here twice. Yeah, I noticed that yesterday. Got me playing both Scott and... Well, Scott Gillespie and Scott Boggs. We'll probably have to play two games, then. Yeah. (laughs) Got to do it the hard way, I guess. Well, the easy ones, anyway. (laughs) These ones, these two, aren't they? Get the easy games out of the way. (laughs) See that one there, not unless you can. Another uh, last 32 match here. We had uh, Ryan Fleming versus Jason Shaw. Ryan Fleming's won 7 2. Jason Shaw, wow. That's a great result for him, man. Especially, you know, I was expecting big things from Jason Shaw this weekend. Mm. So. It's difficult to come across from Nineville, um, especially if he doesn't practice, but he does hold a queue every day. Mm. So, yeah, I agree with you on that one, but. Uh, I mean, we have seen some quality uh, finishes from him. I remember watching him, so... Yeah, he's a class player. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. He's uh, more than welcome to come to any of these tour events. Anyway, we want, we want all the top names here, don't we? And that's, that's why you come here, don't you? Because you want to play the best, don't you? So yeah, amazing. exactly. So then... Again, can Scott Ross get back into this match? What do you reckon to the odds now? Look? He's gone back to that 72, did not he? Just every shot's just changing every time. Yeah. Right? <coughs> yeah, that's a good shot, that was. Positive, wasn't it? Really positive. Five three. He's not letting go, is he? Definitely not. I can tell everyone there's uh, the next match on here after these uh, two are finished. Back taking the bat- battle of Scot- Scotland, is it? Scotland Pat. Battle of Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got a pro event on after this. Uh, Luke Sanchez is going to take on Neil Raybone in the best of fifteen. Um, that comes pretty much straight after this match finishes. So uh, hope you're looking forward to that one. Are you um, sort of trying to get into the pro ranks for next year, Luki? Is that one of your uh, um, it's, goals? It's definitely something I want to do. Um, I don't think it will be this uh, next year. I think maybe I'm sort of setting sights for the year after. I see. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to. I, I had the opportunity uh, last year. I finished finished high enough to take the spot, but I just didn't think I was ready to to, to take on the pro status. So um, um, that's yeah. fair enough. No, and, you, and you get a choice, don't you? So uh, you do, yeah. That's, that's okay. And, I mean, sort of. Um, have you sort of? I think. I think when I was talking to you early on or late last year, you weren't sure when you was coming on the tour. So was that sort of still in your mind a little bit? And well, I mean, I've seen you on every tour since. To be fair. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it was last year that I wasn't on the tour. I played on two or three events. Um, I just couldn't really commit to the whole the whole five day schedule, the whole five event schedule. Yeah. Of course. Um, but now I've got a sort of sponsor as well. It's made things a little bit easier. Right. Okay. Do you want to mention your sponsor on there? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, well, her name's so. Carly DeFreitas. She uh, owns Red and Porn Snooker. Okay. And she also um, sponsors the tour. Sponsors doesn't she? the she tour does as all well. your shirts and that, doesn't she? For us, so she does a great job, doesn't she? She so. does. Yeah. She sponsors uh, about f- I think four players on the tour. Yeah. Oh, that's good then. She's really keen, isn't she? And she comes to every tour, doesn't she? She does, so, yeah. She enjoys it. Yeah, she's a really friendly face around the tour, doesn't she? Always talks and that, doesn't she? So, mm. 
likes to be part of it. She's a good lass, to be fair to her. Yeah, and we thank her as well for uh, obviously sponsoring the tour and the shirts and that, because they are really good quality shirts. Mm. Three to one now, then. Do you want to have a bet on Scott Ross now? wonder if there's anyone out there who had a bet at sevens. Yeah, that'd be a good one, wouldn't it? I'm a little bit farther. It should be okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think that red goes in that left middle, does it? Can you see there? Oh yeah, definitely goes. If you look at just camera two, definitely goes. Just a case of finding the gap here. Didn't really want to hit the yellow. And it definitely goes. It's just left it a little bit awkward again, hasn't it? Has he just got to drop this red in and take the one in the right middle, has he? Or yeah, I think so. I think he's got an, an angle to come off of two to. He definitely wanted to go left off. middle. Yeah, he, he wanted to be straight, yes, really, didn't he? Yeah, he wanted left middle first, didn't he? There's no doubt about that. I mean, he, he could play on this one in the left middle if he wanted to, um, but then we'll have to hit it with a little bit of pace, which will need a lot of control, and that's what we're seeing. Oh, then. Oh, That's dear. not good. No, it's definitely left him some work. It's where we can roll us in dead weight to stay on the red into the middle. It's difficult because there's a real good chance he could snooker himself in. Mm. I think probably the clip in the right middle, and then obviously one in the bottom right, and then just well, not, not sort of pray that you land on it straight. You've just got to aim to get on it straight. Yeah. Because there's plenty of room to play that black in that top right corner, isn't there? So he's got any other option now. And he's just trying to force it. He was trying to get the perfect angle, wasn't he? And sacrifice the pot. Still a bit of work to do in this frame, Mark. Yeah, but he's got balls around there to uh, obviously nudge the tougher ones out. Uh, and the one on the cushion in the top right, you know, you don't see any problems with uh, Scott Gillespie getting that, do you? Just let that go a little bit as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he's sort of... Uh He still will play the yellow next to the red, but the white's going to be travelling. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to get on the next yellow, especially when you're travelling up and down. Um, you've got to be pretty much accurate on your game there, haven't you? Oh, uh, Rob Donkin is playing as we as we speak. I don't know if they got the the tab on. Looking at that. This is waiting for his opponent. Only if Rob Donkin was the other game that never got played. Oh, okay. Possibly. Um, Scott's taking his time over this one, isn't he? I mean, it is important to get to six, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big frame, this one. Going off the red. Oh, and the white. Well. Anywhere but there, really. He's, he's got a real tough, tough pot on now. Well, he'll definitely take it on, there's no doubt about it. Is there, really? Yeah, he's got no safety on here. Nothing guaranteed, definitely not. Tell you what, he's played that really well. Yeah, really good. Well. 
So for your for all the Scottish fans out there, you got uh, Scott Dunbar has won seven two against Dean Moore in the last thirty two, and Stephen Campbell has won seven three against Daniel Wiley. And they're all last thirty two, is that right? So they're in the sixteens now. Yeah? I believe so. Yeah. Very good clearance there. It was. Right, I'm going to have to go. Uh, I'm going to change from ready for my match, so I'll, I'll leave you with uh, Luke Johnson. To mm-hmm. finish it off. Okay, thanks very much. these reds Just a quick update on uh, some of the scores around around the amateur event. You got uh, Chris Bow Ron is five four up against Stuart McCulloch. Tony Brew is six four up against Zach Wilkinson. Um, you've got Danny Evans four four with Martin Fisher. And that is pretty much what it at the minute. Scott's going to be leaving the uh, red on the side route till last. Let's be six, Scott Ross four.
Okay, so just looking at the uh, the chat on the IPA website. Um, Chicago Q Sports has asked what round you have to reach to win any money back in the amateur event. I believe it's last 16. Um, so yeah, I think from last 16 onwards you do win money. So Scott's in another good position here to uh, take out these yellows. Well, um, I think that could be game over. All, uh, all the reds do go, so it's uh, it's just about planning the uh, route now. So uh, one more stun shot and uh, it should be an easy black into the middle. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to it. Uh, so next up is the pro event. Uh, you've got Neil Raybone versus Luke Sanjis.
On table eight, my pick was Harry Irwin. My pick was Harry Irwin on table eight. Table ten, Paul Hartness, Roman McCarthy. Paul Hartness, Roman McCarthy on ten. And on table twelve, Andy Mack, Donald and Nathan Bridges. Table 16, side of the wall, courtesy. Side of the wall, courtesy. Side of the wall, courtesy. Okay, two, Craig Marsh, Ben Rogers.
Good morning. Welcome to IPA tour number three in Glasgow. Sunday. A few rough pairs of eyes this morning wandering around. But it's the start of the pro event and the end of the amateur, so it's always a good day for pool fans. My name's David Hang, I'm hoping to be joining the box by somebody at some point, so now I'll have to do it on my own and bore you guys to tears. We've got a last 32 match in the pro between Neil Rayburn and New Pro. A very young lad called Luke Sanji is very good. Set at two all at the minute. Neil dishing up in the last one. It's first to eight in the pro event. And it stays that way all the way through, I think. And if any of you pool fans out there watched the final of the Open last night, what a fantastic match that was between Jason Gillespie and Mark Farnsworth. Mark Farnsworth coming out the victor eventually, but a very high quality match, great entertainment. And it was a brilliant atmosphere in here, reminiscent of the darts on the Moscone Cup on a smaller scale. So Luke, I should imagine he's taking the one at the rail into the big pocket. We'll screw over for the red into the left middle. Ooh, nice little kiss, but no problems there. Just looking where he wants to leave the white. Depending how straight he is, may have to force it a little bit. Now he's got a little bit more angle. That's fine. Might be a difficult shot for some of us amateurs, but these pros don't usually miss these. Don't want to put the curse on him. Good shot. Neil Roebone, who's the 2011 World Masters Champion. Very consistent player on the tour. He's made a ball off the break. And at first glance, these look pretty good. Probably be opting yellows, I'd have thought. Well, I say yellows, there's a little bit of a problem at the bottom left. So only one out of them three get goes.
Well, I've had consistent viewing figures this weekend. It's never really dropped below, so like 300 is up to nearly a thousand last night. It's all good for the IPA. Luke's a Welsh lad, uh, he's always sat with Craig Marsh and uh, Jordan Shepherd and that's to me, I think he's only 18 or 19 maybe, he's just turned pro this year, had a fast, fantastic year in the amateurs last year, he really is a remarkable story of what's possible for young players who join the IPA. He's worked carefully here. He's one, no, he hasn't got a problem ball or such because he goes into the top right. But I feel he might leave that to last just so it's easy position for the black. So probably left middle, left top, and then right middle. in the first tour event Luke because it was in his hometown of Newport so I reckon he managed to stay at home for that event saved on the hotel fees Good news for pool fans. You don't have to put up with me on my own. I've now been joined by Simon in the box. Hi, pal. Yeah, morning. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Not as rough as some of these faces I've seen wandering around. Yeah, a late one for a few, I'm sure. So, uh, have you watched the whole match so far? And if I haven't, no. I came down and it was just turned to all, so I've only just sat down myself. I won't ask you how it's been then? Nope. Should imagine quite high standard. Yeah. So he's had to go a different ways, just he's gotta play for the gap now in going the way he's gone. I still can't see any problems. Yeah, I think um he looks like he's gearing up to play for the gap, but uh part of me thinks maybe it'd be better off just coming down to the bottom end of the table and guaranteeing a shot to the corner. But uh, it depends how if he's, he's got lined good up control gap. of the white he should be fine. Oh, he's made sure. Oh, he, did, he didn't have to move the right far, so I've seen, seen a fair bit of Luke, to be honest. He's uh, one of the up-and-coming youngsters. Um. These uh, Welsh lads come from good old. Yeah. But uh, he's already um, in the open rankings, already right up there. And I'm not sure exactly, but sort of pushing top ten already. Um, so, uh, uh, pretty impressive. I mean, to be so young and turn pro so quickly. I was just saying it, you know, it's a perfect example of what can, what's possible on the IPA. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, a, a few people think, you know, have uh, you know, made an argument for waiting, you know, win more events on the amateur and, and sort of turn pro once you've sort of been there a while, but I, the other people would turn pro as soon as possible. Um, I, I think as soon as possible because I think you learn the most when you're playing the pros regularly um, you may it may be a tough school to start with you may lose a lot of matches early but uh, you learn by playing these guys well um, Luke was a junior world champion yeah I think that was only 18 months ago or so wow uh, 
Yeah. That's a hell of an achievement. Yeah. I say he, he's um he's a you know in with a chance of winning every tournament he plays. He's gone. I think he's made a couple of semi-finals in the Open. Um, be no surprise if he wins this event today. Just going to get a correction on the scores. Um, I think it's 4 2 to Luke. Anybody that makes world champion at any sort of level is a decent stick. Did you watch the final last night, Si? I watched it on the stream, actually. I was sulking in my room because I just lost a tough match in the amateur event, so uh, oh. I didn't feel very sociable, so I sat and watched it in my room. Uh, that shot that, uh, obviously, Chris was fantastic. Uh, Mark was fantastic, but uh, was. the shot that Scott played... Off the jaw. Off the jaw. Oh, I, my I, days. I, 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 how long it, have you been playing pools, eh? Um, a long time. At high, higher level pool for, for three years. I, I can't remember seeing a better shot than that. I can't remember even seeing anybody attempt that shot. But I said to somebody this morning, there's 200 people in this event, in that event yesterday, here this weekend. And how many and, saw it? And I reckon one player would have seen that. Yeah. And I think him. I, I, don't see, I, don't, I don't think anyone else would have even thought to play that. No. That's, it uh, was fantastic. He didn't even... I mean, I got told it was jaw-jaw, but I was right behind the shot, and I think it was flat cushion jaw then across into the big bucket oh, that's fantastic. anybody that's not seen this needs to go on YouTube as soon as it's available online and watch the final of the open because you, it is it, a treat. It, it's already available on YouTube I watched it a few times this morning you have to search through go to yesterday's play uh, after evening play and it's about three hours two minutes in um, but I'm sure at some point somebody will do a little se little segment of just that shot. That was it was incredible. In fact, that whole match there was some good shot making. Yeah, you know, playing balls off balls to cannon in. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Mark, well, you can't really say stepped up because he's always at that level, but it was ruthless. He's so consistent. He's uh, you know, it's just it just doesn't ever seem to make mistakes. He just takes them out. And just you know. The very, most very clinical. The most impressive thing was Scott went in front um, and the crowd, as you can imagine here in Glasgow, were well and truly behind him. Or in in person, they were well and truly behind Mark Farnsworth, yeah. right in his ear. And to show, you know, the the confidence and the, the strength in personality to deal with that. Yeah. And continue to not only just play his game but up it to the highest of his level to beat Scott really did show character. It was so impressive. Yeah, absolutely. No, he's he's there or thereabouts in every single tournament, the most consistent player since he rejoined the tour. Um That's why he's gonna be ranked world number one at the end of this year, you feel? Yeah, he think he, he already is at the top of the rankings, whether that's I don't know if that's provisional or how it's it works, provisional it, because it's done over two years and it was yeah. Mark's first year last year. Yeah. But he, if you double Mark's points from last year He's uh, a, a nautical mile yeah. ahead. If, I think he missed one of the events last year as well. I don't think he played all five. And that kind of says how good he is. Um, so in five out of six events, five out of ten, if you you know, he's already up to the top of the rankings. It's, in, it's, it's uh, he's made an, a, a huge number of finals, deep in nearly every event he plays. The only uh, surprise from because I, I hadn't seen Mark play before, uh, I think probably this event last year. Um, was his first round exit at the World Championships. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Right, wow. Well. Yeah, a lot of people um, watching Neil, they, he's a, quite a methodical player, takes his time. He Without is. the shot clock, he, he'll, he'll use his full time and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, So he's not as flashy as other players to watch, but for me, I, I absolutely love watching Neil play because... If you want to learn shot choice, shot, shot selection, and yeah. the way to go about playing pool and, and going about clearances the right way, yeah. uh, there's nobody better. Absolutely. My practice partner had a session against him because he lives down Stokeway, yep. which is very close to us. And uh, he said it just gets annoying because Neil permanently picks every shot and permanently puts the white ball on a 50p. Yeah. And it gets very, very annoying.
No problems there. Will he play and use the big bag on the right middle? Yep. yep. So it's 4 3. And I think. I think it's loop to break. Yeah, Luke's break. Odds from Cole can't split him now. Luke with a slight lead, but it's 10 to 11 on each player. Have you had a bet on the pro event? I haven't had a bet. I haven't had a bet this weekend, actually. Um, I'm not really sure why. I have done it every other tour event. Just uh, I have, but don't take any tips off me. No, you, pro, is your your uh, horse already out? Uh, not, not on the pro, no. We've only just started, but uh, the open oh, the, I had yeah. two or three. And, uh, no good. Mm. Your, uh, your tip of uh, Jordan Templeton was a, uh, and that was it in the round of 64. You called that. Yeah. That's a great tip. Yeah. Um, obviously, he would have been pretty unfancy before the tournament. From you know, obviously, he's a very good player. And anyone that knew him knew he was yeah. a chance. But but he wasn't known on the national no. stage. I don't think with all respect to um, him, what an impressive player. Yeah. I mean, I was so impressed with him yesterday. Not phased. I mean, he beat Craig Marsh. He beat Jack Whelan. I think he beat Jack from 4-0 down as well. I mean, uh, they're two top pros. And, a, well, a world champion. And a world champion runner-up. Yeah. You know, remember the name, because he's, he's, he's going to be about... He's already told our chairman he's joining the tour. Brilliant. Joining the tour. Ah, brilliant. Played with such confidence on the table. He's made Luke's made a ball, but it's a pretty tricky split. His, uh, his problems are a few places around the table. Yeah, I think so Reds are going to be favourable. There's only there's only one ball that is a, a major problem that doesn't go. Yeah, his first red will be tricky. And a little cut back into the middle. Yeah, shouldn't be too well, much he could of a problem. Be. Has he got the angle to play out his problem ball off this? No, no he hasn't well, he did. Mr. Pop, he did yeah. have the angle. I'm surprised he didn't play that with more pace if he was trying that. Yeah, um, but he uh, hasn't gone gone right. But uh, Neil might be in the same problem if he wants to go red. So he hasn't got an open red. He could play the plant up to the top bag, but he might be able to play the yellow onto the red at the top and screw down to develop the other red. I've just read that Luke Sanji's nickname, a saucepan. Saucepan. And uh, I think I can guess why that is. Something Although to do it's a little bit more true. Something to do with the haircut, I'm imagining. Yes. It's a little less extreme than it was in Newport. He has a style of his own. Um, he's Good happy for it. it. Yeah, happy. nothing wrong with that. Who wants to be the same as everybody else? Oh, I like that. So is he gonna? I think he's gonna play yellow onto red. I think that's what he was eyeing up. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether he's straight enough that he can screw back to develop the red um, at the bottom, the one he's going to be queuing over. Uh, mm. I, I think he might. If he, if he does, I think he'll probably be clipping it, coming off cushion, and then clipping it, which probably wouldn't develop it. It would just nudge it even more. Safe. Yeah, he wants to hit it on the left hand side as we look at it. Yeah, I, I don't think that's that's on. But uh, everything else, oh, every other red has a pocket. It's just the one he's queuing over that's going to be a problem. Well, he looks like he's up for three yellows. No, no, but you can see the red. Oh, and he's left an angle to develop that, that awkward red now. If he wanted to, or he, he could take the one he's nearest and then play the and then play, play the, the developed shot. Yeah. yeah. One thing's for sure: when you're watching Neil at home, Simon's absolutely right. If you want to learn shot selection, you want to learn how to take out the ball. He wasn't happy with that. I think that turned a little bit. I, he, it just drifted into the right hand side of the pocket as we look at the table. The way he's um, shaking his head, I'm wondering whether he was just trying to take the pocket. I don't, I mean, Maybe. I'm, su I'm surprised he hasn't gone game there because he's left a lovely angle to develop the awkward red. He's left, yeah, he's left a lovely and angle, and all right, unless he sticks on the red, he's going to be on one of the because three other balls. I think the red above the black goes to the right middle. Um, yeah. So he'd be, you know, and he got the one over the top bag and one over the both top bags. So he'd be disappointed not to have a shot. And he has, he's been unlucky. And it's not come out well. So obviously, maybe he was right that he wanted to cover the pocket and, and win the frame that way. 
Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe he was just trying to annoy that it rolled off a fraction. I don't know. But uh, he wasn't happy. That was my initial reaction. But you, I mean, I either could have not. I, just for the reason that you mentioned, I can't see him not going game. Yeah. But I mean, he's one of the slower players, but he's no less attacking. No, I mean, absolutely. Just because he's methodical and takes his time doesn't necessarily mean he's negative. Far, far from it. I, I, it's very rare you'll see Neil take the wrong shot choice. Anybody fancying a bet on Neil for the tournament? Uh, for the pro tournament he's 8 to 1 the favourite is uh, can you guess it unbelievable Farnsworth uh, yeah they, they were joint at the start of the tournament both hit Clint and Mark but Clint, maybe Mark with uh, Clint winning. made an earlier exit didn't he I think the last yeah. 1 to 8 or last 64 no I think he made the 16 I think he lost oh. to Mark Pickworth in the 16 apologies to Clint yeah apologies he's playing now just on an outside table yeah I'm not sure who he's got this morning Oh, he's got Liam Dunster this morning. Liam Dunster was incredible yesterday. Yeah. I was really impressed by him the first time I'd seen him. Yeah. And who else have we got? We got Craig Marsh at nine to one, Dan Davy at ten to one, Gareth Hibbert, our current world champion, is twelve to one. Twelve to one, along with Jordan Shepard. That he's, is fantastic. He's, he's playing a um, a new pro this year, David Compton. Mm, Gareth is so uh, very attacking. Very attacking. I, Great player. I do player. fancy Gareth against anybody. Yeah. Well, and he did. He had a bad day yesterday for his standards. Yeah. Uh, looking a little bit further down, the biggest break in pool, Ben Davies, fourteen to one, and uh, the player at the table now, Mr. Sanji's looking for his first pro title is twenty to one. Yeah, that's a big price for for somebody that's been in uh, open semi-finals and uh, been a junior world champion and plays as well as Luke does. Uh, he's top ten. I'm sure he's top ten in the open rankings. Tw- Twelve at the absolute outside. So uh, twenty to one's a, a big price. There'll be um, nobody that knows Luke would. Um, yeah. Yeah, nobody that knows Luke would be any would be surprised if, if he won this tournament today. So twenty to one's a good value. I think anybody. I mean, I'm just looking down to the outsiders at Carl's. Uh Paul Harkness, I lost to in the last to one to eight of the opening. He's a pro. He missed one ball and beat me seven one. What, what price is uh, Liam Dunster? Liam Dunster, who. Yeah, I fancy him. He's seven to one joint with um, Jack Whelan. The problem is with the pro event is what makes it utterly good viewing is at the start of a match, even though you've always got a favourite, you can't call a winner. No. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. The only thing you can pretty much guarantee is that it won't be to nil. But then I thought that yesterday and Liam Dunster disposed of Ross Fernie yeah. nil. I think in at a higher level, Paul, um, it's a, a, a two top players playing each other. The, cap- the possibilities of a one-sided match are there because when one player gets on a roll and if the breaks go their way and they get the chances, they won't hold back. And they can they, every, every pro in the field can run out so many frames on the trot that you do see some one-sided victories. Um, but that's just the way the matches go sometimes. They mean very little. Uh, even as amateurs, we practice and every now and again we'll have good sessions. Yeah. And when you're playing a first to eight, for example... You're going to get four breaks, minimum. But all of the pros are expecting to break dish their own break. Yeah. So if they do that, and then also do it once off the other guys, so five breaking dishes, the, the opponent only has to make three errors, either missed balls or running out of position. Yeah. That's not a lot for an 8-0. No. That can no. be the difference. It's such a fine line. Be interesting to know what sort of uh, percentage that the, the top players expect to break fi- break finish. Uh, I think Jack would be the best person to ask. He talks quite a lot about stuff like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I would say around fifty percent, maybe would be my guess. Uh, be interesting to keep a stat for that for the season and, and just see that sort of statistic for the top players. I think uh, you'll find the pe- person that does it the most is quite high up there. Yeah. You know, last night Gillespie and Farnsworth was just. Uh, if it was a dry break, it was a dish by the opponent. Anyway, we should get back to the action. Yeah, I don't. I mean, Luke's a very good player and a very good tactical player as well. But I would suggest that you would, if you were playing Neil, you would avoid 
avoid playing into a tactical battle. Oh, absolutely. Because um, there is nobody better. Um, he's, he's got the most all-round game, in my opinion, on the tour. So, you, you know, you want to open the balls up and take your chances. That's the way to beat Neil. He has no issues in, in pl playing a frame like this and, and winning it however long it takes, however it needs to be won. I don't think he'll be going game yet. He's got, uh, he's got the free shot here, hasn't he? Oh, has he? I think he's got a free shot, so he's, I don't know if he's looking at how he opens these balls up. <laughs> no, I don't, maybe he didn't have that no, free I shot. No, I don't think he did have no. a free shot. You're making me think I'm not paying attention no. because you're not paying attention. We were too busy uh, talking about all sorts. That was my favourite part about that shot last night, was James's commentary. And uh, uh, Scott played what I think will end up being shot of the season. Yeah. Um, and James's commentary was, uh, he was asked, did you just see that, James? And he said no. <laughs> he was on his phone and he missed the shot. Oh, no. The dulcet tones oh, of Mr. Well, Honey. That, that shot will be replayed over and over, watched it by will. thousands for it the will. shot of the year tr uh, tournament. It really was that good. And uh, Scott's very much aware of the shot of the year tournament. There's no prize for the player that gets it, but it's just a nice little thing because it... Uh, Ronan won it last year and he, he had a little bit of banter with Ronan yesterday about it and said I, oh, I, I think I've taken your shot of the year trophy off you and that was for his shot in the first match he played on the stream so, oh. and he's gone and outdone it with the, the second one He really is um, Scott Gillespie one of the best shot makers I mean I hadn't come across him as much I know he's been around for quite a while but I just haven't been lucky enough to compensate on him because he's an amateur He's only an amateur because he, he doesn't. He's not on the tour. No. This is the only event he's playing. Um, I asked him if he was, you know, he, he considered joining the tour. Uh, he said he was on the tour and he considered staying on it and rejoining last year and uh, played the World Championships at the Magnus Center and just um, decided, just felt, felt that it wasn't for him. He decided not to. Um, I'm hoping after seeing this event, um, he will rejoin because it's players of that level we want to see playing on, on the tour. It's uh, players like him that we want to see on the stream. We need players like that to advertise the game. Because last night was just sheer entertainment. Brilliant atmosphere, brilliant pool, brilliant shot making. It's very rare in a pool room full of professionals and very good amateurs that people applaud a shot. And it happened more than one occasion. Yeah. Because when a good shot's played, most of us, well, not me, but most people in the room go, there's nothing special, I can play that. Yeah. But really, last night, there was a few special shots. Yeah, when you watch that shot back from Scott, have a look at Mark's reaction and, and bear in mind the score that he played it at and how the championship's on the line. And Mark's reaction is fantastic. He, he yeah, gives a big, big, big applause. And, you know, and you can almost see the smile on his face like that. That He was, was a very five impressive. four down when he played the shot, wasn't he? Scott Gillespie he was 5-4 mm, down I think so he went 5-5 five, five, didn't he no I yeah. think he was it might have been 4-3 four, four, down it might have been 4-4 four, four or 4-3 down no, I think he was 4-3 um, because he went 5-4 up but uh, yeah right I think um, for those on the stream we're actually going to find the shot at some point and show it to you which will be good I'll get a little bit of notice before we switch it over It's the next shot. Yeah, it's the one. Okay. Um, we're going to do it at the end of this frame, yeah. I believe. Uh, we're going to show you the shot, so just wait and see. You're in for a treat. So, Luke looking to contain. Yeah, the, the end of this frame could be a while, so... <laughs> Um, but we will show it 
and uh, it's well worth tuning in for. We should get James over to redo his commentary so when it's replayed later in the year he won't have to listen to himself. Oh my days. I've just watched it again for the second time. That was fantastic. Anyway... How do you see this progressing? Well, Neil's got complete control of the frame. He has, and uh, Luke's going to have to do something. I, I feel that where the balls are, well, he's, he's, he's containing got ch- again. He's got a chance to get a snooker here. He's He has got the snooker. And has he, he? I think so. I'm not sure there's a gap through. And if there is a gap through, then Neil would snooker himself back, unless he played it with a lot of pace. So That's a really good shot from Luke. He's almost uh, forcing Neil's hand. If, if there is a gap, he's forcing Neil's hand to play the one over the pocket and uh, and try and get the white out somehow. This is where I um, disagree with. This is I don't not that I disagree with it, but it's a bit of a grey area. So Neil's not sure if he can get through to this red, and so he's called for the ref to ask if it's a total. And if the referee comes through and says it's not a total, he knows he can get through. If it is a total, he knows he can't. Um, which it, it helps him to make the decision on whether to play it or not. So it's, it's not he's not breaking the rules, and every player would do it. It's not he's not doing it for any reason like that. It's just one of those odd oddities, I think, in the game that he's going to get confirmation and help his shot choice. Take all that back. He was um, he he could see it. He was just wanted the referee to double check that there was you know make sure the shot was played correctly. So he wasn't asking for a total. So uh, everything I just said ignore. Although I do think that happens. That's brilliant um, honesty to bring the referee over. Yeah. Uh, by the player playing the shot. Yeah, Very he, professional. Near last for it. Um, just to get rid of any issues. There's no issues then. Yeah. So then uh, also. It's professional so many levels, so it's not playing on Luke's mind now. Luke will just forget about that shot completely. He won't be thinking, did he hit the yellow on the way through? Uh, I'm sure he won't be very happy, because he's about to lose the frame, I should yeah, imagine. He was, I think That's he a good was, shot, that. That's a good shot. I think he's really unlucky, because if that the ball he plays stops a, a fraction shorter of, that, of where it did, he, he's got Neil in some trouble from position of, of strength. But uh, he could get through it, forced his hand, and he's... Um, as long as he gets fairly straight on this next red, he should uh, have no issues in, in uh, levelling the scores up. So uh, once Neil's potted this ball and he's... Uh, Racking for the next frame, we're going to show you this shot from Scott Gillespie in last night's final. It's a good black. It was a, played at 4 3 down, so uh, this, right in the crunch of the match. Um, this, this red does not go, by the way. I don't yeah. know if we get a shot of it, but it does not go into the bottom right. Yeah, he's had a look at it, he's, he's looking at um, how he's doing it. So, this is by, you know, he really is playing exactly as he as it plays, pans out. And the thing for me to pay attention to after the shot is the respect that's shown by uh, by yeah, Mark man. and the reaction of the crowd. Yeah, it's four it's three. Uh, it's four three down four, three at this down. point, and it was him to break after this one. Oh my days! Look at him. It's he just, just knows it. In. That's just one. And look at Mark tapping his leg. Yeah. Look at uh, Scott's reaction. It's just like you know, so nonchalant. He he does. Um, he doesn't react now. But at the end of the frame, and we can't go that far because we've got to go back to the action, but at the end of the frame, he has a cheeky little smile. Yeah. I think that was over to Ronan as well. Yeah. So Neil to break. What a fantastic shot. Yeah, You'll that's see that so many more times. Yeah, that will be in the shot of the list contenders for the end of the season. Lifts up off the break. Which he's head right up. Hit them very well, though, it's yeah. got to be said. He's very unlucky to not to make a ball. Um, he's going to be fancying reds here, although they're not the easiest. Yeah, the three reds at the top of the table aren't too much of an issue. It's the, the one by the yellow at the bottom. I 
I think that might pass. If it passes, then there's no huge problems. Obviously, the one below the black is a you know he's got to be yeah he's got to get work. For that, but he's got to ball just above the black to get perfect position. Yeah, so, so this is a good opportunity actually at second second glance. It's a good opportunity. It's not a it's not they're not absolute dollies or rollins by any stretch. You've got to really play some good position or short play here. But they're um they're all they're all there. If the red at the bottom doesn't pass the yellow, then there's a red next to it that will. Give him an, an opportunity to develop it. So that was a bad shot. That he should have been nowhere near this rad. Uh, it shouldn't make any difference, but he's just making things harder for himself. I think he, he, is he is he right-handed or left-handed? He uh, wants to be left-handed for this shot. He's um he's quite a tall lad. He is um, left-handed. Oh, he's playing it left-handed. I can't um, remember. I think he is left-handed. And, um, he's he's quite a tall lad and. Uh, that helps him for this shot. But he has it's missed it. But he has missed it. They're so. always missable. Oh, what a stamp of the queue. Well, we don't like to see that, but... He's, uh... He hasn't left Neil a, a huge, uh, hugely inviting table. And that shot's not gone well. I think this red still passes. If it doesn't pass, then he can, he'll just take the pocket. He may just take the pocket now anyway. I think Luke will be just very happy to be back at the table so soon. Yeah, he didn't leave Neil much to go at. Um, yeah, I, this would be interesting to see if Luke try. If Luke is still annoyed from the previous shot, he may he may push the boat out here. Whereas uh, the right uh, shot might be just to take the pocket here. Yeah, well, I think that's what he's, if he's taking this ball. I think that's what he might be doing. Yeah, that's what he has done. Right. I think he's just slowing the game up a little bit. It's a it's a key key. The next two frames are very key. That's, it's good to see because he was obviously he was very frustrated with his previous shot and, and showed it. So the fact that he's he's back on and he's he's played a he's played a, a really uh, controlled choices shot. So it's good to see. work out here, he's just looking to see the yellow past the red at the top of the table which will start to clear some of his problems at the bottom right hand side of the table where the yellow and the red are there's quite a big gap there so if he can land on the one near the black spot um, it looks like the most obvious of choices, he might be able to break out yep. so from that shot he's just played, I'm guessing he doesn't pass the red at the top left he's just landed a little bit short on this one across the top rail yeah, he's a grimace just wanted to be straight so then he could drop the one on the left hand side of the table in the middle he could play the yellow uh, to, that's on the left hand side down to the bottom left at sort of pocket weight because um, that would cover the bottom left which would uh, slow Luke's progress up I, I think I'd prefer to get rid of this well he, the one in the middle of the table he can put past the red I he's think. playing over towards the bottom right here yeah. and that looks good. Oh, well, that'll do. I think that's fine. It's, uh, it's certainly slowing it up. He's uh, stopped Luke from, from doing too much aggressive here. I think we've had a result in, in the pro match. Uh, Harry Owens worked, walked over with a winner's sheet, so he's won. But I don't know who he's playing, so I can't and I can't give you the scoreline. But uh, we're just going to get that up for you now. Harry Owen was playing Mark Pitworth and he won 8-3. We're just going to get some other scores in for you. Dan Davies currently 7-4 up against Matty Smith. Rona McCarthy's 4-2 up against Paul Hartness. Let's have a look down. Jimmy Kearney is 6-1 up against our chairman, Mr Kev Barton. The Welsh battle, Ben Davies and Jordan Shepherd 7-6. But listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. The current world champion is currently 6-4 down to David Compton the new professional 
that would be a result for him. I played David Compton in Bradford last year. It's the first time I'd seen him play. He beat me 5-0 in 15 minutes, and I didn't get a shot other than the break. Very impressive. Very, very, very good player. Good cash game player. Yeah. Watched a game between him and uh, a man that's played on the tour before as an amateur, Craig Lakin. And um, I think they played first to 23. It finished 23-21. And it was done in two and a half hours. Yeah. They, and, that, and they were literally running around the table. And they made the game look like the pockets were buckets. Yeah, they played each other twice, I think. They have. I think Craig won both times, but both times they were close. Yep, that's absolutely right. So who else have we got? You've just mentioned uh, Jimmy Croxton's 5-4 up against Mark Farnsworth. Just shows you, looking down these results now, I mean, to pick a winner from this tournament is unbelievable. Jordan Shepard is 7-6 down to Ben Davies. Jordan very disappointed after losing to Liam last night. Clint Ianson 5-3 up against Liam Dumpster. Simon Ward is 5-4 up against Stephen, uh, sorry, Curtis Lee. Not Stephen Lee. Weapon A couple of, uh, couple of uh, all Welsh battles going on out there. Yeah. So. We've all drawn each other, which is disappointing. I always back the Welsh lads usually. Yeah. I think I've got um, Jordan Shepherd and Ben Davies. Oh, sure. Things just got a bit scrappy at the minute. Yeah, that first first shot in his frame where uh, Luke left himself Chinese and missed the next ball has caused, and, and Neil had nothing to do other than to try and slow the game down, has caused his frame to be um, tactical. Uh, that was a good chance for Luke to, to go game, but uh, since then there's been nothing for either of them to go at. So, a bit similar to the last frame, they're kind of having to work it out. And as I said before, I. You know, there's nothing wrong with Luke's tactical ability. It's just uh, Neil's the very, very best in my opinion, and I w- it's not something I'd want to get into with with Neil. Both players very experienced, even at such a young age, and both just fighting for control here. I mean, that that just shows exactly where Neil's at at the minute. He really wants uh, Luke to go game before he does. Very so difficult. Think, very difficult to see how either can can work themselves into a position where they can go game. There's no real way of, of hiding the white and, and hoping to get two shots. And, and even if you did manage to get a snooker, the, both these guys are so good that you're, you know with this many balls on the table, you'd be very unlikely to get your two. Um, this is it. I, I think at the moment, looking where everything is, yellows are slightly favourite. Yeah, I, I, I'd uh, rather be yellows, but it's it is marginal. It's very marginal. But the problem is with yellows, you get you. Well, you do have options to go game, whereas I don't believe Reds has at the minute. I think the control's there. So I think you might see Mar- uh, sorry Neil play the yellow at the top of the table. And then he really has got decent opportunity if he gets that yellow into the open. Yeah, Which what he is playing, but it's a little bad, because he did, he did just move it from over a pocket. Yeah, what Neil needs is an angle to be able to develop the uh, the, the covered red at the bottom right. Um, if yes, you, you can, you could pop, pop one of his and, and go into that at some point. And it's a big target. Sort of open that up. It's a big target, and the, he's got two yellows there, and one of them should stay over the pocket. So uh, he should still have control. It doesn't necessarily mean he has to go game, but that's the sort of way for him to get the the foothold. Try to play the snooker there, or at least a, a containing shot where he would yeah. have only been on the yellows on the bottom right hand side of the table. You do feel this is a big frame in the context of the match? I think there, there are players in this tournament that would probably play the one into the middle now, the one that's on, on the black spot, and, and go forward a, a and roll then or two. And, and then, then try and screw off the cannon. Yeah, play the yeah. plant play the plant to the bottom left and screw across and, and, and open everything up. But I like that shot, that's what it's, I play. It's aggressive, and if you make it, you have a good chance to win the frame, but if you don't, you're, you're letting well, Luke back in the frame. You say that, side, but if he plays the plant with the screw... And the 
yellow stays over the pocket. You still got a little bit of insurance there. Yeah, it's Luke's still got the red at the bottom left hand side of the table. I just think the pace he'll be playing it at that that it's yellow will either point. skill shot in or it will fly away yeah. from the pocket. I don't think it will stay. Just he won't be delicately playing it. Um, I still think I still think that's a. a are you going for it, Si? Are you going for it? He's thinking, he must have I, thought about it, that's for sure. If the black was in the middle of the table and not awkward, I think I'd go for it. But Right, it's just the black, let's share it. But um, from, Ni- from Neil's point of view, he, he knows he's ahead here. That's good thinking, though, by Neil, that, because, all right, it's not landed perfect, but if he got a ball over that right middle, the yeah. skill shot is very, very easy. Yeah, he, I think from Neil's point of view, he's going to wait for an opportunity to do it off a ball that isn't... It, that left-hand side's his control... So if he can get an angle off a ball, so if that yellow had finished over the middle pocket, he eventually would be able to get an angle on that one to do the skill shot. I think that's what he's hoping for. Luke certainly isn't going for anything, and rightly so. Yeah, yeah Neil, I think he's just going to nudge this on and off the cushion. Yeah, he just he wants to this virtually dead weight. Sorry, sir. Yeah, he just wants to leave this over the pocket so he can play. Well, that's not yeah. perfect. He wanted that fraction thinner, just so he could. He, he wants to use that ball to go into the one, the, the, the cluster bottom, at the bottom right. of the table. And okay. now that's a good, that's shot, a good shot because now all Luke's balls are, 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 are you know, he's got available. More, he has, he has more opportunity to go game now. He does because um, he, he can clear that bottom right himself. He can, but you can't see him getting the Ellers out of the way they are no. at the minute. I think the the bottom of the yellow, the bottom of the two yellows over the red, are going to stick. Around, uh, if he cannons the red, they're going to stay. Neil's in a position where he might be able to force him into something here. If he, if he played the yellow above the black again, uh, full ball, and um, used it to cover, he wouldn't leave uh, Luke too much. Um, but he's seeing something. He's he's going to play the shot we were talking about a minute ago. He's going to play. He, he doesn't need this, the ball over the left pocket now because it's not controlling anything. So he's no, going to play. Not. He's going to play the skill now. Has he got it? Oh, oh unlucky! He played at a really nice controlled pace. He wasn't. Other players might have hit that really firm and, and just cleared it all out, but he, he was playing it at a control just to make the little nudge onto the red. A few people in the chat are asking, asking about the rules, the black ball rules. So two shots don't. Uh, two shots never carry after a foul. And you can play what's called the skill shot, so you can play your ball and put the opposition's ball in the same shot, and it's a legal shot. In the commentary, you've got a member of the committee. Yeah, uh, si- Simon Webb. And uh, I'm a very amateur, who just does a lot of commentary to help out, David Hine. Apologies in advance. Yeah, we may be rambling on. I'm, I'm, I'm in here for purely personal reasons. I'm, I'm trying to learn from these guys. Um, and... Uh, and I'm in here for pure entertainment value. And you have to, you have to put up with me um, rambling on. That's a good shot. I like that's a good shot from Luke. Move the black over. Although I think that the face he's just pulled, the blacks probably goes past that red. I think it goes jawing in off the red because he he looked frustrated with it. So that's what Neil's looking at straight away. So, if you got any other questions about about the rules, most pool fans are pretty knowledgeable. But if you are watching. And you want them clearing up? Just let us know. Or any questions about the tour? In fact, just let us know. Are you on the rest of the tour? I am at the moment. Yes. I'm looking I'm forward to uh, to Warwick and, and Brighton. I'm looking forward to Brighton. Yeah. I think I've got to take the misses to Warwick. Have you been to Brighton before? I've the, never the, been. Yeah. Nope. Oh, 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 he's disaster. Missed and. That's what Luke's been waiting for. He's he can't believe that's not gone into the middle. Yeah, it's a pity we can't get a replay of that shot to see what happened. Oh, at first glance, watching the shot live, I think he hit the jaw. Yeah, I think the ball was really close to the red, and I think it's just glanced the red on the way through, and and it's made the yellow go onto the jaw, which has missed it, and uh, and he's made the skill shot element, which means it's a foul. This uh, he's got Luke's got cue ball in hand, but it's uh, the first shot's really key here. Uh, the, the two reds at the bottom. And once he cleared the pocket, he needs to make sure he um, opens those up somehow. And uh, it's not really gone very well for him. I'm not sure he's finished on a on a ball. Well, he's just held his hand up. I think he's nudged the uh, two. He can see the red by the black. 
and he's uh, held his hand up and uh, the two reds at the bottom have just uh, nudged into a plant so actually, a plant, yeah. it's actually worked out really really well for him he, he didn't play a very good shot but it, it worked out to be honest it, it worked out like a dream to be honest these professionals though really are professionals you've seen already Neil who brought over a referee to check that he didn't foul when he played a shot Luke apologising straight away for yeah. the slightest bit of luck that he had was all right, it was luck, but it wasn't the biggest slice of luck, was it? No, it's played that well. Needs it to slow up. Yeah, it's fine. I, I think um, I've said this to a few people um, on tour and off tour that the, the top top players on the on the tour, the pros and the top amateurs, the respect between them is is fantastic, and they understand the game and they understand that they'll lose some some games and they might lose some heavy games. And, and then it goes the other way. Well, and so, sorry, sir, yeah, that's not a good a shot. Really shot. Whereas you see a little, there's a bit more ego in the um, in the amateur amateur ranks and the sort sort of it's like like a level down from the. It does pros. seem to be that way that you've got to swap. All um, these guys know that each all, all the other guys are as good as them. Yeah, and and, and they accept winning and losing, and uh, they don't get too up or down on it. No, he can't. Oh, he needs a little bit. He's played that well. He needs to avoid the right he's, middle. He's going to pull up. Well, he's this on. is the great thing about these rules. This is a tough part. It's a tough cut back into the bottom right. But you can play it fearlessly because it doesn't matter if he cannons the yellow in. In fact, I think if he's got the, the angle to cannon the yellow, he'll bring the white up towards the black. I think he's going to hit the yellow that he's nearest to. The red and clip. I, don't, I think if he makes the, the cut on the red, he'll clip the yellow. Do so you think he hasn't got the angle to pot this then? No, I think he's got the angle to pot it, but I think once he's... Once oh, he's, he's going to cannon the nearest he's yellow. He's going to cannon the year, nearest yellow, so it's going to be really hard to control that white. I think he's going to just miss it. Let's have a little bet. He just misses it. Oh, oh you're right. He has. He's and potted he's it. He, oh! oh. Yeah. He's had a, well, hasn't held his hand up there. No, he's had a, he's had a few nudges in this he's little visit. But, um, and he's happy about that. was a big frame. Yeah, he gives a, just goes off for a little break. Yeah, he gave that one a little fist pump once he uh, once he got the cannon on the on the yellow because he knew he, he was in a miss with black. Um, it's very difficult to see angles. Well done, Sai. You called one right yeah. above me there. He won the lot. But where we're sat, we can only see what you can see on the screen. Yeah. Uh, Luke is a. Um, I, I, I've spoken to Luke a, f- a number of times off the table, and he's a really, really nice lad off the table. But on the table, he's uh, he's very determined. Uh, he's got uh, you know his heart on his sleeve. Lets you know, and if he's done something, he's he's happy about. He, you know, he'll give it a little punch of the air. That was a. You know, I mean, it was a fist bump, but it was a. You know, it, it wasn't in Neil's face or anything. No, no, it, it was, was just, just to himself. It yeah. was a little something to say. You know. Yes, get in there, you know, right, and now he's on. That was a 15-minute frame, that, yeah. and he, they're very rare, especially at this level. And he's so uh, to win that, you and, know. And he was 4-2 up, and he just lost the advantage, and he, he played some bad shots, to be honest. So uh, to make some good shots to get himself out was uh, was good. Just going to pop away and get a drink. There was um, Luke Racks up for the tenth frame. Just having a look at the uh, some of the pro results. I think we got some amateur results on there as well. 
Um, Dan Davy has beaten Matty Smith 8 6. I forgot any more results. David Compton is 6 5 now against Garth Hibbert. Uh, Clint Ianson is 5-3 up against Liam Dunster Scott Gillespie and Luke Johnson is an amateur match That's 5-all James Crotchton and Mark Farnsworth is 5-all Simon Ward and Curtis Lee Simon leads 6-4 in that one Is uh, is the former world champion Jack Whelan on that list? I'm wondering if he had a walkover when the pros didn't turn up Yeah, well he was in the, he, he's in he the room must, I think he must have got a walkover because he was in the restaurant when I was having breakfast. He's he's drawn Ben Davies, which tells me Ben Davies has beaten Jordan Shepard. Right. Um, that'll be a great match, that Ben Davies, Jack Wheel, and I hope we can two, get that one on the stream. Two massive, massive breaks. Two massive breaks. I mean, the break really will decide that. I'll uh, I'll have a word with Simon, my co-commentator, see if he can put a nudge in for that one. Yeah. Because I'm sure we all want to see that. But then you could make a case for for all of the. I mean, what, that would be the round of. Uh, 16. 16 so you can make a case for all 8 games of course you can so. maybe okay. uh, maybe you guys want to message in and, and let us know who you want to see and yeah, see that what we can brilliant. do I'll, I'll certainly put the um, your thoughts to the uh, the guys making that decision that decision isn't mine one name I can't see can we scroll down a little bit uh, see if we can find um, I can't see Craig Marsh I've seen him in the seen him in the room I can't see his match his match must have finished. He was definitely playing. Oh, he, he was playing. Um, he was playing uh, uh, Ben Rogers. All right. I don't. Ben Rogers is still in the room. I don't know whether that means he won or not. But uh, right, well, is he still in uniform? He's still in uniform, but it may have only just finished. So. All right. Okay. Meanwhile, Neil's got himself a, a great chance here. He wants to uh, just get himself up the table now for the for the ball that's sort of out the way. So it's it's going to be how the angle he leaves himself on the one at the top of the table will determine how the sort of finish goes. Uh, yeah. If he gets a good angle and he, he manages to come back down the table and gets good position, you can't see him having a problem. Looks like he's just finished with enough angle. He almost finished straight, which we wouldn't have wanted, but I think he can uh, punch us through. M maybe have to go one cushion, might play it, punch it through with uh, just straight. Craig Marsh, sorry, I just got it. Just go back. Craig Marsh beat that. Beat Ben Rogers eight two. Yeah. Ben Rogers is uh, one of my uh, England B team teammates. Uh, great value when we're at the uh, tournaments. He's our uh, leading voice in the team. Certainly lets the opposition know he's around. Very uh, very entertaining lad. So Neil looking to dispose of this and get straight back to five all after all that work by Luke in the last one. Only to be undone. Uh, somebody's by a quick finish. Somebody's asked me if I'm playing George. Um, you've got me confused with uh, Seb Webb. Um, I'm not part of that family. Uh, Simon <laughs> Webb. No. That's fine. He's played that nicely. That's absolutely fine. I think he was a little worried that he might sneak behind that red when he, uh, before he played it. it was, uh, but he's controlled it well. And, and yeah. no, no real problems. Michelle Calville on this chat. Um, we have just been talking about this last night. It's something that we are going to look to bring in, I think, uh, to give the fans a choice. And also, uh, more than one stream table has been mentioned as well. Maybe not commentary, because it takes up a little bit too much room, but somebody can do it from the same desk. Um, because the the arena that you can see takes up quite a little bit of room and all the other tables are lined up in a row. But there's no reason why we can't have cameras on more, I suppose. We've also uh, got to bear in mind um, from a, the top table's point of view that they need to bear in mind uh, and uh, consider uh, Corals, who are our betting partners, and the matches that they want to show, the matches that will generate uh, good markets. Um, so it's about... Um, there's a number of things that go into making a decision on which matches put on the stream any uh, any match that you get on here today will be good We've got, I mean any of the pro event matches is good and maybe we'll get the amateur final I'm not sure yeah we did at the last event but uh, I'll probably be on the flight home by that point so I 
Uh, it hit them pretty well, but they just didn't split. Maybe they weren't racked as tightly as they should have been. But saying that, they're actually opened up quite nice. Although they look a little bit tricky, all the yellows pass, and most of the reds, well, all of the reds pass into yeah. at least one or two pockets. Every, every, every ball's got a pocket. Uh, if it goes yellows, the first shot's going to be, be tricky. I think he probably put, would like yellows. But that first shot's going to be tricky. Uh, it's a little, uh, little awkward angle that he's, he's quite close to the yellow as well. But should he make that, he'll uh, give himself a really good chance. I don't really want to go to the top table at the minute because Paul Bebb's there and Paul Bebb's Welsh and I'm English <laughs> well, I just don't want to hear it I, uh, My thoughts are that they will keep their mouth shut till after Thursday Yeah, maybe but all the pressure's on us now as per usual yeah. Same old, same old I think he is going to take it. He'd like to screw it on off the side cushion, but I think he's going to have to take it. Well, he is taking it to middle. He's got to avoid the middle bag if he plays with screw, and that's why it's worrying him because it's close to the in off. If the uh, if the yellow below the red and black go, goes, then it, if he can meet, admit, uh, playing avoid it to bottom it, that, that would be the way to go. But uh, he's playing it to bottom. Just float this in nice. That's a good shot. Played that really nicely. He's going to have to play another good shot here, though. Yeah, he's just I prefer the one to the bottom right, Simon, over the one to the bottom left because there's a better queuing. Yeah, the one to the bottom left gives him easier position, but the one to the bottom right is better queuing. So it uh, depends I'm, how much he's hampered. I would, I would definitely be. I wouldn't be playing bridging over. I think he can float this in, or he can he can stun across between the gap. Well, he is going to take the other one. This is not easy, this, if he's bridging. Great well, shot. I tell you what, Sai, he skewed that well. Yeah. Fantastic, that. I'm really interested it to see. Made that look so easy, but yeah. that was so difficult. I'm really interested to see how he goes about this finish because the, the, the black, red, and yellow that are in the line. That yellow, if it doesn't go to the bottom right, then he need, it will go once the yellow's out of the way. But right. So it's, it's the pattern, the route he takes here is going to be really interesting to see. I think he he'll take this to right middle, and he'll take left middle, and then he'll take the one at the bottom of the table and move the white over to the left-hand side, and then play the last yellow, which is below the red and black, into the bottom right. Yeah, it just feel like that. That's his his trickiest ball to get on. It is, and he and he wouldn't want to leave it to his last ball. If it well, if it goes into the bottom left, then he can play it earlier and play it, a little cannon goes, on the red. I mean, he might have the angle to play yeah, the cannon now. He's, I think he's looking at, at it now because uh, Luke's come over and asked for a ref if he decides to play the yellow below the black because I think the yellow below the black is pretty tight. Whether it actually goes to the bottom left now, and yeah. if it, if it did, it would be the right shot. I mean, where the, he could he could play the one. If he, if he wants to get a better angle, because at the moment, to play the one below the red and the black, he's definitely going to have to use side. If he plays the one to the left middle, he only needs a touch of right-hand side just to turn it in, and he's always going to be on that last yellow below the black spot. So he, he, he's not happy, but I think this is a good opportunity. He's got so many options here. It was just one of those situations where... Everything op everything's open. Everything has a pocket, but you ne you need to pick out the right route to make it simple. To t to turn this in my side is not that difficult, I don't think. He's nudged the black. I think that's what was his thinking. He was going to oh. nudge the black safe. Why don't you screw back? Just screw back a little bit. So just turn this in. Or oh, does he need to? No, he didn't need to. Uh, he had a lot more room for that yellow than I thought. So yeah, yeah that that the shot before where he's he's had to go into the the red and nudge the black safe is really. Yeah, he would have been annoyed because if he, if he finished a fraction straighter on the previous shot, it would have been really, really simple. I think he already so. is annoyed looking at the angle he's got yeah. now. I don't know if he can screw direct into this black. He might be able to just drop it in and play the double. I don't... The, I think the double only goes into the corner. I think he's virtually touching that yeah, red maybe. side. I, 
to drop if, if he can play, if he can play, so he'll play with bottom and right side and arc into the black. That's the shot. No, he's gone for the double. Uh, wow. Well, yeah, he, he played the, to cover the bag. I don't, I don't really... Well, not often do we disagree with Neil. Maybe he just had no shot whatsoever there. But surely he's had, he has some sort of double to the corner of the same pocket as where the yellow is. Maybe yeah, he didn't. A, Maybe not, the black's slightly in front of the red. I'm not sure whether he did try and cover the pocket. Oh, I, mean, I think he did, because I don't believe he'd have missed that. If he, and if he wanted to, to play for a double, he would have wanted to make it thick, not thin. So he probably did play the, just to turn the table over and hope for the best. We never assume that these guys miss. But he... he this will show you where Luke's mind's at now. A lot of players will be straight in the hole looking for a safety. Yeah. Uh, and you wouldn't blame him at all. I think he's finished with a really good angle on the one to the middle. If he plays the one to the middle and drifts down, catches the red and black full in the face, those three pop open. He's At worst, he's guaranteed to be on the Absolutely one to the top left. That, that is completely the right shot. Doesn't want to doesn't want to hit this hard though. No, he, wants, he wants it about three quarter ball, and he should get a good choice. Oh, he's Very missed it. Well, he's got his work cut now. He, I think, it all depends on the the red above the black. If that goes into the, the right middle then he's still got you know I mean it definitely doubles he's still got to go game here there's no advantage in a safety Wait, you say that but Neil didn't want to go for it before if you can hide the white then true yeah but he's going to play safety I think he's, he's going to try and hide side. behind the one at the top left I don't like this me I don't like this at, at this level because well, he hasn't got it. But even if he gets it, Neil is going to pop the yellow, you'd feel, with one cushion. And we'll always have a double on the black. And that's but, what I don't like. But he had that option before and chose not to take it. No, he, I think before then he just missed the pot because he, he has played for the double. Um, so the way he's played that suggests that previously he wasn't taking the pocket, which confused us both, but he, he was just, uh, he just missed the pot, took his eye off the pot trying to hold the white. Big double coming up. For 6-5 in a race to eight. Neil Raybone currently 1-3 to three on. Luke Sandy's 5-2, to two, that's good value. Yeah, Luke at five to two in, in a frame where he's five, five five, and it's probably even money whether he wins or loses this frame. Probably he might. I might even put Reds as favourite at the moment. This is this is some tough I think shot. He gets this. I think he gets this. He'll straighten up. Oh, he actually. Um, All of a sudden, after that double, so you missed out on the uh, Luke's jump to, to favourite from that shot. So, if you were quick on the uh, on the betting, you'd have had a. Hey, you'd have got five to two, and it's going to be six to five to one. Yep. Luke Sanchez. So I'm really surprised with, that Neil missed that ball previous visit. Then. I think Jamie's right in, on the chat. We, we don't really know what we're talking about, but we like to sound professional doing it. Absolutely. But anybody... Uh, oh, very good. But anybody uh, wanting to come over and try the hand at it, absolutely more than welcome. We're at Erskine Bridge Hotel in Glasgow. Sounds like you're pretty local. We only do it as volunteers, just so you don't have to listen to silence.
Yes, Jamie Smith, you did. And all you had to do was this is a little bit. <laughs> Well, an unexpected chance for Luke. I bet he thought Neil was going to get the double as well. And he's gone from 5 to 2 to 4 to 6 on. You're welcome. Now be nice. We have the power to boot you. <laughs> Adam Kirk in the chat. Very <laughs> funny. Very, very funny. Yeah, he's perfect on this black. Six five to Luke. Six five in his break as well. It's got seven all written all over it. So alongside the uh, pro event today, we've got an amateur event running, and uh, we could end up with a, a, a an all Scottish final. We could end up with Scott Gillespie in the final again. Um, it's uh, crazy to think he's an amateur, um, but only in this field. Uh, the standard of the amateurs is uh, quite incredible. I think uh, I think we're at the last 32 stage in, in that event. Might be the last 16. But, uh, both events should finish sometime around uh, 4 or 5 o'clock. And we'll uh, bring you coverage all day. Um, I'm just trying to find out how old Luke is. I'm uh, pretty sure he's 18 or 19. Uh, I will find out for you, but he's definitely still pretty young. He yeah. around the 30. I think he might be 20. I think he's in his 20, but I'm not sure. I will try and find out ASAP. Great first shot from, from Luke. Always difficult when your uh, colours haven't been assigned. He's using a, a yellow to plant a red. If he misses that, he's leaving a very, very good chance for his opponent. Is Jason Shaw still in the amateur event? He was. No, he's been knocked out. Has he just been knocked out? I think he was knocked out in the last 32 stage. I'm not sure who to, but I'm I saw him. I'm thinking of Gillespie, sorry. I'm thinking of Gillespie. Gillespie's still in. Gillespie's playing um, Luke Johnson from Reading at the moment. I can just see the table over, over in the corner. That will be in the last 16. So uh, Luke's uh, turning this into a really good opportunity. It's a big frame if you can it's manage really, to take this. A really big frame, uh, and, he, and he has the chance for for the break finish. Some of these haven't been updated. Jamie Burnett beat Simon Fitzsimmons last night. Didn't quite. He didn't want the flick on the yellow, but he's actually finished pretty good. He's uh, he's been left on the, the red to the top left. The uh, and the red at top right goes comfortably and the, the red by the black goes to the bottom left and the other red will go into the middle so it's whichever way he decides to go everything's got a pocket he just needs to move the white around in the order he wants here To answer your question Jason Short is out Simon is right he lost to uh, a Scottish international uh, I think he's a Scottish international because I think I played him Ryan Fleming Yes he is yeah uh, A very good player if it's the same guy that I played Yeah he is I'm not sure if he's um he, he was in the B team last year, but I'm not sure if he's just got himself into the Scottish so A team or not. I'm but sure he's certainly one of the players that pushes for that A team spot if he's not in there. I'm sure them all know each other. The Scottish contingent here has been brilliant. I mean, they really have let themselves know and be heard, be heard on the table and off. And someone on the chat saying that Gillespie is in the 32, not the 16. That may well be right. I don't know. I haven't seen the draw this morning. I just Meanwhile, Lucas, uh, after that a really good first plant to, to give him this opportunity, has taken him out really well for a break finish to go one away from victory. A 
Oh, it's up to Neil to respond now. I don't know how Luke's got on in the pro events so far, He's but any match you get um, is going to be a tough match. But I think if you, when you beat somebody like Neil, who everybody respects, it will certainly... I think the results Luke's had and the fact that he's top 10 or very close to top 10 in the open rankings, I don't think he fears anybody at all. He's um, he's uh, he's gone very close to winning opens. I think he's had a couple of semi-finals. I'm not sure if he's made a final yet, but he's certainly had at least two semis. Um, I, I'm sure he, he's had a few victories in the pro. I don't think he's gone that deep in it yet, but it's only a matter of time. He's, he's too good a player not to. So a uh, big, big, big break for Neil here. Needs to make a ball, otherwise it might be his last shot. And he's, this uh, is, oh he's no, he's got one. Red. He's, he's got a red. Oh, he's made a red and they've come out really nicely as well. It'll be, uh, He'll take his time over these, you feel, but uh, they're, they must be getting these. Yeah, I'll be amazed uh, if he doesn't finish these. Luke, um, Luke uh, will just st sit there and be thinking, it's my break next. I'm going to get a chance to break for the match. Yeah, Luke, Luke in his head will already be thinking, if I get a shot in this frame, it's a bonus. And be gearing himself up for a, for another break. Um, I'm not dismissing these as too easy or anything like that, but Neil's so good and these are wide open that he, do, he just needs to mind his work and, and run through these. And, and he can go either way. I mean, there's no... He's going to go yellows because of the red that's by the bottom bottom right that's covered by this yellow, but it uh, isn't too much of an issue. He's, come he's up now going to have to take the one at the top of the table. Yeah, he There's wanted no drama in this. He'll just screw back. He wanted to be on the yellow into the middle. That's what he played for. But uh, well, I say he'll screw back. He could just bob it in and play the one on the port line to the right middle. It's just how he sees it, really. Yeah. It depends if he wants to play with pace and screw back or. Well, I imagine, I think, will he leave the, the red, the, the yellow in the middle of the table that's by that red to his last ball? So, and maybe the one just above it to the left, to the, to the left middle of his second last ball. And run them through and through and then the black into the middle. It should give him nice, easy control. Oh, is it the near jaw? Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming, to be honest. I didn't expect jaw. him to miss an you know, sort of open pop there. And he's, I think he's just got awkward queuing for the first pot. So, just going to take his time. One that you'd probably just get down knocking in the club, but this is to win the match. It's all about this first ball, you feel. I think it's a little bit thinner than it looks on the screens. The white ball is just looking where it's going to go over towards the two reds on the left-hand side of the table. No, he's caught it. He's caught it thin. And he's tied one of the reds up, not ideal. Neil will be pleased to see that. He's, uh, he would have feared that he wouldn't get another shot. We were talking about the Scott Glasby match a minute ago. It has finished. I think Scott's won, but I, I can't give you that for, for certain. The tricky thing about the, the red at the top of the table, which is now nudged safe, is there's no red near it. Well, oh, oh he's played wow. a great shot. You, you, in those situations, you're kind of looking for red near it that you can use to control and develop and, and, and open it. But it's That uh, was perfect. He's just clicked the red out. I know you didn't look too happy. No, oh, he's, he's, got, he's got to pull out a pot here. He's, he's a, yeah, he's but got a very difficult pot. This left. is what you would have wanted. Ryan Fleming is still in the amateur. He's 2 up against Lee Ray at the minute, for those who are asking on the chat. Scott Gillespie's smiling, so I'm presuming he's won. Big shot here. Oh, oh what a part. Didn't fantastic. want the kiss, but it's still fine. He's, he's finished lovely. He's, um, is he going up the table now? If he's got an angle to play, take the one at the top table and come back down to roughly where he is now, then I think, I he, think will. he has. If he has, then I think he will, because that's the one he needs to get that out of the way, because that's the the one that's furthest out of the way. Just seen 
to, to, we were talking about the respect, respect between the players when uh, Luke made that shot Neil gave him a uh, a little clap on his uh, a little pat on his knee to say well done it was a great shot there you go under, oh, under the pressure Scott Gillespie did win he beat Scott Ross yeah, that was he, he was beat, that the round before that, that was last night that was yeah. last night he, beat, he, he was playing Luke Johnson we'll get an update Pretty sure he has one. I'm pretty sure he has because Luke's Luke's walked off and, and Scott uh, Scott stayed around. So, so just top this through up for the red at the top of the table. Yeah, he, the problem and then depending on where he leaves, what angle he leaves on his last red will determine where he plays the black. Yeah, he he wouldn't have wanted to leave this red at the top till his last ball, but it, the way it's the way the visit panned out, it's kind of forced his hand a little bit. Great shot, perfect position. If he's I think he will. He, he can play either here. He can bring the white right back down the table. If he's straight enough, he'll pop this screw straight back down the table. I don't think he's straight. I think he's off, just. I think he's going to have to be. He, his worry will be if he if it, he's off. Looks like he's off straight the wrong way, going towards the yellow over the uh, left middle. If he catches that fall, he could end up on nothing. So he may just choose to take the guaranteed shot. Yeah, he's looking just, at the angle to go back up the table. Though. Just stun this in and take the long black. But, uh, Let's just see how he sees it. Yeah, I think he's just like, playing for the long black. Nope. Nope, he is. That's he's got the shot. angle to come all the way up, and that's that now an unmissable shot. black. That's a great shot. Deserves the match. I will just get an update for you after he pops this black, who we've got on next on the stream, and find out uh, an ETA as well. If you've got information, well done, Luke Sanjay's into yeah. the last 16 of the pro event. Played some really big shots, and when the he match did. got tight from five five, he's played some. Uh, Four all really was a key game, and five all was a key yeah, game. Yeah, played some really good finishes. Well, well done, Luke. It was good that saw spanned.
in the four, how you know when you're on the pathway. Good afternoon, welcome back. Last 16 match in the pro, Gareth Hibbert versus Christian Phillips. Joined in the box at this time by Andrew McKee. Hi Dave. Hey Paul. Looking forward to this again. Gareth played David Compton, brand new pro, in the last round. Uh, I presume he won 8-7 because he did just tell me that David missed a black at 7-5 up give him the chance he'll be looking to make amends for his performance in the open yeah both these players uh, more than capable of going on to him. at least uh, contest a final in this pro event Definitely, I think uh, once we get on screen odds up from our bookies sponsor Coral, Gareth probably will be going in favour as he does for virtually every match he goes into. But anybody that knows Christian knows he's more than capable. Using a nine ball but a cube to break. Oh, he screwed straight into the corner. Yeah, and I think um, if Gareth can clear the, I'd say if he can clear the bottom left hand corner pocket there, and then take reds, I think that'll be the way to go. What do you think, Dave? Yes, mate, definitely. Yeah, I think he, if he's going to play a red, uh, play a yellow first, he'll, ideally he'd want to play in the middle of the three yellows, but it's getting the white back out into the open play. I think I think if he just stuns off it, knocks the other one to its right out of the way, and then he's he'll land on 
on the red into the middle. Yeah, he's playing the outside one. Oh, yeah. oh that's okay. That's fine. Much better shot. We do not know what we're talking about. So Gareth goes in heavy favourite, five to two on. Seven to four if you fancy Christian. He's not wasting any time with these. Corner yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Less margin for error. I think he'll he'll leave the one near the boat line to last. Maybe not. Yeah, I think I think that's the ball to leave to last. It doesn't really matter. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Nice finish there from Gareth. Didn't perfect start. Yeah. Off Christian's break as well. Yeah, didn't overcomplicate things. Which is uh, what a lot of the top professionals do. The master of making the easy finishes look easy. Yeah. How many times do you watch games where there's a very easy finish on people who make it look very difficult? These guys never do that. They always play the right shots. If you want to join us on the chat, um, it's on YouTube, through the stream. Try and get some interactions. Any questions about the IPA tour again? Or any questions about the match or the professionals that we've got on here? Playing now or playing on the outside tables? Just let us know. We'll try our best. Gareth's got a massive break. And usually keeps control of the white pretty well as well. Hit them well enough. Made a red into the middle. Um, f for those... Um, who watched the last match with Luke Sanjis, managed to have a quick word of him outside. Amazingly enough, we all think that these professionals have three, four hundred pound cues. Uh, I had read he used a nine and a half mil tip, but didn't mention it because I wanted to make sure. It's true. He has a nine and a half millimeter ch uh, tip and his cue was 20 quid off eBay. So it means nothing. It's just raw talent. Phil on the chat asking when the next event is. It's two months' time in Warwick. If you go onto ipapool.com, all the information is on there. Uh, there probably will be a few entries. You'll have to make sure. We had quite a, uh, a few spare this time, but that was only because flights got cancelled from... Um, where was it, Baz? Um, I, think, I think Bristol had a, Bristol, had, had a it, bit yeah. of a problem. I know a few of the guys had to uh, jump in a car. Wouldn't and like drive the eight hour journey. Yeah, I wouldn't like to do that one. Your usual commentator, uh, who's done an awful lot for IPA commentary, James Honey. He won't be doing any today because he's got an awfully long drive home. And I think he'll be looking to disturb this black now, or, or do you think he'll leave, leave it for a double? Like, yeah. No, straight away, yeah. Early opportunity with these lines, it. He's landed a bit awkward here because uh, he's, he's got a tough one down the rail. I think that's his only pot as well, Baz. Yeah, I think he's... Uh, I am sat next to a lad called Andrew McKee, by the way. It's just that he's a, he's a practice partner of mine. He's from the same town and his nickname's Baz. So if you hear me call him that, I'm not being rude. It's just his name. Needs a good pot here. Great. No outside jaw. Mm. So a chance... Uh, Christian's first chance of the match. They're always tough, those uh, when you're queuing across the nap. So 
Somebody just asked the score between Dunster and Clint. I'm just looking over, and Clint's got a cue in his hand, and I think he's playing Dan Davey. So that may answer your question uh, uh, to who won, what the score was, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Clint won. I will try Clint and find won. out. Yeah, I think Clint won that match. So Christian looking to even things up with his first opportunity in the match. Yeah, I've watched Christian before and he does like to move the white ball around a lot. It's good to watch. I think it's um, quite common with the, uh, you know, the Welsh. Um, quite common with the, the Welsh, Welsh lads, you know, they do like to fizz the ball around confident in their uh, the shot making the yeah Ben Davies Jordan and Craig all moving around a lot yeah for me that's the way the game should be played but it's all about confidence it's there's own. nothing I mean Mark Farnsworth doesn't move the white ball a lot at all and he's consistently number one so a little delicate shot down the rail he's played that really well left himself nothing to do on the last colour. Yeah, just don't quit on it. A lot of players there, a lot of amateur players, you'll just see just roll that red dead weight. The pros very rarely do that, they accelerate on every shot. Yeah, it gives you greater well, control. Well, less margin for error if you can play a full shot. So back to original odds, seven to four and two to five. And we're back. Had, I think Gareth was nine to one at the start of this tournament. Maybe a little bit more. You watched Christian at all, Baz? Watched a lot of him in the past, or played him maybe? You've been on the um, tour a little bit longer than me. I, I haven't, I haven't played Christian. I, I have watched um, quite a lot of his games. He's a very accomplished player, and I think he's uh, he's um, he's grown over the last couple of years. You know, he's he's uh, he's been knocking on the door, shall we say? He's been around long, you know. Yeah. Good friend of Simon Ward's. Um, I don't. I don't know whether they practice together. But, um, some good players from that neck of the woods, aren't they? All good out the Welsh lads. And they'll be all uh, enjoying uh, the win in the Euros yesterday. Absolutely. To be fair, the English did only have Russia. You know. <laughs> Tough side. Yeah, it turned... Um, came on 2014, but had played before that in the old IPA. Turned pro 2015. Is that Christian? Yeah. yeah. Nickname, Philly. It's from Neath in Wales. Uh, snooker background. As you can probably tell, like a lot of these lads. Yeah, I think um, most pool players, you know, have, have, um, have a high standard of have, have given snooker a go at some point in time, haven't they? You know, you know, um, you know how tough it is to compete at snooker. I like to compete at this game, but um, I think snooker. Does does um, rely heavily on hours of practice to stay at the top level. I think I think you can 
don't have to practice as much at pool. A lot of people haven't got the time. Absolutely. For those who are interested in what Q is using, he's using a QCraft Q, which is endorsed by Ben Davies. Uh, eight to eight and a half mil tip. I reckon he might use that for snooker as well. So that on the borderline for snooker eight mil, eight and a half. So third year. Oh, oh dear, he's uh, oh. I, d I, I, I couldn't see him missing that to be honest, but uh, I think um, he'll be tucked up now. Oh, get out of that one. And, um, I think he can come off the bottom cushion, but I don't know if he, I don't because know. he's going to have to play it with side. If he comes off the bottom cushion, oh, he's going the other way. If he comes off this bottom cushion there, so he's going to have to play off two cushions. Just past the middle pocket on the left hand side with loads of right hand side and I don't think you can cue that part of the white ball. I think this is near on impossible. Yeah, that was the only shot he needed more side but couldn't cue the cue ball. Due to where the cue ball had landed, the yellow was in the way. So Gareth will be looking to move that uh, yellow off the cushion, just near the black, uh, just to make his uh, finish a little bit easy. And he should be able to dolly the other one in to the other middle pocket to leave himself the one on to the top right. He's taking the one out of the middle first. I always like to, I don't know about you Dave, I, I like to leave those ones in the middle. Well they're the middle easier middle. ball set aren't they, but I think if you just wanted to leave the angle, play that one so we had the angle to nudge this one over the top right. Mm. The, 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 I, I understand what you're saying, but the ball, that is the only semi-problem ball, isn't a problem ball at this level. Mm. You can get on it nice by dropping this in the middle. Now, just what I was saying before about playing it dead weight or stunning. There you go, he's dropped it dead weight. Each to their own. So, um, Christian won't be happy with that. He's uh, just gifted, gifted Gareth with this frame. And, uh, you can't you can't give too many to this guy. Two one. Christian now three to one. That's good odds. Gareth Dry I always say if Gareth Dry breaks here. Could be three two down within seven minutes. been around forever. Current world champion, current world doubles champion. Just um, just referring to the chat, talking about the rule sets. Yeah, we play black ball on this tour. Certainly the best to uh, watch don't you think? Yeah, and play. Um, I think um, the uh, the word pool was invented for a, for an attacking 
batting proposition. Quick fire frames. I don't think it was intended to uh, to be a safe sport. It's the same old argument that's been going around for an awful long time. Um, everybody's got an opinion on it. Um, I I personally feel that most pool players want pool to go as big as nine ball and if you're going to compare it to any other sport darts you know to think that the world champion this year got ten thousand pound and the world champion for darts got two hundred and fifty thousand pound is ridiculous and the only way that pool is going to be as big as the other two sports um, with the crowds and the tickets and the Sky Sports coverage is to have something fast, attacking and with the crowd involved. The atmosphere in the last night for the Open Final was similar to that on a much smaller scale obviously much much smaller but it was good it was really really good it was entertainment and yeah, and I always feel personally privileged to commentate free of charge and watch these guys at the top of the game but it doesn't get any higher than this Black ball keeps the game exciting because it's always an attacking option. It gives the players with the best imagination um, the the greater chance of winning. I heard somebody a while ago on a cash game commentary say the world will still give the fudgers a decent chance, but if you cue the best, if you are the best potter at black ball, especially over a distance, you're going to win. Anyway, back to Gareth. Yeah, he's just a bit twitched in between. I think he wanted to come a little bit higher with his white there. Um, don't know if he can chip this one into the uh, middle bag, play with a bit of left hand side. And he's trusting, trusting a little bit to look there because it was hard to avoid that yellow. Ideally, he wanted to come down the left-hand side of it and give him a choice, give himself a choice of two. Now he's pretty much forced into taking this difficult pot down to the bottom left. Just Once, good cueing. Yeah, oh, which is um, they are missable. These the, these mm. pockets are not the biggest. Yeah, he was. Uh, these guys just make them look so. Uh, sorry, Baz. Uh, these guys just make them look so small. They look so big because they're just so precise most of the time. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his white, it was absolutely perfect. It's just uh, just had to make sure the pot. Oh, do you think he'd be going game here? I think, well, he's, he's not got really an opening pot, has he? Mm. I don't think the red passes the yellow bottom left. He may have a plan, but wouldn't like to be taking that on. I think he's he's looking at leaving the white where the red, well, the two reds that are in the middle of the table, the one to the right. He's looking at leaving the white around there, possibly touching ball to the one on the left. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what you've called it there. I think he wants to look, get that white welded to the left one of the two. So just a, a gentle, delicate little shot with topspin here. Well, he's, pushed he's played it wider. But he's, um, he's tied the black up instead. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a good shot. It's a shot selection shot. from these guys, yeah. It's very clever. Christian, um, what you were just saying about him um, going game. If there's anybody that, if if there's a half a chance, he will go for it. Really, is he that attacking? Yeah, he's he's probably, for me, one of the most attacking players on the tour. But um, for him to play safety there, just shows that there wasn't really an option for him to attack. No, it's it's good thinking because if Gareth, um, you know, when when playing the snooker, even if he played it as well as he could with welding it to the red if Gareth does somehow pop the yellow over the bottom left 
and the black's in the open, he's going to have half a chance this way. He's not only going to get out of this snooker, he's got a flute one, and then cannon the black out. So, ma in massive control. I would say, if we're betting, get it on quick. Two to one, two, two to one on Christian Phillips. It's going to be two all. You'd have thought. Don't speak too soon, obviously. But <laughs> heavy favourite in this frame. Yeah. Um, I think Gareth will be looking to try and. The are yellow. He's got an open play. If he can get manage to get on that um, straight, then um, he's always got that black. He I can double that black over to the left middle, can't he? I think he's he's, he's, he's contemplating playing off the jaws. Um, I've seen him look at it a couple of times. Yes, he is. Well, we've seen Scott Gillespie play a similar shot to this in the open last night. He's got it. He's got it. Oh How's God. his look? Oh, that'll do. That will do. Yeah. Well, I was trusting down to a little bit of luck, but Gareth showing his that. Just incredible. Just incredible shot. And I think he's got the angle with screw. I think he can screw directly into this red. Does by the black. Do you think the black passes into the top left? Uh, I'm not sure. Or do you think he's got to go into it? I think it? he's going to go into it. Oh, well, no. Yeah, you're right, do. Bez. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. What a finish. This is a dagger to the heart, this. That has got to hurt. Yeah. I think anybody watching would have thought when, when Christian tied that black up that... Um, naughty, naughty pool. Yeah. <laughs> Might be enjoying that as much as me. And the, the odds reflected there. Gareth now heavy, heavy favourite, one to six. Having a little chuckle to himself. <laughs> Having a sip of his hair of the dog. What are you drinking there, Mr Hibbert? <laughs> yeah, brave man, take it off him. Let's see how we react to that, Christian. Well, there was a little bit of extra force in that. Nice try. You just feel like the world might be going against you when things like that happen. Gareth gets that and then you dry break. Yeah. He's got to keep his head. Because it's far from over this at 3-1. Yeah, first to eight. You know, all these players are capable. All it takes is a couple of dry breaks. And uh, you can get right back in this. I'm just going to make a. If we can make a little bit of a note when Gareth, what time Gareth played that shot. Because it was a fantastic one to uh, remember. We'd definitely be making a bigger meal of it uh, than what will happen if we hadn't seen Scott Gillespie's shot yesterday. Scott, Scott Gillespie's shot was just unreal. Unbelievable. How many people saw that shot, yeah. even thought of it? I certainly didn't. Just, um, just going to give you some um, results, live in play results from the other last 16 matches in the pro. Uh, we currently have Jack Whelan 3 1 up on Ben Davies. As you know, um, Gareth on this table 3 1 up against Christian. But Clint Ianson at 3 0 with Dan Davy. Um, Harry Irwin trailing to Rona McCarthy 3-1 Luke Sanchez 1-0 up on Jason Twist Simon Ward 3-1 up on Jimmy Carney um, Andy McDonald and Alex O'Donoghue and Craig Marsh and Mark Farnsworth I don't know if they've started yet 
But um, he's, he's, um, Craig Marsh is just racking up now. All right, I think, I think they, those games are just getting underway. Craig, nice and easy to spot round the arena. He's got the best haircut. Yeah. <laughs> and um, back to the uh, our commentary table and the live stream. We've got uh, Gareth just about to take a 4 1 lead. The worst possible outcome for Christian after the dry break. He'll, be, he'll feel like the world is ganging up on him. Gareth playing that incredible shot off the jaws. Christian dry breaking. And Gareth showing no mercy, as you'd expect. Yeah, and if you break dishes here, uh, I can't see a way back, to be honest. Well, look at the odds. 1 to 12. 1 to, One to 14 on. Yeah. I will say this, though. 8 to 1's. I will, uh, 8 to 1's a great <laughs> price. I mean... If if you are having a bet and you've got it loaded up, and Gareth does dry break now, I think uh, it's, it's a pretty good price if you can get it on quick. Uh, someone on the chat just asked who would they contact about seeing if there's any places about the next event. If you just go on the ipapool.com website, there's a contact us page there. Uh, there's also Facebook pages, IPA Streaming, IPA Pool. Um, the chairman's name's Kev Barton. Um, you can also get a list of the committee on the website, so there's a few ways you can contact us. They're pretty good at getting back to you as well, so um, there should be a couple of spaces if you're local to Warwick or Brighton. Yeah, and um, if, if you do go onto the uh, Facebook, I think we've just got a new um, player's representatives in uh, Simon Webb yeah he was on the comments with me just before Simon yeah he doesn't mind if you had him on Facebook I think he gets about 20 friend requests a day at the minute so if he's, he's he the guy to com- contact us that's right yeah. Yeah. so Simon Webb that's W-E-double-B um, you can contact him direct or go on the website or Facebook so ideal well not ideal as I said before from 8 to 1 to 11 to 2 due to the dry break Oh, he's just forcing it a little bit. I don't think he's on this one to right middle. He's going to have to go up the table. Yeah, he should still be all right here. Uh... Likes to get his cue through the ball, Christian, doesn't he? You know, he uh... doesn't like doesn't like uh, the old f- f- feather. Shot. Yeah, he likes to keep everything full. A little bit like you, actually. You don't really dolly much, do you? Um, not if, not if I can help it. I think I think there's more chance it can go wrong if you if you take. There's pass, more chance pass. of decelerating, isn't there? Yeah. So it's a again, good shot. He, he just punches punches most. You know. Gives the uh, cue ball less chance to deviate off its line. Oh, some crash bang wall up there in the kitchen in the background. Sack the juggler. Sorry mate, phone's just going off. Girl who rang me at half past two this morning, drunk. She knows who she is. corner right behind this shot very good doesn't pull back very far does he Christian nice and compact with his cue action yeah so you, uh, would you be looking to lead this red over the right middle to last or take it now yeah I think he's got to take it last um, the way he's gone about the finish now he don't want to leave himself straight on his last ball nice little angle there try and bring himself ideally I think he'll be trying to Play off the cushion and come through the gap between the uh, black and yeah. As long as he comes to the right of the black, any sort of cannon on that yellow there where he's looking is fine. Yeah, he's just showing you. He doesn't want to cannon the black. Quite easy to. Well, he's not played that very hard. Yeah, that's a bad thing. He'd be playing it a lot harder than that. 
total snooker oh, called. I still fancy this to go quite close. He, as long as he takes his time, doesn't rush it. That's a bad shot, though. That I think that's a poor shot. Oh, it looks like he's queuing a little bit. Yeah, he looked like he's aiming a little bit thick, but oh, he was closer than I thought he'd be. And um, Gareth let off again. Yeah, he's had it a little bit easy up to now. Well, in a couple of frames, but Christian's not really had the run either. Well, he's, he's had a, he had a chance though there. Yeah. I mean, uh, if it's, it's three two, then it's Christian to break. You know. Okay. Sorry, it's uh, it's four one at the minute, isn't it? Is it four one? I think it is. Yes. Yeah, it is four one. Just get that updated. So playing the pot, nice and confident. If anybody is watching and is a very amateur, is just learning the game. If you sat and watched Gareth Hibbert play pool for about 20 hours, you couldn't go wrong. He doesn't do anything wrong. Very, very rarely. Somebody on the stream asking, is Brighton the closest uh, event in the southwest region. The Warwick's sort of in the middle, and the ones, the other two that are slightly south on Newport, South Wales, which is probably the closest. That was the first event, Newport. Oh, a little bit of mistake. He's overran that. As, is he on this yellow? I, th I think he is, yeah. Um, yeah, so Brighton and Newport are the two in the south, really. And then there's Warwick in the middle, Bradford a bit higher up, and then Glasgow, where we are now. He is on it. Oh. What are you playing here, Baz? Safe safety here. Playing safety behind the black. Yeah. Yellow into the middle of the table. Yeah. I think I'll be looking to try and leave the, uh, what, just, just not the um, yellow out into the middle. Yeah. Leave like, the white as close to the cushion because you don't want to leave the across table. Absolutely yeah. mate, yeah. I'd be very surprised if he does go for this. He's checking, double checking that you want that he's just showing where the very, very ideally where he wants to leave that white. Oh, well, I don't, I don't know what he's played there. Do you, Dave? No. Because I'm pretty sure this cuts. I th I, maybe, maybe he tried to leave it oh, on the it. cushion. He knows straight away he's missed that. Well, he's, I, I feel this is a cut into the middle and it's more than gettable. I think he might take this to the top just because if it rattles, he's not going to leave much. I, I, am, I completely agree with the shot choice, but I don't think Christian will miss this. Unless it's in off to the middle, I think the middle's the shot. And I don't think it is in off. He, he's going to go bottom, I think. I think not. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. If it, he's got it he's yeah, got it great yeah, shot great shot I just feel that was such a tougher shot to play it to the bottom yeah but like he played it at a pace that if you look where where the yellow and white were what what Gareth would have been left with it, it, he would have only been left with the double a difficult one at that so Christian's got himself Frame about on the board. 
stopped um, Gareth from running away with this. Um, if he can break this here, he's right back in this match. the break has he not at all just try and get you uh, an update on the other live scores we currently doesn't not too much change by the look of it. I think we're just waiting for an update on it. There we go. There we go. And we've got um, Jack, Jack Whelan. Who's beaten. Oh, he's 7 2 up against Ben Davies. 7 2. Got good news for the Welsh again now. Clint Ianson, 4 3 down to Dan Davy. Simon Ward leads 4 2 over Jimmy Carney. And Mark Farnsworth is 3 0 up against Craig Marsh. Yeah. Rowan McCarthy, three to up against uh, Harry Irwin. And Dan Davy, four three up against Clint Irons. And Luke Sanjis, who you just watched before, is two one up against Jason Twist. So just got to mind his business a little bit here. And these are the kind of positions where. Professionals usually get it right and amateurs can get it wrong more often than not. Hope that's not a commentator's curse. I think if you just screw across here and uh, leave himself the one on the cushion. Oh, oh what was I just say? Yeah. Commentator's curse and he's caught the yellow and landed. Well, yeah. I don't think he's on it. He might be on one to the bottom right hand side. He just flicked that yellow, didn't he? He that, did. That took the white off 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 its true line. Was a bit unlucky there. You can always rely on a commentator to have the curse of messing something up when you're just about to pick a player up. There you go to the bottom right. He's got it. I'm right. Oh, he's near jaw. Well, I've got to say, I think that hit a chalk mark because that was in at one point. I am stood right behind. Well, I'm sat right behind the pocket. Yeah, I don't. I mean, if it had gone in, I mean, look what he'd been left with. Yeah, left nothing. But it was his only option. So a good chance now for just a just a little awkward one on just above the right middle, but um, it's a good chance here for for Christian to get right back into this match. Um, at four one down, he, he was looking dead and buried, and uh, he's, he's he's come short on that one as well. He's he's not going to be happy. Struggling at the minute. He's going to have to take the one to the top right, I think, now. If he can get his hand on the table, it makes the shot a lot easier. Yeah, I think he's going to have to take that one up to the top right. If in, He'll play this in a fashion that if it leaves it over the bag, it's not a bad shot. Is it, or is he, he's not going for the cut, surely. He's going for the safety. Safety in behind the black. I don't know, in behind the alley. Well, he's I think like he's okay, actually. Mm. Mm. 
see what Mr. Herbert can come up with this time. He's looking to swerve this. Not easy when the cue ball's so close. Yeah, he's got it. But he's got it. And has he got an angle? I think he might have to play with just a little bit of left hand side. Mm. Um, and even then, he doesn't want to flick this way. He needs a, at least a quarter ball contact just to bring the red out from the cushion. I think that's a Yeah, just play with a little bit of left hand side there. You just see it. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well. Yeah. Sometimes you, 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 you're so conscious about making the right contact that uh, you forget the, the fundamental pop. Not left Christian anything simple, so it could be a, could be just a, a safety shot here. Maybe the one just above right middle. Just bring that off the cushion, or is he going to go the one at the top left? He's looking at. Um, I think the one over just just above the right middle. If he brings that one out into play, it's not going to leave anything. Easy. If you do want any updates on outside tables, we do try and do it every now and again for the amateur and the pro. But links have a bird on the chat so you can check them. Um, all the tables here at the IPA have tablets on the end of the tables. And so when a player has won a frame, they update on the tablet and it updates to the rest of the world. So you guys can check it all out. Just Please don't search any of my results this That's weekend. That's a great shot. He's, um, he's tied the black up in a way that his own ball, I think, pops. But the, the black, black doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. Um, it's very well uh, thought out. He's left the white over. Snooker in. Gareth on the one over the pocket. I think, by the looks of this... Gareth's looking to double this one down, break the black out, and in the same shot, screw across and pot his own ball, I think. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Looking for another world, yeah. He's looking for cushion black oh, pocket. No, maybe not, maybe not. No, was he playing safe? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he did. That's exactly what he played, Baz. You think you're right? No, I don't think he did. <laughs> Do you not think he did? No. I think he did. I think he tried to play cushion black pocket. No. Certainly, a uh, shot up after he played the shot. I think he, I think he double kissed it, didn't he? He did double kiss. I mean, what I mean, what he meant for. Mm. What he went for. So I think if he's going to play a safety, it will be on the one closest to the right middle. Mm. So he will have to pop one first, then play the safety. seems in at every stage of every match there's key frames and uh, things go a little bit scrappy and whoever seems to get the key frames goes heavy favourite for the match it happened in the last match with Luke Sanji's at 4 all and 5 all. they were two massive frames and he, he, he took them both either due to mistakes by Neil Raybone or just by decent finishing and I believe that's won it, what won him the match and he does as well such fine margins and uh, Christian if he wins this I'll be right back in the match I mean 5 to 1 he is at the moment I mean you wouldn't touch Gareth at 1 to 10 I don't think yeah not much value there so playing this one into the top left Oh, oh he's so tried to make the skill shot. And he's unlucky there. He was unlucky. He cued that really well. He missed that by a whisker. He's still got the option here. He can play this into the middle, depending on how straight he is. And then he can play the safety. The problem, he, the reason he doesn't want to play the safety is because going across the table on one cushion, yeah. it's too easy for someone like Gareth. 
he's just showing you there. He's um, he was looking at landing on that uh, the one just above the right middle as a double, and uh, bringing the other one out at the same time um, in playing that shot. He'd be very unlucky not to leave himself the one tied up on the black who's playing a safe again. Oh, he's, uh, he's left. Has that. he left a gap? Yeah, I think he has. It's a poor shot. It looks like he has on our screens. It's going to be side cushion first. Wants to clip this red quite thin. If he plays it thick, he might play it harder. He's going to have a tough last red, but the black's still tied up, so. Yeah. These I mean, aren't I mean, easy. I think I think Gareth's not, not even uh, entertaining that pot. I think he's looking at just coming across the table and playing his other other red. Yeah, he doesn't want to pass control, does he? Yeah. That's a good shot. Is oh. he going to get the black out? No. Ooh. But yeah, he's, uh, it's a sensible shot, that was. That was experience. I think both of us would be looking to go game. Yeah. <laughs> and it would have been the wrong decision. Yeah. So, a very much a containing shot now. Oh, that was a great shot. He's piling the pressure on Gareth in this frame by playing that shot. Yeah, clever shot. Clever shot. A little battle going on here for control. Christian was fully in control. But... Gareth just saying by opening the black by saying well if you leave me half a chance at the skill shot I'll play it that's a good snooker though I think that's nearly touching ball alright it's only one cushion but these are never easy I suppose with the red being so close to the side cushion more margin for error right now then he does have an opportunity here to either play a more testing safety or set himself up for the skill shot. I think he's... I, 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 I personally, knowing the nature of um, Christian's game, I think if we're going for the skill shot here... Has he got the angle now? I don't know, he's, um, he's playing... He's Plenty playing of the bottom and right-hand side. Into the cue ball, oh, and he's fouled. I, I think that was... A little bit tight, he was forcing it a little bit, he played him a lot of side. So Gareth being rewarded for Boo's patience in what I believe is a big frame in the match. Yeah, well played there for Gareth. Just taking a little uh, break. Maybe we can just have a look at the uh, outside scores in the uh, amateur and the pro. So, quick look at the pro first. Uh, Wheeling, Mr. Wheeling has beaten Ben Davies 8 2. Uh, Clint Johansson is trailing very slightly to Dan Davies 4 3. Uh, Ronan McCarthy 3, Harry, w Harry Owen 2. Jason Twist 1, Luke Sanji's 2. Simon Ward is 5 to up against Jimmy Carney. Alex O'Donoghue is leading Andy McDonnell 1-0. And Craig Marsh is 3-1 down to Mark Farnsworth. I'm just going to clip over to the amateur. Andy Blurton, the big man, is 5-4 up against Michael Oliver. I commented on Michael yesterday. Very good amateur. Ryan Fleming, uh, Scottish international, is 6 all with Liam Ray. Rob Duncan, a uh, very good amateur again. He's a very good player. He beat um, Jordan Shepard in Newport. It's 3 all against Luke Johnson. 
Uh, ben Rowland is due to play Zach Wilkinson. Not sure if they're at the hockey yet. At the off. Still says nil nil. Um, just get a couple more results if we can just scroll down. Well, that's it. Because we're in the last eight in the amateur, are we? Last 16. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. We pick a winner out of them. Uh, wow. Rob Duncan. Uh, Rob Duncan, Ryan Fleming. Oh, look, my Ryan Fleming's. Six all, Rob Duncan to three all. You won't be surprised Andy Blurton being there. He's, he used to be a professional, did he, Andy? I think he's no. He's, I think he's turning professional next year. Right. Um, Andy's um, consistently churning out good results, and I think he got to another. He got to the semi of the Open yesterday. So that's a great achievement in itself. Um, he's won one of the amateur events. I don't know whether it was this season or the other season before. But so some fantastic pool being played. I mean, when you get to this stage of the amateurs, there's not really that much difference between them and the pros. Ben Rowland, uh, whoever was asking about him in the chat, has just walked over to top table, so I presume he's about to kick off any minute. So Gaz back. In for the eighth frame. He'll be very happy with the way things have gone so far. Nine to one for Christian Phillips. One to sixteen up for Mr. Hibbert. If you want to join us, a little bit of interaction. Fire up the uh, the stream on YouTube and join in on the chat. Massive break. White has been kicked into the jaw in the middle, but manages to escape, and he has made a ball. I think he'll be looking at straight away at this yellow, yellow, red combination. Pop the red, and uh, keeping hold of reds. Just he's just eyeing that up there. I prefer the look of reds in this. Uh, the only thing that's just holding him back there is he wants to dig down on this a little bit, and, which makes it missable, but still expects him to get it, which he does. Is he on the one to top right? I don't think he is. Do you think he might, might play the one to the bottom right and try and get on that? Try and disturb the black? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bottom right, my apologies. I think that passes into the middle. Mm. If he's on this one, he'd like to get this out of the way. This is one I thought he wasn't on, but he clearly is. Right, well, he's going to have to play the one to bottom right now. This is only shot. Yeah, he's got the black on on the left cushion and, and a red on the right cushion there. Um, they're the only, the only sort of um, jump out problems on the table. Um, I think the one that he's going to play now into the bottom right, he wanted to try and use that to get to get onto the one on the right hand side of the table. But, um, I should imagine he'll try and get on that one now off this. Do you think? Do you think he'll screw screw over to it? Or? Yeah, I think he, he wants to get that out of the way. Um, there's a couple of shots he could play here. He could move the black, but I don't think he'll do that. It's too risky. It means he's bound to play it now. No, just a, yep, as you called it right, but he's not good on this. No, he's gonna just have to bob this in down the rail and then probably play the one to middle. Yeah, unless he can not, uh, bob it in and and play the one to the bottom, the bottom left. Yeah, come, come back out and see he could come back two. across, but I think a better position going the other way. He can always screw into the black. This isn't easy, this, though. Look at his bridge hand. 
Oh, he got a kick. He got a kick. The red jumped right up. And so did the white. Just, uh, that can happen when you're queuing down. Showing a bit of um, angle with himself there, Gareth, which is a very rare sight. Just uh, just ripped ripped his cloth off the table in a, in a disgusted manner. Not happy with himself. Great chance here for Christian, yeah. Yeah, the black is tied up. I'm not sure if it passes the red down the rail. But this is a good opportunity. So it hasn't landed perfect angle on the, on the one on the black spot. So because of that angle, he's chose to go back up the table. He's just looking for a better angle. I think, ideally, he'd like to play down for the bottom yellow now, but he's finished the other side of this yellow. So just plenty of right-hand side. Can play this one of two ways. Can screw on and off the side cushion or bob it in. Christian usually opting for the the harder shot. Oh, and a miss. Didn't expect that. No, not at all. So, stri Gara straight back in with another chance. I'll be looking to play the red over the pocket with... Oh, no. He spotted a double, I think, has he? No, just playing containing to take the bag. I thought he might have gone game there, you know. Could have played the one over the right-hand side. The check side. Has he left a shot on this yellow? Can you see? No, because he's playing, he's he's playing the one this. in the middle. He's looking to cut it. Great, Great shot. shot. Needs a cannon on this red. No, Ooh. I think he's, he, he can... Uh, he's going to have to play... I think he's going to have to play the double on the black. But um, if he can just float this in... Just he's float it in and, and leave the white foot for the double on the black into the middle. Mm. Yeah. It's got to be precise. He doesn't snook himself. If that's what he chooses to play. He's played the check side. Well, does it pass? No, not at all. I think he was trying to move that off the cushion. He's not afraid of using a lot of side, Christian, is he? No, and he's. He, I think he's looking now to double it into the bottom right, um, which is not easy. Or 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 off. Maybe maybe we're going to look at a three cushions. Three cushions, yeah. Three cushions into the top left, or the double. Oh, oh my days! Oh my! Well. <laughs> A little raise, no, of the, raise um, it. A little no raise, emotion. A little raise of the eyebrows off. <laughs> no Can emotion, no apology. <laughs> yeah, a little bit excited, Richard Reed. <laughs> wow. Well, it has to be noted that there was no apology there. Absolutely no emotion from Gareth. He don't think he even blinked. He just, he just made a little right raise of the eyebrows, like a, yeah, like a whatever. <laughs> bit of luck again there. Rattled the white in the corner. After you've potted a ball, your priority with the break should be keeping the white in the middle of the table because it makes your opening pot harder. In this case, he's landed okay on both yellow and red. Probably be opting for yellows. chance for uh, Christian to get back in this match you, you know 
It's like the Terminator. Just keeps coming back, but uh, Gareth's giving him, giving him the chance. Well, this is uh, a great opportunity. 5-4. All right, it's Gareth's break next, but well and truly back in it. Yeah. After that marvellous fluke. He's, he's all right there, but he's, uh, I think he wanted to land on, on the left one of the two. But, uh, he should be able to top it off the off, off the top cushion and come back to play that the other the other like, yellow in the same bag. Shot and he's, just, he's just absolutely just, fine now. Yeah, just he, a soft screw. Yeah, and take the block into the middle. Or, or, or is he playing? He's playing the top spin off the side push. Oh, what's he done? What, yeah. Has he got that? Well, I think he's okay, but wow, oh, he was walking a thin rope there. I'm like you, Bez. I didn't see any need to play that. Not that well. Here to argue with Christian's shot choice. Yeah, I he must clearly have the t- pace of the table because he's stony faced. He looked like he could just just stun that in and bring yeah. the white down to the bottom just of the soft, table. Just soft screw and move it an inch or two back. And yeah, just keep things simple. Anyway, makes no difference. It's five four. Gareth to break. And the race to eight for a place in the last eight of the pro event. The unprecedented. I mean, most pros agree that winning the uh, winning the Open is a greater achievement than winning the Pro, just just in the amount of matches. But winning the Pro must feel good because every match is high quality. And um, just to give you a quick update: following this match, we'll have a quarter final clash between two of the IPA's finest, um, Simon Ward versus Jack Wheeler. Oh my days! Two of the best breaks, two of the best shot makers in the game. Sounds brilliant. So that will follow follow this match. You sticking with me, Baz, for that one? Oh, blocking off, void break. Yeah. Um, I'll be looking forward, if I get to do the commentary for that one, I'll be looking forward to that. That's fantastic. Mouth-watering clash. I think will Jack go in favourite with the bookies? I think he probably will. Mm, it's a it's a tough one. Um, they played it. Uh, I mean, the only game I can recall them playing each other, the only one I've seen was um, played. A, I think they played a cash game, um, yeah, which Jack reasonable. came out on top. I think. Um, I think that was it. The corn exchange in Derby, where where Jack plays from. Jack was part of probably the best performance in a cash game I've ever seen he played at the corn exchange, he played Lee Anderson Lee Anderson, thank you uh, in a money game and Lee's a very, very good player but Jack just played like a computer it was just a performance I mean, when he was on a break he just put his headphones in, it was just auto concentration and and it wasn't that Lee made loads of mistakes. It was just that every mistake he did make was punished. And then Jack just never made any of his own. I've never seen a performance like that in a cash game. Yeah, I don't know what's um, I don't know what's um, happened to Lee. I mean, Lee was one of the. One he of was the at a comp in Chester that I played in not so long back. Yeah, I, 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 do, I do know he had to take a bit of time out due to, I think he had an operation or something, or he was in hospital for some for some reason or another. Great player, hopefully we see him back on the IPA. Well, we miss having uh, Lee Anderson and, and his pal Ollie Bale about, if you're out there listening guys. The one-handed magician. 
Yeah. So Gareth failed at the first attempt to get the yellow out, but played a good shot with plenty of right hand side on the second. And then got his problem balls out, and they're all there for the taking now. And lefties are, it just rolled on a little bit, but he's still fine with this. He can cut this back. McGill chopped this in with a with a load of uh, left hand side. Or do you think he'll try and uh, disturb the other one? No, left hand side, mate. Yeah. It, it, then depend on what angle it is. It, it, Obviously, like to be top side of this yellow, so bring the white out into the middle of the table. They send to play into areas. There you go, straight back. And if oh my, it just lands on a fifty p. Just a little stun on and off the cushion. And that's all she wrote. That's a great Gareth Hibbert. Is astonishing and Mark Farnsworth make this game look so easy. I mean, all the pros do, but when they're flowing, it's just so natural. They always go the right way to so make it look so easy all the time. And, the, and it's starting to become a bit of a pattern in this match. Every time Christian gets within a frame, Gareth seems to pull out. And also, well, the thing we've noticed is that when Christian wins a frame, it's looking like hard work. But. Gareth taking the taking the easy chances and keeping them easy. Yeah, I think if Christian did lose this match, he uh, he won't look out. He won't have fond memories of it because uh, he has he has had his chances, and um, and he's come up dry there. He's not, he's, the balls haven't broken out. Sarcastic nod of the head. Can't let yourself get into the negative frame of mind. You've just been losing the match straight away. Good opening pot by Gaz. May I like to play the one near the black and open the black up, but I don't think you can hold the white for guaranteed position. He's looking at it again. Self a shot anyway. He's just working out if he can if he can pop that red and flick off the yellow and come up behind the other two. He, he doesn't like it. He's uh, his original shot I'm just looking to play off the red and with a bit of side and just take it up but he's just tied that black up now um, he, he played his intended shot well but it's just brought a yellow out into the middle of the table which, which stops that black he should be okay because the red to the right of the black. If he if he can just dolly that in, leave the black to the left middle. 
so I'll be, be looking to just hold the white now off off the yellow and the pots this is just pointing the cue there you can just stun this into the middle bag hold the white oh, just just come over a bit too much so we might have to stun into this yellow just to hold hold the white for the black into the to the left center that's all I needed to do and, uh, and then this should be 7-4 which will put him on the hill So Gareth now looking to uh, to wrap this match up. He's got a bit of breathing space now. He's uh, he's opened up a three-frame lead. Only needs one more. Craig Marsh there sat in the background. I presume oh, that's unlucky. I presume Craig's uh, been knocked out by Mark Farnsworth. Yeah, he was trailing and doesn't look too happy. And Mark Farns are smiling, so. Yeah, body language suggests. We're just going to get confirmation of that and updates on the amateur as well, hopefully. Christian just looking to play this red onto the yellow, leave the red on the cushion, bring the yellow out. Chat. So Luke Sanchez is 7-2 up against Jason Twist. Rona McCarthy 7-3 up against Harry Irwin. It's close between Clint and Dan Davey. 6-5 to Clint at the moment. Craig Marsh uh, was, was trailing 7-2, so I'm going to take a guess and say that's ended. Probably 8-2, 8-3. And Andy McDonald's trailing Alex Donoghue 3-1. I'll just flick over to the amateur in a second. Christian wasting no time after doing his first shot. Wasting his first shot and getting the, his problem yellow out and tying a red, red up. And in the, in the amateur we've got uh, Michael Oliver. 7-5. Um, is that a winner? Is it first to seven? I think it is. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Michael Oliver, 7-5 winner over Andy Blurton. Um, Rob, Rob Donkin leading Luke Johnson 5-4 Ben Rowland leading Zach Wilson 2-1 and Scott Dunbar and Ryan Fleming all square at one apiece um, Meanwhile Christian like a bad smell won't go away. I'm looking to make uh, make it seven five. And they'll have, the, they'll have the break. Yeah, a couple of people on the chat just talking about the triangles that we use at the IPA. As you got, uh, if you just get a shot of it by uh, fucking to camera two, is it? You just see Christian racking up. Um, it's got a flap on the back of the triangle. So you put all the balls in. As he's doing, you can have a roll them in or put them in like that. And then bring the flap down. Good view. Which tightens all the balls. Forward an inch and then lift off. You can buy them. There's a link through the website. They are very effective. Keep the balls nice and tightly racked of course it, it's down to your own table you know a lot of uh, 
a lot of people have have trouble with the front ball staying on and these these tables are regularly updated with new cloths and kept in uh, pristine condition for each event thanks to our table guy Louis Perinelli does a cracking job yeah thankless job but, uh, often overlooked powers the first one in to make the angle to bring the stun off the side cushion uh, play the one to left middle little cannon on the black here probably I was still asking about the triangles I'm sure we can get a link posted on for you but if you go on to ipapool.com you can find it there So he'd be running, um, playing the one to the right middle and running round off two cushions with either top or top and right hand side. There we go, just top spin he played with. No, he's, 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 he's got that wrong. He's made a mess of that. I think I'd have played that with top and right hand side, just to make the angle a little bit more forgiving. Is it, is Didn't have much margin for error there. I think he has got a shot. He's got a plant, I think. Just, uh, just lining it up. He wants to play this delicate because he doesn't want to... Well, he could play it two ways. He could play it delicate because he's going to run into the other yellow. And he doesn't want to push that onto the cushion, so he'll either play it firm and, and push that yellow on and off the cushion. That's a good shot. Yeah. Wow. He's, he's Still needs a little bit of luck here. He'll take the one at the on one of the the two yellows together. He'll take the left hand side one. Needs a little bit of luck on the other one. Do you think he'll float this one into the middle, Dave? Actually, yeah, he could do. Yeah. And um, come back across. Not on form today, Buzz. That's a good shot. This is a good shot. Wants to be banged straight, preferably. And is. And uh, so this is looking like curtains. It is. So two of the simplest balls he'll pot for a place in the last eight of the pro. Took them well, it has to be said. There we go. Handshake and done. He'll be very pleased with that, I think. That could, there was a few moments there where... Christian could have got back into the match but didn't and uh, Gareth goes through an 8-5 winner uh, our next match is due on in about 20 minutes I think uh, between Simon Ward and the 2015 world champion Jack Whelan should be a cracker I'll speak to you then over and out
Just about the same morning, everyone. I've just checked my watch. It's uh, actually afternoon. Uh, glad you can join us here uh, at the Erskine Bridge Hotel here in uh, Glasgow for the uh, closing stages now of the uh, professional event. I'm in the commentary box with um, Mr. Mark Pickworth. Good afternoon, Kev. Good. Good afternoon. I keep wanting to say good morning. It's not morning. Well, what happened to the morning? Well, you've been in bed most of it, I think. Well, I was playing my match. I might as well have been in my bed. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, 8-1, weren't it? Oh, cheers. <laughs> I've, I've, just, I've, I've only just got over it. Oh, yes, thank God. It was awful. It's not your only 8-1 defeat, though, is it? Remember an 8-0? 
Look at some of your results before. Well, look, I can get this abuse at home. <laughs> Taking a few beatings in my time. Anyway, cracking match here, quarter final. Um, two of the top players in the world Simon Ward from Wales, recent winner of the uh, professional event in Gibraltar against um, 2015 dual world champion Jack the Wonder Whelan so first of all what what are our thoughts on this match Mark I um, did some commentating on Simon's first match on the stream um, and he didn't really play as well as he can if you know what I mean so but uh, I don't know this is definitely going to be a close one Um, it's a flick of a coin, probably 50-50. I mean, um, I'm just going to, if I'm allowed to uh, do my tip, uh, I'll tip Jack on this one. He's, what, 8-6. What, you're actually making a prediction? Yes. <laughs> Would that be asked? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> well, I'm just making it up then. People never make predictions. They, they all want to sit on the fence. So, right, you've gone 8-6, Jack. Pick his prediction. Right then, well... If you're going to be like that, then I'm going to say eight seven Ward. Wow, we're going to be here for every frame. Yep. Sat next to you. This no. is going all the way. <laughs> this is going all the way. Well, it, we will see who gets closest. But it should be a great match. Race to eight frames. Black ball rules. If you're not familiar with black ball rules, we'll uh, try and give you some insights on it during the match. And we uh, we get a lot of new viewers um, all the time, so um, we'll try and guide you through. The rules are uh, pretty simple. Basically, it's it's all out attacking warfare. With a few little intricacies, of course. Yes, Adam, chairman has got things to do. Adam Kurt's going 8 0, Simon. Right, okay. I suppose anything's possible. And Phil agrees with me. And he's just gone dry in the break, so. Phil Corns, he's going 8 6 for Jack. Morocco, yeah, Morocco's um, uh, one of the African pool, na- pool playing nations. I think they play both rule sets. Uh, we had a Moroccan player here who li- currently lives in Paris who flew over for this event, Hamza Moukmia. Originally from Morocco, he's had a great, great experience. I think he's still here somewhere. So yeah, if you've got any questions for uh, for us, well, Mark, really, well, you can answer them as well, you know. <laughs> I want all the answers. Then, uh, yep. Don't know if you can answer that one. <laughs> Black ball more popular than world rules in Morocco. I think it's. From the bit of knowledge I have, I think it's 50 50. I know Morocco won the uh, World Rules team title, didn't they? I think. But I know there's, there are pockets of black ball in Morocco. Certainly, pool in the rest of Africa is all black ball. I think there's about 17 uh, countries. That play in the uh, Africa, all Africa Championships. Which is play to black ball rules. So, Jack missed um, a little dinky one into the middle. Given Simon first. 
first dibs. Yeah, I don't expect him to miss that one in the middle. Okay, but, uh, yeah, someone's got a chance now, haven't they? Is that uh, are we on or seem to be any odds up yet? Uh, They've just put the page up now, so we'll have those odds up shortly. Dave's on the ball, he knows what's going on. Yesterday, from Wayne, Wayne Passmore, and he's saying, "Do you think we should all play black ball rules in all competitions, even in interleague, as we are in between choosing what rules are best?" And a lot of people don't like the deliberate foul rule in world rules. There you go, Mark. There's one for you. Oh. Nice, easy starter. Oh, brilliant. Um, just turn your computer off, and oh, well, I'm not sure we can answer that one. It's, uh, I don't know, everyone's got choice, haven't they? It's always nice to have choice, but like in mean, the shops, and you, you can go to any shop you want. If you want to play World Rules or Black Boy, you've got a choice, haven't you? So, uh, I mean, yeah. the thing about Interleague, it's obviously an EPA event, so they, they are World Rules, is a World Rules affiliated body, if that's, a, if that's the right terminology. So, they're never going to change. No, definitely um, not. But, you know, you as players and individuals have a choice where you want to play and, uh, and what rule types you want to play. So, um, you know, if you're not sure, give it a go for a season. If you don't like it, you can always go back. You know, yeah. um, and if you want to play on both, uh, we've got no problem with you playing both rule sets. So we, you can come join any of our tournaments anytime. Absolutely, yeah. And I know the um, um, English Black Ball Pool Federation are, are looking to start a, an interleague type um, Format um, next year, I think. So um, hopefully they'll get that off the ground. All the, whole, the hard work that they're they're doing, those guys. Um, so that would be great for Black Ball, and uh, if they can get that off the ground next year. But, um, so you know, there's more and more options uh, available in, in Black Ball at, at, at all levels now. So um, so yeah, so. Just do whatever works for you guys. Yeah, and I think there's more World War players that have come to uh, play black ball rather than the opposite way around, don't they? So uh, black ball's definitely taking off. on now, both 10 to 11 I said it was 50-50 you might get more 50-50 then <laughs> and that's with Simon at the table so uh. that's close that's in oh that's bad enough. lost the white is there a double when Simon's at the table there's always a double it's possible enough as well, is it? I've been asked about the uh, dates for the last event at Brighton. Yes, they're not they're not changing. Was it fourteenth to sixteenth? Yeah, yeah, obviously been a lot of debate about it, but um, the uh, the dates are not changing for us. Yeah, did we have a debate what a couple of months ago? Was it? Yeah. And we found out? Yeah, about a month ago. Mm. Has Dunster played Clint yet? And if so, who won? Uh, Clint won that match. I'm not sure of the score, to be honest.
don't know what can he conjure up here. If anyone can, this man can. give you some uh, live scores updates. Uh, Andy MacDonald, Alex O'Donoghue, they're having a bit of a battle. 4-3 to Andy in that one. Mr. Foundress and Mr. Hibbert, they've had some battles in the last six months, haven't they, those two? Just seem, seem to be like playing, all, playing each other all the time, don't they? Yeah, they're, they're playing in another quarter final, just started out, nil nil. Uh, Clint Ayanson is playing Rona McCarthy, again, they've just started. So the other quarter final will be. <coughs> The winner of Andy, who will he play? Winner of Andy and Alex. I haven't got the drive for Luke me. Sanchez, probably. Yeah, Luke Sanchez, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, because Luke's just beat um, Jason Twist. Has he? Mm. Clint Anson just beat Dan Davy. Farnsworth beat Marsh. Some big matches, isn't mm. there? Ronan beat Harry Irwin. In the amateur event, we can tell you that Ben Rowland is 4 4 with Zach Wilkinson. He was 4 2 up in that, I think, as well, aren't he? Stephen Campbell, he's playing Rob Donkin, they've just started out. Michael Oliver is playing Matty Challen. All great players, these. Scott Dunbar playing Ryan Fleming. Scott is 4 1 up on that one. When you look at the players that have gone out in the last 32 stages, <laughs> phenomenal. Yep. Don't forget, you can catch all the live scores and the result. Oh, so close. He weren't looking. It had just hit in that, though, was he? He was looking at potting. That, that was going in, yeah. He's gutted. He's gutted he's not potting that. You can catch all the uh, live scores and the results if you go onto the IPA Facebook page and click on the links there. It's all there for you. Oh. What's Phil asking now? Are we planning on making more events? Or will it be the same? We'll have to wait and see. Well, we're always planning. Um, I don't think we've ever done two seasons the same. So, um, yeah, we're always planning uh, new things. So, you have to watch this space. But certainly the Tour and the World Championships will be announcing... At uh, the next event in Warwick, and um, all being well, the World Series events will be announcing um, at the Brighton event, and other bits and pieces we will announce as and when. But um, yeah, we're not one for standing still. We're always looking for uh, uh, looking at new opportunities. So um, see what happens. Well, first blood to Jack there. Uh, he's now 64 to win this match. Still a coin flip. Okay. Sorry, 4 to 6 to win the match. That's what it was. And uh, Simon was 65. Did he click the button? Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he heard you. Oh no, I've got such such a, a light voice. Oh, yeah. That's the one. Yeah, of course you do, Phil. <laughs> nice break. Control break from Jack, oh, but lots oh, of power. 
Oh, so that lucky, is unbelievable. Right? He may have that yell in the centre. No, I don't no. think he has. I don't think so. Who was it? And he's not got an easy safety. Camera. Somebody on camera too, if you can see that. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, I think he's he's got a chance of that yellow, isn't he? And the uh, yellows are definitely they're set to be uh, having a go at. He's off at this. This is on. We should be able to see it straight away. That's going to drop, definitely. That was going to be a tough next shot. But he's uh, on a big one. But he's on yellows. A bit of a wobble, but uh, it definitely looked like it was always in. So, do you enjoy the final last night, Mark? I'll tell you um, what, Mark what, Farnsworth and uh, Scott Gillespie. I'll tell you what, that was quality. That was uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant to watch. Just hope all, these, all the uh, ones that were sort of linked into the stream watching it will enjoy it too. Yeah, great final. One of the best that we've seen. That one, great atmosphere. A true England v Scotland affair. It's what we wanted, really, wasn't it? We wanted that, didn't we? I know the Scots wanted Scotland versus Scotland, but uh, makes it unfair, doesn't it? We always got to have a battle. Can he miss the two yellows on the right hand side? Two reds. Two reds. <laughs> Even. I, th- oh, I thought. I thought he left that too thin. Mm. He might have been better off missing them completely, would not he? But. Uh, couldn't understand how he, uh, why, why he left that. He could have done a lot more with the one in, into the centre. Definitely second favourite for this frame, yeah. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this weekend. Really enjoyed it. Shot from the Ward School of uh, <laughs> of angles. I think Wardy might have tried to pot that anyway. <laughs> Had an easy one cushion escape, but obviously looked for the uh, two cushion with it. Tried to nudge it near that bag. on the one this left rail but it's, it's not got position on that you might try and move it I think I'll be trying to move it right. just like that great pictures brought to you by our streaming partner Streamscape Amazing pictures, I'm only Mark. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure how we're going to improve this. I know you, you wanting to improve. This is absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Isn't it? We need to get Dave to buy a fifty thousand pound camera, as opposed to them cheap ones that he's got. I've got only about fifteen thousand. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, he's just not putting enough, enough effort in, is he? <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he? He had early finish yesterday. Did he? Oh, he did, didn't he? Went to bed at ten. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it, was like, it was like half day, finishing at half eleven yesterday. He definitely had a late one in Bradford, didn't he? He was worn out in Bradford. That was a, a very late shift, wasn't it? Uh, it was a, a long old tournament that one with the awards <clears throat> played that competently enough I 
That looks pretty plump. If the odds will go back to even after this. Well, it should, yeah. It should do, shouldn't it? It should be both on the same. It should be pretty close. Although Simon uh, has the extra break, of course, if it goes all the way. Mm. Luke Sanji's play next, please. Got a large bet on him outright at 66s. Oh, that's a... Uh, Luke Sanji, 66? A very shrewd move. He plays the winner of Andy MacDonald and Alex O'Donoghue. Uh, I'll just check the live score for you at the moment. And they're locked in at four all. But Luke plays the winner of that. Having a nice little sit down. Ben Rowland, 5 4 up. On Zach Wilkinson in the amateur. Scott Dunbar, 5 1 up. Ryan Fleming. Mark Farnsworth, 3 0 up on Gareth Hibbert in the uh, professional event. Looking to do the double, which Gareth did here. Two years ago? Was it like yeah, it weren't last year. Two, two years, years ago, ago. did the double. Uh, Ronan McCarthy, 1 0 up on Clint. Uh, Matty Challen, he's having a good run. He's 3 1 up against Michael Oliver, who was impressive on the stream on Friday. And Stephen Campbell, who's been uh, a bit of a find this year as well. Um, some good results. He's 1 0 up against Rob Donkin in the amateur event. So we'll uh, keep you updated on all of those. Some of those finishes last night that uh, Scott and Mark were taking out were uh, of the highest, highest quality. Do you remember that uh, shot that uh, Scott played uh, when it was going in this bottom right-hand corner? He played it off the knuckle to reverse double it into the far, but into the other corner. I do. Wow. It was, that was some shot. That was some knowledge in that shot. Even Mark didn't see that shot, I don't think, when he was talking to him afterwards. No, but um, there, was, there must have been probably 10 or 12 of us that was applauding in the because you could see it, he was playing it. Yeah. Cause he looked at it, he just like, lined it up and he was off for that. He just, he just played it like he gets them most days of the week. Mm. Meant a lot to him as well, didn't it? I know he's disappointed to lose in the end, but he was really happy just to get to the final. In his, I know he wanted to go one step further, but it, uh, it made it a really good final. Yep. So, what's he got up his sleeve here? This is a shot here. If um, he wants to, if any of the viewers never showed it. Um, I think Dave's just looking for it now. Just give us a couple of minutes and uh, we'll be able to show some of the viewers now. I know it's going to take, away, take you away from this match, but uh, it is a really good shot. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that shot in the, uh, in the, at the end of this frame. Dave's got it all queued up. Yeah. It's been a long old few days, hasn't it, Mark? Yeah, I've been here since Wednesday night, Kev. Uh, <laughs> just getting longer, these shifts. <laughs> you had a good run in the Open, though. Yeah, lost to uh, the eventual winner, Mark Farnsworth. We met him last tour as well, didn't we? He's a bit of a bogeyman of mine at the moment. Struggling to find a win against him, like most of, <laughs> most of the other players. I think Gary Ribbett's hasn't beat him either, I don't think. 
We've been asked about uh, Luke Sanjis and this chappy, uh, Gaz, who's got uh, a rather large investment on him. I can't believe he's got 66 in the pro event. He's, he's certainly playing well, his, uh, his Sanjis. He's sneaking up those rankings. Oh, yeah, he was right up there, isn't he? He was right up there last year. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one to call. I think... Um, Whoever he plays between Alex and Andy, I think. They've got the work cut out, haven't they? Yeah, I think you'd probably have to say that Luke is a, a marginal favourite uh, because he's playing well and he's confident. But as we know, this is a crazy game sometimes. This has been a, a pretty impressive finish from Simon so far. He's going to leave himself hampered here, isn't he? Well, he'll have a shot at the black. It's a clip. It doesn't look like it's a start in the last one. It's going straight down. Yeah. There it goes. Yeah. Simon takes a 2 1 lead. Okay, we're going to take you back to last night's final and this shot uh, from Scott Gillespie. Um, he was trailing 4 3 at the time. Let me look at this, look, he's just lining it up there, look. We'll just check the odds for Coral first. <laughs> right, we'll, we might come to it in, in the next frame. <laughs> show you that at the break of the next frame. Certainly worth seeing again. Oh, oh he's played the black as well, straight in. Yeah. That's a big break again that was, wasn't it? For those of you who are new to black ball, if the black goes in off the break, then uh, it's a re -rack. And uh, Jack gets another go. There was an incident that happened last night. There was a, a match on the late last night, um, and the black went in, but um, he, he, he actually the, the guy that was breaking actually came off the table as well. But because the black's gone in, um, I think it was John McAllister. So the white's gone off the table. Black's gone in, and it's it is a re rack again because the black's gone in, and he's he's broke again, and he's cleared up. So. You know, there's a few people sort of questioning it, you know, because you've gone off the table, why should you be able to get another chance at it? But that's the rules of the game. Black goes in, it's really irrelevant where the white goes. It can be in your front drive, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a re -rack. That would be some break if it went in my front drive from here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've got a couple of miles to go. <laughs> anyone's seen a white ball travelling down the <laughs> M74 oh I don't milk it Gav hope you're all enjoying the involvement of corals and uh, you know the extra dimension that that gives to uh, to our events now so you know have a little have a little flutter and uh, you know what you think it's great that uh, they're providing that uh, that service now. That's a careless one from Jack, I think. I think the white was meant to be anywhere near there. Yeah, he's not settled down yet, has he? He's uh, just making a couple of careless shots. White could flip off of this and hit the black and go in this bottom left hand corner. Faster than what he thought. Anyway, it's gone in. Gaz is saying that Luke was uh, 66 is at the beginning of the tournament. He's got the yellow. Yeah, like you say, he's, he's just not quite. Uh, 
got into his fluent best at the moment. Is that double? Mm. Until he's got on anyway. Look at that yellow. Yeah. It's tight, isn't it? I think he's better off looking at a treble because he's got potentially a big bag. If it's on, can't quite tell from this angle. Um, he also backed Jordan Shepherd, who uh, was beaten by Ben Davis in what? That was the shot. It was. Uh, well, um, I'm told Ben Davis was very impressive in beating Jordan Shepard. Which he would have had to be to beat Sheppy. Playing well is Sheppy. He had, um, did he have two final appearances last tour, didn't he? No, one, no, no just one. Semi-final and a final, wasn't it? He got beat in the final by Mr Hibbert. Yeah. See what he's trying there. Alex O'Donoghue, 6 4 up against Andy MacDonald. Zach Wilkinson, 6 5 up against Ben Rowland. Mark Farnsworth, 4 0 up against Gareth Hibbert. Clint and Ronan, 1 each. Matty Challon, 4 2 up against Michael Oliver. Stephen Campbell 2 1 up against Rob Donkin. So that brings you up to date with all the matches on at the moment as we come to the end of uh, the IPA weekend here in Scotland. Sure, we've got a few hours of viewing left yet, though, haven't we? Don't tell Dave that. Oh. We're not telling yet then. We don't tell him what time we think we'll really finish. <laughs> not that I believe you anymore. <laughs> I said we'll be done for three. Yeah, three minutes to four in the morning. No, we'll not be up that late this time, hopefully not. Oh, well, I probably will because I've got a trip back after after yours. I'll probably get home about 4am. Yeah, but have you got the day off work? Yeah, I'm going straight to York tomorrow for uh, oh, a bit of a weekend. Well, a weekend, a week, a couple of days away with the uh, the missus. You should have just met her in York then, gone from my house. If she needs picking up. <laughs> they, have these things, they have these things called trains, you know. Have you ever seen them? Do they have them where you live? No. No. no, I've got, I've got the C. Have you That's got electric it. yet? <laughs> I only just found out Princess Diana died. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a, lot, not a lot around me, near me at all. Ooh. So what shot I'm not here, sure what he played there. You, you couldn't have played on that yellow on the cushion. Cause I really don't know what, what he played. It must have been in between shots there. That's the reason why he's landed nowhere. Unless he's tried to play the double and over it. He can either spin this round off two cushions and play it in the same, this yellow in the same pocket, mm -hmm. or he's playing for the back double. Yeah. And there you go, he's playing for the back double. It's all about holding the white here, isn't it? Can he hold the white? I think that'll come round off two cushions for this black into the right corner. Depends what side and stuff, because Simon puts all sorts on. He's tempted for this bottom left corner, but yeah, double, yeah. he's not going to get on the black. Not easily. See, we're a bit of swerve. Oh, yeah, you can see that definitely. So you just ping that in. Side. Side helps flick the ball into the bag, create a bit of angle. Just push that 
through a little bit more, but we should be okay. Yeah, and uh, it's looking like 2 2. Both 10 to 11. Yeah, nothing between these two, is it? Yeah, 2 2. Shot again from last night. Right then. So it was 4 3 to uh, Mr. Farnsworth. Scott was on reds and he was in a whole world of trouble. So just sit back and watch this shot because it was um, so clever. A hundred percent played for, so watch what he does. You just knew it was in there, look. Yep, Straight that away. was class. You see the, uh, his opponent, Mark, um, tapping. That was a great shot. And then when he cleared up here, the uh, Scots supporters got right behind him, didn't they? Yep, they really did. And I think he took the two frames on the bounce there, didn't he? he took a bit of a commanding lead there. And Mark did well to actually come back from there. We had it, we had it all, really, didn't we? we really did. In the meantime, an absolute massive break yes. from Simon. I think we might need to get that white checked. It can't still be round. <laughs> not sure where he gets his power from. <laughs> <laughs> he's not that tall, is he? <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's well, he's well built, is Simon? There. <laughs> yeah, I know. There was a picture came up on my Facebook page of the first tour event that we did, and uh, there was a picture of Simon on it, and <laughs> he's about half the size he is now. Oh, oh Simon. Careless. He's going to eat his cue. <laughs> Dear. That's a collector's item, that one. Well, he's just gifted this one to Jack now. Yeah, because it's an open table. And immediately Corals recognise that. Jack moves in at 6-4 to four on. He looks like he's going to pinch this one and then it'll be Jack's break. Something they should have been Simon, shouldn't they? They really should. A little bit tricky. Ooh. Can he settle down? He won't want to glance that red. He might might wobble it. He should be okay. Oh, he's oh, missed it. Like he's it. missed Didn't it. Like it. He was conscious of that red. So he was aiming for the right hand side of the pocket. He's, he's missed it. He's missed it by too much. Wow! Didn't see that one coming. You see this red that's over the corner bag. It was it was just blocking all of the bag. So I think it's just been in his mind that he just needed to hit it to the right hand side of that as we look. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, it's, and it's put him off the shot. I don't think the key, um, print queuing was. The reason for that shot, I think it was his his mind telling him just to miss that that red. So I was just keeping the pressure right on him now, isn't he? Alex O'Donoghue, Donoghue, six five up against Andy. Zach Wilkinson has beaten Ben Rowland 7-6 in a cracking match. 
He's missed it, so we've got two shots. Mark Farnsworth, 5 0 up against Gareth Hibbert. Is Gareth turned up? Is he? <laughs> No, he is because I've seen him. The evergreen runner McCarthy. <laughs> the what evergreen? Two one up against Clint. <laughs> Matty Challen doing well. Five two up against Michael Oliver. Because Michael Oliver, he, he's made a bit of a name for himself this weekend again. Yeah, he? he's he's impressive. In quality. Yeah, he is impressive. Oh, that was the match that uh, someone I commentated on yesterday with uh, Michael Oliver. He played really well. Really well. Just use these two reds to get uh, position to nudge this block out. Just like that. But that looks pretty easy. I think you'd get that one, Kev, would you? Yeah, well, with two shots. Okay. <laughs> Always two shots for you, isn't it? <laughs> I can see our friend from Morocco there. Who's come that. via Paris? Hamza? This flight was delayed as well. Apparently, there's something else going on in uh, France in the next few over the next few weeks. Not sure what, but uh, some footy comp. <laughs> Have you had a chat with him about his experience this weekend at all? Or? No, to be honest. And I've just not, not really had much time. But Because uh, he was late getting here when he got here, he was straight on. And uh, you know what these weekends are like. They're just, uh, they're just a blur. Yeah, the hours just disappear. Well, it's not have a clock. Mm. So no doubt I'll probably chat with him on Facebook after the weekend. Thursday when I've recovered. <laughs> Hopefully you're back to work as well. Back to work in the morning. Yeah. I'm not back at work till Friday. Is that out of the half lid? You call me the draft. <laughs> So oh, three two Simon. I think the signs are that this is going all the way. <coughs> Jordan Templeton who uh did so well yesterday so we came so close to getting to the final it's just saying amazing tour you have raised the bar for Paul and you can't wait to play again he's been awesome as well this week and he's played some cracking stuff yep. he really has there's a few of us that have not heard of him and he's come on here he's set it alight hasn't he some quality isn't he yeah yeah we've seen that uh, the strength in depth of, of pole in Scotland there's been a lot of Scottish players played this weekend be great to see more of them at the event but uh, not sure the fans are travelling <laughs> yeah. but it'd be great to see them because there's some real real talent real talent the Scott Gillespie's the Scott Rosses the Jordan Templeton's and Jamie Burnett came as well, didn't he? Yeah, and Jamie Burnett, Jason Shaws, Mark Boyle, who wasn't here. I think he he's just won got last married. year, didn't he? Yeah, he won it last year. So I've had plenty of others that I've not mentioned, but some yeah, some great players. You need to travel, boys. Come on. What's up with you? 
It's a little bit of motorway travelling. Get a plane. Simon won this event, didn't he, uh, last year? Did he beat uh, Christian Phillips in the final last year? Yeah. He did, because... Um, that was late for the fl- they missed the flight, didn't they, because they're still playing, is that right? Yeah, he beat me on the stream as well. What are you doing on there? He luckily beat me in the quarters. Well, I don't know, I think it was just everybody else had gone home. There's only table left <laughs> up. <laughs> and uh, I think he uh, he just he just beat me 8-1. Did he? <laughs> just... sandwich order in we sent Louis to the shop <laughs> for some treats <laughs> <laughs> we deserve a few treats don't we could be a long afternoon and night <laughs> so Simon just rattled that one just went a little bit wrong at the back end of that clearance neither player playing at the fluent best that's for certain but um, all makes for a Great excitement. Jack's just going to try and nudge this red in front of the yellow. Where's the white gone? Oh, dear. Oh, that's a bad misjudgment, is that? Oh, dear. He's just um, taking it out on his chalk. That was a bad misjudgment. yesterday he started off really well 4 nil up Mr Black into the middle and he wasn't the same player again just wonder if history is going to repeat itself running it through bring the light down to this bottom right yeah, and call it yeah. yeah just run it through yeah, this was it, I think this was the, the black similar to this that Jack missed yesterday when he was falling up well Sam I missed that let me see 4-2 yeah. with a race to 8 Just a little bit of daylight now between the two players. And Simon Ward now 8 to 13 on, and Jack's at 5 to 4.
We've got any more latest scores, Kev, have we? I'm just checking on my lawnmower. Oh, not this, <laughs> not this lawnmower again. For those that um, missed missed it yesterday, I'm yeah, probably I've don't want to know. I've been selling my uh, dad's lawnmower on eBay. So it's not very technical. So it's uh, now been sold. Has it? How many yeah. bids did you have in total then? Well, I don't know, but um, it did sell for thirty-six pounds, which will go towards his new one that's costing two hundred and fifty. <laughs> Oh, and that's good then. Which that's my be- mum's really pleased about. That's better than the twenty pound that you uh, last told us. Simon. Sorry, you asked me about latest scores, didn't you? Just um, nod it off for a minute. Alex O'Donoghue, 7 5 up on Andy MacDonald. Mm, just one more for him then. And Mark Farnsworth, 5 1 up against Gareth Hibbert. So Hibbert's up and running, although he's. His opponent five frame starts. Very kind of him. Uh, Clint Ayanson and Ronan three all. Matty Challenge six three up against Michael Oliver in the amateur event. Stephen Campbell three one up against Rob Donkin in the amateur event. Uh, all the matches that are currently uh, taking place. straight on that one. No, he definitely yeah, looks got okay. a bit of an angle there. So, quick as a flash, it's looking like 5-2. Yep, and uh, calls are straight onto that. Looking right down, 2-5. to five. Yep, nice clearance. So Jackie's got it all to do now, but at the end of the day, it's only one break of serve, so if he can uh, break and clear, he's he's only 5-3 down. Get 2-1 on Jack now, I mean Simon still needs 3 frames, doesn't he, so... uh, yeah, it's got a little bit to do yet. Scotch is, I'm saying, thinking a couple of years is going to see Dumpster winning a few events. It might not even take that long. He's knocking on the door, that's for certain. Oh, that's... That's a cardinal sin for these top players to screw straight enough.
It's an interesting uh, comment that's just come up on there. Uh, Dunster already multiple world and European champ, which is probably correct. Well, it is correct. Um, just needs IPA wins. Yeah, not uh, sort of got even got anywhere sort of into the uh, the, the latter stages, has he? No, no, he's still. Um but his day will come, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like you say, he's knocking on the door, and he? so it's only going to be uh, so long before. Not, not that somebody will let him in, but uh, he'll get in there, won't he? Yeah, some players, you know, some players, you know, just adapt to professional status and, and you know, <laughs> go straight to the top, you know, pretty quickly. Some are what I call slow burners, you know, they gradually ease themselves into it and then bush. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe uh, Liam's a, a bit of a slow burner, but no doubt in the talent. Uh, his day will come. And I think uh, but I think there's a few, you know, people like John McAllister, uh, one that comes to mind, whose uh, results you can just see that gradually just getting a little bit better and better. Um, I'll, tell you, so I'll tell you somebody else as well, who's probably not on the tip of your tongue, it's probably Andy Blurton. He's had two fantastic last tours, and he, he, he's definitely knocking on the door as well. Yeah, he won the amateur event at Warwick last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, and he's, he's definitely a professional standard player. And he probably won't be mentioned by most players, because he's not sort of rememberable as like Dunster and that, but uh, he definitely needs to be mentioned in that uh, category, definitely. Yeah, I think he's impressed a few people this weekend who've maybe not not seen uh, a lot of him. Um, did he get to the semis or the quarters? Quarters the last tour and then semis this one. Yeah, I mean that's some form that is. That it really is. Mm. And he's right up there on the rankings as well. The tour. I think after this weekend, he'll probably could be uh, close to the top ten. takes these out this will be some finish Reds in this left bottom left hand corner. Looking at the big bag now in the bottom right hand corner, that looks quite tight to me. It's 
I will go on the black as well. Yeah, I'll be wanting it into the same pocket, of course. But he's left that a little bit too thin to hold for that. Jack to get back into this match now, and to, like I say, it's only a break of serve, isn't it? So if he does take this, it's going to be uh, his break next as well. Close to this last yell as he would like, but um, he doesn't have to do too much with it. Just be uh, dropping it down the rail, run the white forward about three or four inches. Oh, it's not there. You hit that terribly. as it stayed over the bag but um, even if Simon snookers him it's going to be that easy to get out of I think, I think we'll see Simon go for uh, double yep. I think we'll see him try and play in top left Andy McDonald's now seven all with Alex O'Donoghue. He loves a battle, does our Andy, doesn't he? Scott Dunbar, he's five four ahead of Ryan Fleming. Farnsworth now six one up against Gareth Hibbert. Clint Irons and Ronan, they were uh, stuck at uh, four four. Sam to get the bag here though, don't you? Well, oh, it's, it's as good as it could have been for Jack after that attempt at the back double. I mean, that's a thin slice, and if he doesn't get the bag, then he's uh, 
give to Jack an opportunity, but you know, I'd almost be tempted to play cushion first and try and flick it in with a bit of, a bit of side. Just turned. Suppose it was against the nap, wasn't it? So. Yeah, I mean, it, it can happen, you know. Then uh, these tables have got a lot of finger marks on. Oh, five three. Frustrated. I know he's on that frame, but he's uh, he's a frustrated player at the moment. He's not out of this match yet, though, so. Uh, so. Was that white flying all over? Not even a ball down. I've started their amateur match. That must be uh, must be a quarter. That is it. Three quarter. It might even be a semi. That uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, about Zach Wilkinson. Mm. Yes, a semi final. Stephen Campbell four two up on uh, Rob Donkin. That's that's a, uh, a quarter. See Andy Mack and Alex there in a deciding frame. I'm just looking down, and I think uh, Alex is at the table. This looks quite tactical because both players are stood up, so uh, I don't know if that's any easy finish. Or Ryan Fleming's on a big comeback against Scott Dunbar. It was five one. It's now five four. Clinton Ronan five four to Clint. He's turned that round a bit. O'Donnell, they're both stood looking at the tables with their arms folded with their chins resting on their hand so both as confused as each other <laughs> well, it's 7-0, they don't want to open up the balls that are bad I suppose one's going to have to take the ball with a horn sooner or later Thank you. 
big shot this one for Simon. Straight on this, but uh, not sure what he's going to try now. I presume he's going to screw back to the left hand side for the black into the right corner. He doesn't make much of an angle, but yeah, he's, he looks like he's got a little bit of one. He's not much. Centre bag. What a pot that is. Yeah, sure. That's a great the shot. The control was ridiculous. Great shot. Yeah. Great, great finish. So, 6 3. 1 to 4 on now, Simon, to win this match. 3 to 1 on Jack. Jack to break. Farnsworth's now won there. Um, I think it might be 8 2. So Mark Farnsworth in the semi final. He's beating Gareth Hibbert. Where's that why It was heading again towards that uh, corner balls. Ball. Everything's dropped. There's only balls left. <laughs> Far and wide, but he's got um, he's got work to do, whichever he goes for. I think my, I think I slightly prefer. Hmm. Right, is he playing red onto yellow? shot then really he's got to screw back for this yellow into the left centre see how he's feeling oh, he's queuing no, he's moving it that's good, good. pretty well yeah it definitely goes yeah he needs to get a different demeanour about his game doesn't he so he's got to uh, start blocking some frames up he needs to get a good just a good bring finish under his belt just to uh, just to get that confidence back. If you want to find the live score and if you go onto the IPF Facebook page and the links are all there. It's not on the website, uh, but uh, a new app that we're trying at the moment for this event uh, so the link to that is uh, on the IPA Facebook page so that's where to go
the Alex and Andy match finished? It has finished. And Andy Mack has got the score sheet in his hand. Yep, yeah, he's 187. How is one with that beard? I will never know. <laughs> that is one of the worst beards I've ever seen. It's definitely stuck on. It must be cotton real. It is terrible. So he's going to be playing Luke Sanji's in the next few minutes. But if, uh, if he gets to the final and he's on the stream, I think he's going to have to have a shave. So that's, I, don't, I don't think we ought to scare the viewers. Definitely not. Uh, in the other pro matches, uh, Clint Ironson and Ronan, they'll pop together at five frames each. And in other breaking news, uh, sandwiches have arrived from somewhere. Other sandwich providers are available. <laughs> yeah, we won't mention. We announced who's on the uh, streaming after this match at all, Kev? I don't think we know yet. I don't think we know. It's, uh, when it gets to the final stages, it's a very fluid situation, and uh, we'll probably just make a judgment after this match, which could be uh, fairly soon. It's not what he, what he wanted. We've got a bit more drama left in this match, Kev. take on the plane. <laughs> through that gap as well and round the back wow what a shot it's actually given the chance here. I know it's not an easy one but to Jack's just looking at him he's just laughing and nodding <laughs> did you see that Jack looked at us <laughs> I think he wants some help in there can we help him to know what's the next shot. Can Simon ask, answer his question? Here we go. 
Hold your breath. Jumps in. Hold that wheelie. You got your chance you wanted again. You've got to, get it. You've got to take it. safety shot yep made sense he had a big area to go in no need to be uh, be the hero so I'm going to look to pop this there must be one into at the back of it then. Oh. it's ridiculous ridiculous even Jack's laughing <laughs> Give me breath for some of the shots I'm seeing. Well, I hope everyone's appreciating that's watching it. So we've just got an extra 50 viewers because I think it's just all gone over, <laughs> over the stream. Look at Jack here. He's uh, really taking, trying to take control of this frame. He'll, he'll put, I, I reckon Simon can pop this. Jack's come over here for some help. Simon, no, I'm just lining. I think he's snookered. <laughs> no. Wow. Slow down. No. This will be his third safety shot on the trot. He's probably not done that all year. Is that lost a frame. He's going to clip this in the corner bag. Wow. It'll be close. You can get a lot on him. <laughs> you can get high odds from not Simon Ward. Definitely not. What's he trying? Got a cushion. We'll clip it in. Let's come inside it. <laughs> so then, after all the... Uh, wizardry from Ward. Uh, it's a great chance for Jack to just be one frame behind. Himself to break. There's be uh, two frames on the bounce for him. I think we've got the match back on here, aren't we? Yep. Six five. It's my eight six still looking quite good. Well, mine fills anyway. 6-5 yeah 6-5 Jack to break Jack is good value at the minute for the match 5 on from Danny Jones it's 13 to 8 now Jack Danny Jones doesn't think either of these can win this event Interesting opinion. Yeah, opinions are there, aren't they? There's, there is a lot of good players to have left in it in the snow. Do 
Definitely, it's a good break here. He's not probably not seen a good break off track yet in this match, have we? Every break is done. Got ball. Every break Nothing. is done. That white is headed towards that top left corner bag as we look. It's just not quite um, nailing the break. I mean, he's got, got the balls moving, but he's just not getting anything off it, is he? Nothing. Dave's run off. Get him back. Where's he gone? Who said he could go? Hope he's not long. He won't go and leave all this equipment there, would he? Didn't think he got any breaks. How come he's, how come he's got up? We'll be checking the contracts. Don't worry. Rewriting them. Simon, he's got a chance now. Still got one tricky ball, which is close to now. Scott Dunbar, he's won his match 7-4 against Ryan Fleming, so that means he's in the semi-final now. Um, Ronan McCarthy is now 6-5 up against Clint Ryanson. Stephen Campbell, he's leading Rob Duncan 4 frames to 3. And Matty Challen, which is the semi-final against Zach Wilkinson, and Matty's leading that 3 frames to 2. I'm just in that late... Uh, of the quarter final of the pro event, uh, Luke Sanchez is leading Andy McDonald one frame to nil. So your big, your big bet still, uh, still in, in good shape. Yeah. Is it Gaz? Who's got uh, um, Luke Sanchez at sixty sixes? Yeah, and uh, that'd be a good win. I don't know how much he's had on that. Did he? Did he tell you? Just said it had a large bet. Large bet. A large bet. Point, uh, to discuss it then. Good chance here now, Simon. It's going to go 7 5. Up. It's got cue this well. That looks pretty well. <laughs> exactly like that. 7 5 from Simon to break. Simon Ward's shirt. It's his um, shirt he purchased in Gibraltar when we were there for the World Series. Dave's back. 
Thank you. I'm stop the clock. And have a big break there, and these uh, yellows are just sat there in the mercy. It all depends on this black. But he has got a ball there to try and get it out. So, uh, away so you're gonna try and get the black out here now He's getting back in his chair. weekend about uh, people looking to play in the next event at Warwick in August. For anyone that uh, wants to be part of uh, one of our events, um, so just to remind you that our events are open to anyone. Uh, we have two events left this year, um, <coughs> Warwick in August and Brighton in October. So if you want to be, uh, you can't enter on the website at the moment because we, we've closed entry on the website. But um, if you're looking to enter one or both of the remaining events, then uh, just simply uh, send us a message. Uh, email us on Facebook or email myself at uh, chairman at ipapool.com. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you sorted. There's not a lot of uh, places left for Warwick, if I remember rightly. Um, uh, but. Uh, Certainly, places for uh, Brighton uh, available. So, uh, if you want to be uh, be a part of that, then uh, just uh, just let us know. Be great to see you there, and it could be you on the stream playing in front of uh, a great crowd against Mark Pickworth in the final. Okay, not sure about that one, Kev. But uh, okay, <laughs> this has been a great uh, clinical. Clinical finish from Simon. Last two, last couple of frames. So he's two pots away from the fire, from from being in the semi-final. He's still got a chance of retaining his title. Yep. So it's going right centre. One to a thousand on. And That's there why. it goes. Great well, performance, Simon Ward. Jack, you just weren't quite at your best. No. A couple of um, errors. In the uh, early stages of that match, uh, probably cost him. So, I think it's fair to say he's not quite at his best yet, but. Um, he missed a few balls in normal, didn't he? Yeah, he'll be back again. But we'll be seeing, possibly, Simon in the semis. Uh, we're just going to uh, see who's up next, and uh, we'll be we'll keep you updated. 
and we'll let you know what, what the next match will be. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you very shortly.
So, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is the amateur semi final. We've got Steve Campbell versus Scott Dunbar. Good afternoon, everyone. On the mic today, you've got me, Dean Griffin, and me, Adam Kirk. For the Scottish people that are watching this old Scottish affair. I think Scott, he's, this is his third in a row match against one of us as well. He's played the last two matches against Scottish guys. Yeah, he knocked out one of our um, my teammates, Andy Rose. Oh, no. Which is, yes, yes, it was, yeah, yes, good morning. And Andy's a good player. Yeah, Scott's, um, he's, a, he's a very kind of quick fire player. Yeah. Mm. Kind of thrives off confidence if he starts. If he gets going on a run, he's pretty hard to stop. Yeah. Bit of a potting machine, but he can be he can be loose sometimes as well. Whereas Stevens, a bit more calculated, yeah. but a very very good player. He's kind of semi-retired. <laughs> Stephen kind of gave it up for his job yeah. a couple of years ago, but it was Scotland men's A team kind of level at one point. Yeah, so he's very good. The semi-final, is, so I mean, you can't pick a weak player at the players' in the room now. Uh, I've been watching him over the weekend. He's on fire, all of them. Yeah, the amateur event's been really strong. Yeah, strong standard this weekend. It tends to be when you come up here as well, because a lot of the Scottish guys that maybe don't travel to other events ponder in. Mm. It's, my, it's my first um, time at the Scottish event. Scottish event. All right. Yeah, it's not too bad. Just a bit of a journey. Yeah. Where's it you came from? Northampton. Ah, right, that's not uh, too bad, I suppose. It's hanging in the house fight from Birmingham, so it's not, you know, not too bad. There we go, 1-0 to Stephen Campbell. Yeah, good start. You won't see a lot, of, well, a lot of safety in this game anyway. That's, that's what we want, isn't it? That's what Black Bull's about. What do you reckon of the setup this weekend? Yeah, it looks really good. Mm. Looks kind of the same, similar last time. Yeah. Uh, there seems to be a bit more tech this time. Yeah. So it's constantly kind of evolving, improving, yeah, which is good. I'm really impressed with the live scores that they've got. You can follow each match. Yeah. You know, see how all your friends are doing on the um, live scoring. So it's quite, quite good, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to see it because we only obviously have it once a year. It's, mm. and I don't play in the tour, so it's good to see every year there's, there's progress and something new happening yeah. with it. Yeah. So now we've got open table. Let's see. What do you reckon? The yellows are. To be honest, they both all yeah. look open. I think the red below the black goes, mm -hmm. yellow next to the red goes. It's pretty much just pick your preference. Just some break. Yeah, you, you wouldn't expect them to you know, miss for me. No. I'd probably fancy yellows. Just it takes a problem with that red blow the black out of the equation. So that's what's going for. Looks like it's got slightly too much angle on this one. Mm. I don't know if he just wants to play the soft cannon into the red to hold it. Yeah. Or oh, he's going to take the gun cut. That's a tight cut. I think he's looking at if he plays it a little bit of right hand side, he might come round off the two cushions and up for that yellow just below the yeah. round spot. Oh. I think he's just worried about 
if he takes the yellow at the top left, mm -hmm. the red's going to get in the way. Yeah. He's looking like good down the table. Yeah. Slight little run through. Yeah, there you go. Side top cushion in between the, the yellow and the red, possibly. Yeah. The yellow in the middle. But he's, I think he's doing a bit more travel with the white than he would like. Yeah, and then, and then from that to the black, you know, it's not, make, not yeah. made it easy for himself. But if anyone can do it, Skunk can. That's a nice nudge. That's a nice nudge. Lovely. So clinical. Brilliant. Well, oh, what a match this is going to be. on the Coral website there at the live betting for this match. At the moment, I don't know if it's been updated, but you've got Stephen Campbell, 4-5, to five. he's got the bar, even money, so it's pretty much 50-50. Yeah. I'll just pick a winner. Yeah. First glance, I think, in the reds here, it's a tough opener unless there's a possible got, plant. We've got, what, look, yeah, I can't see, can you see that? Oh, it's just in the way of our camera there. I think it's tight. At best. Well, let's give it a go. No. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Really controlled cue ball very well there. Oh, yeah. Just going to hide. This last roll. Straightforward escape, but you think he's probably going to leave Scott on something. Yeah. There's not really anywhere safe you can leave the white here. So you're looking forward to the next event? Um, not going? Yeah, no, I'm not actually in the tour. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to play just in the kind of one event, mm -hmm. one off up here. You know, kind of due to work circumstances and things, it's difficult for me to yeah. get the weekends and the travelling and stuff. Yeah, um, we're in uh, Warwick next time. All right, okay. It's the closest one for me, that is. Is it? About an hour's drive. So what have you got at the moment? Is it two two in England or three in England? One um, up here. Three in England. We've got Bradford, Warwick. Warwick. And Brighton, Brighton. And, and then you've got Newport and then Glasgow, obviously. Right. And what about an Irish? Are they looking into that? Uh, 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 there, there's a, um, what do you call it, a World Series, isn't it? They travel around. Right. Oh, yeah, Gibraltar. the South Africa, Gibraltar. I've seen yeah. some of those things, yeah. If you want to get involved with IPA, you know, it's a perfect time to get involved. You've got so many things going on in the UK or abroad. Yeah, because when you see some of the kind of the worlds, because I watch all the footage online mm -hmm. and stuff, and you see, you know, South African boys, French guys, yeah, um, Morocco. You know, there's a lot. Some of them might only have one or two, but there's definitely a lot, a lot of quality talent in oh. some of these places. Yeah, just I mean, just look at the talent in the room now. I'm just looking around. You've got Ronan McCarthy, you've got Clint Hansen, you've got uh, Gareth Hibbert. You know. You, the amount of talent just in this room alone. It's just amazing. Yeah. 
some good play. That was Mark Farnsworth just coming to view, sorry. Luke Sanjis. So there's, there's so many, such talent here. I think we've had a, a guy come over from France Murray, this, this weekend as well. Because right. um, I know some of the French, Christophe used to come over a bit. I'm not sure if he still does anymore. Mm. It's obviously a bit of travelling, but it's good to get them over. Yeah, we've got a, a friend of mine, Mark McGoldy, who comes over from Norway. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but it's, it's probably cheaper for him to come <laughs> from Norway than it, it is for me from Northampton. Yeah. I think he said it costs £7.50. Something stupid like that. And obviously we've got our um, event in Norway this year. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on that. Don't fancy buying a paint over there. Is it expensive, is it? Oh, I've heard it's unbelievable. It? Oh. Unbelievable. So you'd expect them to clear these now, wouldn't you? Just to yeah, it was, uh, I think Stephen just took his eye off the ball. He was yeah. focusing a bit too much on the cannon. Yeah. And, um, He's landed nice on this right down the rail as well. He's got, just got a black on the bottom rail, but I mean, for someone who's kind of, it's nothing. Is in an ideal world, you'd obviously want the red to the middle bag to go into the black. Mm. Um, after he takes this, to go up table for onto the corner. But he's just going to make sure he gets a nice angle. Mm. Could go wrong. Oh, oh, he's played that nice. Look at that. Really, really nice. Yeah. I think he's almost played it too well. It's a bit straight down here. Eh? Yeah. He's going to screw back can off Cushion. Yeah, he's the next as he goes. Can I get that without getting into the other? There's just now a result of the other table between Clint Ianson and Brian McCarthy. Oh, he's played that off. Absolutely yeah. lovely. So, just on the basis of the first three frames, you'd have to say Scott. Is it? Just slightly oh, yeah. looking the more positive. I mean, he's not missing. Species. He's had a couple of bad positional shots, but I mean, he's come back. He's on fire. Let's see if I can get a result from the uh, Clint Irons and Ryan mm, McCarthy. See Clint's taking the board up, so yeah, it's looks like Clint. Clint the pro taking that. So look, two ones, Scott Dunbar at the table with the break. I'm looking for a ball. It's It's a big reprieve. And look at them. Yeah, we've got um Ah, oh, what, what a close match. Clint Lyons and Ronan wow. McCarthy. 8 7 to Clint. What a match. Nice. And we've got currently playing, we've got Andy McDonald versus Luke Sanders. That's 4 1 to Andy McDonald. Simon Ward and Mark Farnsworth. I think they're just about to play just now. Farnsworth has looked ridiculous all weekend, really. Oh, he, he always is. You always see him. Towards the finals, just for this consistency of the level that he plays at is mm. unbelievable. It's one thing playing like that now and again, but it's, he does it constantly, mm. over and over. Nice to watch. Well, Stevens used his first shot just to bring his one awkwardish ball. Mm. Nice. She got chose reds. I think it's just about tight control of the cue ball here with the yeah. ball so close together in the pockets. Yeah, they're all there. I mean, someone of these calibre should 
should say that he's uh, being done. I think possibly his most awkward ball is going to be the one near the blue spot. Yeah, that goes top, isn't it? So, top left. Maybe it goes middle. Mm. Does it go middle? Yeah, I think so, but he's just overran that a bit. I think he might be looking at if he can just topping it through and coming through the gap of the two reds. Yeah. For the one on the cushion. Uh, Ooh, nice yeah, one. He's done that well. Yeah, it's a positive stroke. Yeah. A little bit hamper, but it doesn't have anything really yeah. to do with the cue ball, just on and off the cushion. Yeah, and now you see the odds there uh, 10 to 11 on both. Yeah, it's no, about right. Coral can't split these, and neither can I. Nice finish. Again, just showing the importance of the break at this level and yeah. at these rules, especially with the, the kind of two two shots. What, what a match to commentate on, isn't it? Yeah, I love games like this. Yeah, I mean, it makes it easy for us as well. They're doing <laughs> they're doing the whole yard with Always gets the juices flowing. Really wants me to get the cue case out. Does not feel cute? Mm. Stephen Campbell for the break here. We're still on first to seven. Stephen's been hitting monster, monster breaks. I watched the semi final, uh, mm -hmm. quarter final against Rob Duncan. Um, he uses a breaking cue, but it's not actually a break cue, if you know what I mean. He yeah. uses a different cue. And he's been the balls everywhere, like that. So, what's your opinion of breaking cue? Do you reckon that any Yeah, I'm not, personally, I'm not a fan. Um, Obviously, we've got uh, Jason Owen is sponsoring this. Um, oh yeah, they're, they're brilliant. They're amazing. So um, <laughs> no, let's not say too much. I think it's just what suits, you know, if, if you get comfortable yeah. with it and you think about it, I think a lot of it's mind over matter. You know, so some people will see them and they'll just get it in their mind that they're breaking better with it, but I think the break's just about yeah. how you're feeling. If you're feeling positive, you might get one. I like to use, I've got, I've got a regular snooker cue that I use. Uh -huh. um, and it's got a bit, bit of a bigger tip and you're less likely to miss cue from a break and you want you know, a good bit of power. Yeah. But I think these breaking keys are slightly weighted to the front, aren't they? Yeah. So you get more power into it. So he looks like he's got a bit of a tricky opener here, even though the balls have spread fairly well. Yeah, he's going to try to plant here. So we'll take the red in. Mm. Tricky shot. And they're all there now, really. Again, yeah. you can't see him. Missing any of these. He just needs to be careful about because this is when Scott can start to rush when he's on a wee bit of a roll. Sometimes just gets a wee bit ahead of himself and rolls out of position. But it's been looking good so far. And we've got another result just in. Matty Channon versus Zach Wilkinson. Matty one seven six. Another close game. Let me see this. I think that was actually a semi final, so that's him into the final. Was it? Yep. Wow. Been some close games. I mean, there's been some walkovers as well from some of the good people, but there's some close games here. The best place to watch him is, uh, you know, you can sit at home, watch it on the stream. Ah, but it's even better when you come oh, here. Oh, yeah. You got, I mean, you got the venue. You've got the atmosphere, you've got everything. Huh. <coughs> what did we miss? How did Scott do that? So Scott's broke down on the seat, that's what I was just saying to you, you know, oh. so he's, um, again, he's just got a bit ahead of himself and he starts to rush it and that's his biggest downfall. Yeah, I mean, he's got this yellow, yeah, he's got a massive pocket there. Yeah. He's just got, I don't know where the black goes, maybe right middle. Hard to see from this angle. Hello, if you, 
if any of you is watching it on the stream, hello. I think it Same might to might go into the the corner by the two yellows just on one of these angles here. It looks tight. Do you reckon? Oh yeah, yeah. Looks tight, but yeah, camera two's <laughs> picking it up. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. But he's got the best view, so we'll see what he does with it. So obviously his main problem now is the ball close to the rail at the top of the table. Mm -hmm. He's played that nicely. Yep. He's going to have a little bit of distance between white and yellow with the angle he's left. Can't really get into this um, black from where he is. That's a really hard shot. No, nope. just just wade. Nice angle here for Scott to go on this bad ball straight away. Just ran a bit close to that cushion for yeah. comfort. It's a really tricky shot now. Doesn't have to do a lot with the cue ball if he just rolls it in. Slightly hampered by the cushion there. But you should expect him to get this. Yeah. Shot. Yeah. Really nice shot. Yeah, he's got a bit of an angle he can get into this red. Yeah, if he's he guaranteed to be on the one. He needs to. It. Yeah. There you go. Oh, you he's uh, he's got away with that a bit, hasn't he? Joking. I know. Wow. Like I said, Russian eh? focus. Head up. He's got it. He's going out, but. It's black. It's mm. black home. Co combo, two and one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's looking at the top. Or the treble. Possible baggish bag. Well. Be a bit risky. Yeah. The semi looked at it there. He's went treble. 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 Ooh. No. And now they're all there. Yeah. Left the easiest black in the world, but when the yeah. red's close to the middle, it's you've got to go bottom left. Surely, bottom left, bottom right, middle, top. <laughs> I think even I can get these. It's my least favourite shot and pool. Anything on a rail. Least favourite. Yeah. Someone's asking now if, um, if they know if the amateur final will be streamed. I'd, I'd imagine so. I mean, we do stream the finals. We tend to stream the finals. Yeah, you'd like to think so. Yeah. I mean, I know traditionally on the Sunday it does tend to be the kind of pro that they put on, mm. but mm. I think at the standard we've got in the amateur ladder events, you really want to be looking at getting final streamed, definitely. Change there, Stephen Campbell fired to four. 
got them by 4 to 7. Um, we're just going to update the scores. Um, Scott Dunbar won that one. So Scott Dunbar's favourite at the moment. Obviously, first of seven. Betting brought to us by Coral.co.uk. Going to have a little flutter. You had any bets on over the weekend? Only on the football. Oh, right. But, um, Oof. yeah, I lost all my money. <laughs> I was going to say the amount of slips I've seen yeah. for the treble of England, Switzerland, yeah. and uh, Wales. And obviously, last minute goal, not ideal. Yeah, some good odds. I'll, I want you, you know, England 3 1 or 5 2. Oh, they really should have put yeah. a few goals in. I've seen some of the highlights, and they were massively dominant. Mm. But it's the kind of age old problem of. Yeah. Getting in the back of the net with England. I've got some great odds. So I went on Coral, and obviously because they sponsor us, um, went on there. We've got some great odds for it. It's a shame that the um, England team didn't. And then like even money almost to win. Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. He's just went a wee bit awry there. I think he was trying to go into the, the red to the left corner, but to be honest, he's still perfect. Well, yeah. two in. Again, that's looking like another breaking dish. Yep. So I think this next. Oh! Oh, sorry, that'd be allowed. Wow. Oh. Do you believe that? Mm. Simple. What? This is what he's been doing now. Yeah, that is simple. That's, that's got the bar to yeah, tea. T- totally, yeah. Well, you, know, you know, he's got so much ability, so much punk, because he's from a snooker background as well. Mm. But he does this all the time. Starts it, flying and then just yeah. careless, careless misses. You can hit this, and you know, if you're going to hit it, you might as well give it a chance of going in. Yeah, you've got to give it a bit of power. Wow. Might as well. It's a nice little trick shot. Yeah. That could be a big turning point in this match. Yeah. So first ball, uh, cushion ball, imagine. Yeah, it's got to be. And just and then just clear them up. Them out, yeah. yeah. And it's not too difficult. I tell you, I've played Ross McGuinness and he would be fudging. Mm. <laughs> All day long. That one bad ball is not close enough to the bag. No. You look at the odds now, Scott Dunbar's four to five. You know, that's get some money on that. I don't know, I think even money for Steven after that mm-hmm. miss, you know, mentally that could affect him big time. Yeah, yeah. Steven with his break next, gets a nice break and a finish. Yeah. 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 Even money looks big. to evens sorry not evens but levels level uh, odds I can't, I can't believe that missed black yeah unbelievable I know. you get that any, any d- day down his um, snooker club he'll get that oh yeah I 
think he's just came out of the men's A team as well. He got into the Scottish men's A team last last year for the mm-hmm. Europeans, and I don't know if he maybe had not the best time of it down there, but he's he's dropped out of it now. You going to concentrate on IPA, is it? I think he's enjoying it, yeah. I think yeah. he likes it. I mean, you get that sometimes. Let's get those guys out there that are great tournament players locally and stuff and take the step up to international level and it just, just yeah. doesn't happen, you know. They just rabbit in headlights. Yeah, it's a different game, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Updating the scores for you all now. Close, close is away. And dry. Uh, um, it's gone dry. It's a big break as well. It'd have been a great opportunity to kick on after that last frame. Because mm. if Scott can get in here and clear this, these up, he could you know, take that black out of his mind. It's not really. Uh, if he does this right, it's not really a hard red on if he takes red. Yeah, it's just about nice position on that, yeah. the awkward one in the left. But he's going yellow. I mean, they're, they're both open, so. Yeah. Again, when they're kind of clustered like that, it's just about close cue ball control. Mm. You know, this is the, and that's where the, the Farnsworths and the Hibbets and stuff really come into their own when they're just. He's oh, done it again. Start again. Unbelievable. Can get to top left, I think, maybe. Yeah, well, he's got the ball over the bag, so he can actually get rid of his bag yeah. ball straight away with yeah, the plant. Yeah. So, in my opinion, he's, he's straight away my favourite for this frame now. So, again, it's just so hard to predict this game. One way and the other. Stephen Campbell's slightly favourite now because he's in the driving seat. I think, that, like I was saying last frame, I, I thought Scott would have come on there and maybe done damage to get that black out of his mind, but it looks like it might be staying with him. And I think that might. Oh, not again. Wow, what a match. What a match. And it's looking like it's getting to both of them now. Two great chances, either player to kind of capitalise and, you know, maybe take a, a foothold of the match, but they're both struggling. The pressure. He's got to take advantage of this now. He has to. Absolutely has to. He's just got to kind of slow down, compose himself a bit. I mean, it's all, everyone likes to play fast and it looks good and all the rest of it, but not at the expense of missing easy balls. Mm. That yellow is going to have to pull out a semi-difficult recovery pot here. He's not, he's not as clinical as he could be, is he really? Which you know, it makes it more exciting. Yeah. But, but I mean, pretty much 99 times out of 100, he's going to bang one of these oh, yeah. long yellows in because he has a, a very, very good cuist. But inevitably, running out of position like that is going to catch up with you. I think possibly the yellow at top left, I'm not sure if the one to top right goes. And if he's looking at a cut in the middle, then he's risking the yellow and the white running a bit free. So it's the yellow at top left, he's going for it. He's playing out top, is he? Yeah. Just a little gentle no, stun. Oh, that's up. curved in a wee bit. That curved in, definitely. Yeah, so I, I, was, I was looking at the stand right behind you. It looked like it went in, went, in, went to the left a bit. And that changes things a little bit here. Needs to pull off some sort of. Um well, Stephen is a very, very good kicker of balls and yeah. stuff like that. He's got a very good pull brain. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I 
reckon he's missed more in this frame than he has in the last two, three matches. Because I watched him against Rob Duncan and he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Rob's he won that comfortably. Player, yeah, I've heard he's a really good player. You know, and Stephen was really, really good. But <coughs> he's not shown it here yet. Hi to Rob if you're listening. It looked like he, he decelerated on that shot. Yeah, definitely. I don't think he played that as a drag. I don't know, it's just... Mm. Yeah, they're both feeling it now. Yeah. I'm not really sure what he's... Maybe he's just going to get his white safe here. Mm, can he get, he can get that middle, can he? Yeah, I think so. Top right so middle. He's got two problems still, obviously. With this red that's closest to the white, and obviously the, mm. the red top left. So he's got a lot of work to do here. But given his last few shots, this isn't a gimme either. Did you hit that? Wow. What's happening here? Well, I think they just want to <laughs> rack these up and start the next frame, to be honest with you. I had to um, scotchism on the. Um I pay Paul streaming site and that's, that's on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He was one of the Dundee boys. Yeah. He's a good lad, Scott. Hmm. He's alright. <laughs> hey, come on. I don't know about Dunbar he, eating money, finding money. Mm. He, he played he played my mate, so. For money or just in the No, no, just here. Enough. So, hello, if you're watching on YouTube, stick your name up, we give you a shout out. Sounding a bit pirate radio out there. <laughs> Any questions or anything, yeah. feel free to type them into the wee chat box on YouTube and we'll endeavour to find an answer. Yeah, it says, Mr Italiano says, Does anyone know if the amateur final will be streamed? Don't know as of yet. But stay watching YouTube for the best matches. Tell you what, he's not played that ideal. He's almost poker straight on this. Mm. He's probably going to have to leave it for a a long that. one into the top and he's missed it. Wow. and I think he's opened that yeah for the red to go they all go now that is the Zass he's not Taurus. happy he is not happy yeah he can um, he can blow his lid a wee bit because I heard that in one of his previous matches he missed the ball <laughs> and he got a bit annoyed and mm. tried to lift the table <laughs> Which he didn't succeed in. Oh my god. Nearly yeah, had a carapace part there. Yeah, Steed's really got to focus here and then take these out because it's a huge opportunity with the way Scott's mind is at the moment. Mm. If you can nick this one and the next one while he's still stewing. Getting your money's worth here today. <laughs> if you're sitting at home and you want to have a part of this, maybe, I mean, we've got two more events left now. We've got Warwick and we've got Brighton. Have a look on the Facebook page, IPA. Um, I can't remember what the Facebook was, was it now? I think it's just IPA. IPA just have pool, a chat. Or IPA pool .com. Yeah, it's just search IPA comes up. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we do get the occasional um, spaces available. Have a look on there. I know a lot for the next tour, Warwick, I've got a load of my um, county mates going to play on that tour. Yeah, it's good for the local lads that, yeah. you know, maybe don't want to mm. commit to it full term, but. Mm. Hello to the North Hans team. I think so. Yeah, it must do. He's floating down Look nice. That. That's nice. Nicely controlled. So he's looking good to go one frame clear at 4 3. Backwards and forwards, this match is. That's a good thing. And on that note, I'm going to go for a powder break. I shall be back in a moment. Yep. Yeah. So now 
we've got um, <coughs> fourth raid to Steve Campbell. Scott Dunbar to break. Steve Campbell, slightly favourite. She's got that tough red in the top left. He's getting to that at some point. So thank you to my wife Kerry for the refreshments. Very nice they are too. A bit quiet on the um, YouTube channel if you're if you're out there, say hello. So now he's got to get into this red. Missed it, missed it. Unfortunately, though, he's just opened them up for Stephen. No, he's played the total. Obviously, it being a total means that you don't have to hit the ball after you hit your uh, object ball. Sorry, so you don't have to hit the cushion. <coughs> and if you want some money on Scott Dunbar, he's, at f he's 13 to 8. Some good odds given by Coral there. Get a few quid on that, I would. Steve, Steve Campbell, even 1 to 2. Just by Coral, our sponsors here. No, it's got to be a touchy touchy match, this one. Yep, you just called Total. Behind the bottom red, I reckon. But it's, you know, it's a tight, tight shot. Now he's going middle. So have both guys had a chance in this frame, or is it? No, it's been a bit, um, a bit of a touchy frame. This is going to be a. Uh, it's just a bit of a tactical match. This one. Uh, Scott keeps getting totaled. I think he's just too short with the, the yellow at the side to try and 
come in behind that red on the back cushion. I don't know if the angle's there. No, I was looking at it earlier. Maybe it's too hard for that anyway. Oh, well, well, that's a good result. Yeah, it's not total though, is it? Definitely can't see anything on the left. So it's just you can yeah. see the one on the right. <laughs> I've just had a text while I was at the ladies' room from Scott Gillespie, who was our finalist in the Open last night. He lost in a phenomenal match to the eventual winner Mark Farnsworth. So. Well, Hello to Scott Gibbsy Gillespie. And I can also say that he texts me telling me that everyone's raving about this shot they played. And actually, he's admitted that it was a kick that he had. And mm. he was trying to pot it. Um, and he had a massive kick. And it came off the, the back cushion and the knuckle and came across to the other bag. So it was a pure fluke. I've got another text of a friend of mine, Chris Clippo Clipchin. Chris what? <laughs> yeah. We'll just call him Chris. He, um, he's a good lad. He'll be, he'll be at the, other, the next event, I think. Uh, a lot of the players don't get up to this, this high, they get a nosebleed. <laughs> uh, or, or scared, I'm not sure what it is. It's literally like a 40 minute flight from anywhere in England though. Yeah, it just took us 50 minutes from Birmingham. Yeah, nothing. And cheap as well. Ah, exactly. If you fly with like um, Rido Air or something, it's like five pence a ticket plus tax on a sandwich, boom. We shot with the rest then. Uh, just bit, come up a bit that short, short, bit here. short. I think you've got to be looking at the treble here. Treble, you reckon? <laughs> Oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> but but door. Cock, cocktail? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> you Do never you? see them, by the way. Never yeah. ever see them. Oh, he's going. Is he cutting it? He's got a yellow to land into. Is that? Ooh. Oh. Yeah, spot on. Wowzers. Spot on. Four all now. What, what a match. Hello, Gary Felvis on the YouTube chat box. Yes, it is indeed. Mr. Kirk. I think I found my calling in the pool world, which is common for that question. I might say hello to uh, Jason Owen as well. He's usually up in these. Yeah, he's been up here. Oh, has he been up? Yeah, uh, I think he's got away now. I haven't seen him for a while. I would have thought, because he's obviously linked with the IPA now, is he not, as a yeah, sponsor or yeah. something, he would bring up maybe like a restall or... Something to show off oh. his, his cues and things. Oh. Dry. They look nice. They look real nice. Yeah. They're there. They're there. Look at that. Can you get this in the middle? I think at first glance, possibly the yellows. He's going for it. Yeah. No, that's it. <laughs> yeah, he's really slow. So I think he's probably going to look to clear these three up the top and then maybe come down to the back cushion to play the one over the hole and mm -hmm. finish with the yellow possibly in the middle. Yeah. Or if he comes back on the back because you can take the, the yellow Same. and the pink spot into the left middle yeah. first. Yeah, they're not too difficult, but we've seen Scott miss some of these. I mean, because even here he's got to be cute because that red's right in the way of the angle he would like to just stun the yellow. Because mm. if he screws back too much and doesn't get the right angle. Yeah, he's, he's going to be struggling to get onto the bottom ones, eh? Decky McMahon, no, Ronan did not beat Clint. Clint, in fact, beat Ronan 8 7 in a decider. Hello to um, Scott McMillan there. I've got one thing to say stop talking. He's, um, it, Scott McMillan's one of the refs here. He's also oh, our, yeah. our um, 
A team captain for no offence. He keeps coming over and taking this wee oh. control pad thing. I think he's playing the Xbox behind this, the, uh, oh, he the ref's box. I wish he'd bring him me a drink, but he's Scottish, so... No. Ah, I love him then. Oh, yes. He's really uh, I mean, he's making that white ball work. Where's, it, where's his middle yellow going to go? Well, I think it goes in the corner. Looks tight. But he's not sure and he's not happy. He's looking at Scott's face. Well, he's face. never happy. <laughs> Marty Herman. Um, no, Jason Shaw is not in the event. I think he's struggling to kind of find any form at the small ball game after playing on the the kids' nine ball tables for so long now. Mm. distance and it looks tight. This, this is not an easy shot. And he's got to try and get on the black. He's got to hold this white somehow and <clears throat> not an easy shot. Well your telly's bigger than me. What's your telly? That's better. Oh, that was good. That was Missed that by a mile. And that is the worst possible result. Yeah. He's left an easy opener and he's killed his ball. You wouldn't expect to, Scott to get back into this. Not from here. But I reckon he's going to play a total because he's been playing quite a few totals. <sighs> yeah, it could be worth it, you know, because he's just yeah. getting that bag here, right over there. There he goes, yeah. A total. Yeah, two yeah. shots. Because it looks pretty. Tough to hit from where he is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a right shot, really. Sometimes frowned upon playing a snooker in this in this level. But when you need to. Shot. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Look at that. That's a good shot. Half decent result as well. Yeah. Because you can't just touch this red and the yellow goes to the middle. He's going to have to go up top and I've got a huge place to hide. Hmm. Lots of women here. Who's this? That's my wife, Kerry Griffin. She ah. plays for the um, ladies' no fence team. Hello, lady wife person. Who are we? She Who's she better? <laughs> <laughs> well... She doesn't. She doesn't drink that much. So after a few drinks, you know, I tend to lose my head a bit. <laughs> you go for a period of playing really good, and then, and you play rubbish. Hello, Scott, pestering me. <laughs> He's desperate for a close total to go on and call. Whoa! Oh, how many balls did he fuck off there? Got away with that. Hate these wee tappy shots, you just touch off the red. Yeah. Yeah. Shot. Oh, I reckon you can get this one cushion escape. It's not difficult, but I mean, look at where the reds are. Oh, oh he's missed it. And that there you go. Be. And he'll have the ball in hand, and you won't, you won't expect him to miss these. Yeah. Not familiar with um, black walls, you, you get one free shot, which you can play any ball on the table. You can even pot your opponent's ball, but obviously you can't pot a black. You can hit the black. Um, See so what you tend to do: develop your, some of your balls or, or mess up some of their balls. And now he's got one shot to do what he wants. That's it. 
If that red doesn't pass, we may have to go down to him. Or yeah, I don't think it does. It's not left, but he's going to lose a white bit. But I mean, he's got his choice of balls here. Yeah. Got a massive gap there to get through. Just obviously this one was yeah. the nicest one to go in the black, so it's going to have to reroute slightly. Yep. Still shouldn't be a problem. What's, um, what's your thoughts on the possible rule or looking at the rule change for the break foul issue? Yeah, um, Viv was saying something like that. Um, that's, I think that's Gary, Gary Hibbert's wife. Uh, what, what, can you just clarify what the rule is for those that don't know? Yeah, so the rule at the moment is if you break and go in off with the white, you have effectively one free shot to open a ball and then you have another shot. So if you don't pot anything on your first shot, that's fine, you've still got a second visit. And then if you pot them, mm. which the table's still open, so you could play a red onto a yellow, but whatever ball you pot, you become... Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's pretty much like you're getting a foul break from the start and you're ready. Yeah. So, you know, so you're getting sort of two visits, if you like. I... I I don't, I don't think I like that, you know. Well, I think the, ch the chatter is that they were looking at if you're going off the break, you're only getting one, one free visit. So yeah, that's you can um, have to do with that. I'm on a EPA rules, it's way do it. sorry, I said that dirty word. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, when you when you play world rules, you, you know that's that's one shot when you go into the pocket, uh -huh. and that's you know it's a bit more attacking. I know a lot, lot of them lads don't like these rules because you don't get your two shots of safety throughout your um, clearance. And that's good players I play against. Nope. Mm, now. No. He's got a double, but he's going to have to bring the white back. So, one of them shots where you either do or die, really. No, he's not there for that. That's unusual, Scott. It's a good shot, though. Yeah. Yeah, both uh, are betting by Coral, both from 10 to 11 now. So keep an eye on them odds. Um, you know, when one of them gets up or down or whatever, just, just get on it. Because it's been backwards and forwards, both of the odds. And no one can separate these two. Ooh. Where's the work going? Expect him to get this. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. That was a really bad frame for Stephen to lose. You really, really shouldn't have lost that in any way. Got a chance. He's was in control all the time. And it's a bad one. And the odds took a good swing there, so you can get 11 to 8 on Stephen. 47 Scott pulling him to the favourite now. Column Geraghty, Ronan is out of everything and beat in a money match as well. So it's been a pretty unsuccessful trip for Ireland's number two behind George Tierney. So just going to update the scores, Scott Dunbar 5 to 4. In. Ooh, he's not happy. So just when you think someone might run away with it, it looks back on again. Did you reckon here? What kind of? You got a bit, there's a problem down ne next to the black, you got a few. They need to get into or, or something. Yeah, he's, he's going to take these out straight away. The problem balls. He's potted a red, but still open table, so he can take yellows if needed. 
Yeah, I think I think yellow's probably in your best bet. Yeah. Yeah, they're all open, aren't they? Yeah. slightly tricky ones, the one pretty much on the pink spot, I don't think it goes to that corner, so you need to either open that corner or take it to the middle mm. Look and see if you can get to this one bottom right you can Yeah From Chris Clipsham, he's saying it's Clint Ianson and Craig Marshallin. Clint just beat um, Renan McCarthy. Craig Marsh, I don't think he's been having a good weekend. Um, I don't think he's, he's saying, is he? Yeah, I think he's at everything because yeah. he's, uh, he's in his beach uh, attire. Is he, is he on already, is he? Yeah, he's got his nice light blue polo. And ah, I can see him, yeah. Shorts and flip flops on as always. Unfortunately, another you know, great player out, great marsh. He's got to be careful here because this isn't absolute routine, you know, especially yeah, he's played a bad shot. Bit short there, isn't it? It's careless, mm. really, really careless. You can play the middle, but. He's going to clatter into these balls. You, you want to get full contact on that red, really. And if he rolls it in, it looks like he's probably going in off. If he rolls it to the bottom corner. Yeah. Played Ooh, and how's your form? Ooh. I wonder. Does that go? Can we I think it does. Camera two? I think it does. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, that. I hate these shots. And look, he's hampered by that red. It's referee time. Just got his thumbs up to have a look. Oh, no, he's, uh, he's playing away. What a shot. Good shot. Nice shot. Oh, I hate them shots. Tricky, tricky yellow now, though. have to keep me careful with this white here. Don't lose the white. Yeah, it's, his big focus is A, don't lose the white, and B, don't go in off any of that, because he's going to have to hit it. Mm. Yeah, obviously, you need a bit of pace on this white. Oh, he's loaded that up with tons and tons of RHS. Yeah. And he's he's done the white, yeah? Yeah, could have been worse. Nice. Right, got it. Nice finish oh. there. Back to five all. Boom. Wow. What a match. So now this becomes best of three. Now. And if it should go all the way, I think Stephen's got the break and decide that. And he's been breaking nice. Well, could come into play eventually. Yeah. yeah. And this is where the leg comes into it. You know, you get more breaks than the other player. It's very important to win the leg. Oh, that white. Oh. Holy oh, tomato soup. That. I I <laughs> oh, happy about the yellows if we can I get need, an opener. I need to get my ears on. <laughs> Repaired after that. <laughs> wow. I think he's he probably going to have to play this yellow down past the black in the left yep. corner. And if he gets that. Yeah, if he gets that. Yeah, I mean, no. Happy Hanukkah. They're all there, aren't they? Look. Happy Bar Mitzvah. Stephen Campbell at 4 to 7 by O'Coral. Scott Dunbar at 11 to 8. Have a little flutter on that. I think that's big. That's big. Hmm. 47, red's tied up at top. Good job, let's go in the bottom right. Mm. So, yeah. Let's see if we oh my god, oh, that wow. Was a, that wasn't easy, but... 
He's messed it by a distance, yeah. you know? Yeah. He's not a happy bunny. No. These are absolute golden nuggets of joy. And Scott friend. Dunbar has to take advantage of this. 110%. Look at the odds, Ben. Wow, they're just bouncing. 14 to 1, Stephen Campbell. 25 to 1, Scott Dunbar. 14 to 1. <laughs> 14 to 1, 13 to 8. Meet you over gullible. <laughs> Gonna be over its height there. Just got up off the shot. He's not confident. Well, with the messes he's had in the last few frames, I wouldn't be surprised. He should, he should get these, come on. Is he going to take the thin cut? Do you think he's overthinking it or what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, he missed it. Oh, wow, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. I think he overthought that. That wasn't it difficult. Yeah. He's only saving grace. He's, you know, Stephen's got some pretty nasty reds here. Could play this in the middle and come off the top cushion. Crash Bandicoot into those two on the left. Yeah. Yeah, and pretty much it'd be guaranteed to be on one or more than the one towards the middle. I'm surprised. Just want to do it off the middle. Um, I think he's, he's a bit low. I don't think he's got enough angle to get into them. I think he's got too much. I think he's going wide. I think he was perfect in an angle. Do you reckon you can play it with, with a bit of bottom? I mean, that's, that's really tight. Need to punch it. He needs to get right. If he tops it. us through, he's missing these reds. It's, 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 yeah, Guaranteed. He's, he's not sure. He's not sure. And I don't even think any of them double into the the middle. You could take a double into the top right corner, but I think he's missed the boat. I reckon he's going to play it. Oh, oh boom. I called it. Wow. I called it. Everyone, I called that. Wow, what a shot. Yes. What a shot. So now it's down to one bad red. Which is pretty open for a lot of pockets. Both the odds have gone to 10 to 11 now by Coral. That's yeah. a nice stroke. That was that was a shot to play. So I could play this and screw back. Yeah. And either take red, the middle, right yeah. middle or left middle. I'd probably favour left middle if you screw back to the, the cushion because then you're giving yourself more chance of an angle to get up table yep. for the yep. the other red. Tbh. Ooh, he's belted he's, that. He's, got, he's, he's came out smelling there. He's done well there, look. He's come out smelling like Hugo Boss there. That's surprised. That's the difference, but some of the Scottish boys, we like to fizz into things and crash everything. <laughs> Whereas, like, see Ronan and mm. Hibby and all that, they would just, um, I landed on that. Mm. That's, that's all right. You can just talk through. We, we smitch off the other yellow and come nice on the right-hand side. Great clearance here by Stephen. Yeah, it's a monster. Uh, I called that as well. Called that. <laughs> These referees must be bored, by the way. <laughs> ah, no shots, did. Look at that. Boom. Let's say hello to Louis. Where is he? Mr. Muscle. Yeah. We've got a lot of um, unsung heroes that bring, bring the IPA tour to us. Louis is one of them. Runs around. It fix up the table. Louis Perinelli, per per is it? Yeah, something weird something like that. He brushes down all the tables and that. It, it, he's a good lad. Have you seen his forearms? They're I amazing. Know. I know. I, s I, s I sat at his um, breakfast table after him, and one of the knives were bent. Aye. I mean, it, it just some muscle. I tried to get a picture of him yesterday, but he was not having it. So, Scott 
got looking to stay in the match at this visit. Yeah, he's got yards. They're all there, but again, he needs the position. Yeah, they are all there. They don't look too bad. Scott needs this one. Needs to win the next two. Stephen just needs one. One more frame. Definitely going all out attack. Well, he has to, doesn't he? Taking that one. And they're not, they're not the simplest. No. Got to mind as well. That's good. Bit straight, but. What's he going to do here? Oh, he's gonna do I'd favour taking the top right. And yeah. You've got, got positions to get down to these bottom two. Yeah, he's just got to fizz it round off two cushions with a bit of bottom L. Come back for this one on the mid. But then it's getting down the table, he's going to be cute. It's going to be extra cute. Get down. It's all about this shot, I think. Would you go in some or try and pick your way? I think if it goes, if that one goes to the left corner, then and this needs to be perfect. All right, actually. Oh, look at that shot. Yeah, that's nice. He's found that gap. This is decider team. Big team. Decidre. I think he's looking if the black goes to the left corner because if he plays yellow left corner, yellow right middle, and he's straight. Mm. He's looking to see if he could just top it through for the black and left corner, but I don't know if it does. It's looks, a either, bit, looks a bit straight there. Yeah, he's either wanting to nudge the black slightly or just stop the white dead for the black in the middle. Two shots. Be straight. I don't can't see where this black's gonna go. I mean, it does go, but it's gonna leave itself a tough, tough shot. Yeah, he knows it. Yeah, I think he's possibly looking at coming back a, a touch and playing it to the top left. He's not so close to the black. Yeah, looks like that's what he's trying to do. Chop. This is not easy. Would you fancy these? I could do these after a few points down my club, but in this atmosphere, you know, and he, he needs this to still be in it. This is a really tough shot. 
just going to take it to middle. Got camera two. Got it. It's going. Two shot. Wow. What a shot. What a shot. So one frame decider. That's all it's down to. And we came back to what I said a few frames ago. Stephen's got the break, so you can look for any ball just to get a chance. So with Stephen Campbell to um, have the break, this is where it all counts on the final break. Scott. I actually think the reds are better apart from that one. If there was any way you could just get that red out and be on them, they're, they're beautiful, but yellows are just as good, probably. He, he likes yellows because he otherwise you wouldn't have played that shot out, but uh, yeah, I'd say yellows all day for me. see him missing a yellow obviously but it's just how he leaves them because I think that red on the left is still tied up albeit he's going to have chances to open it at this at this level on this um, late in the game and a chance to you know if he misses Stephen's going to clear up I'd, I'd play this with a bit of pace to at least give it a chance of going in. Has he, has he, has he played? No, he's playing he's just safety. Yeah, he took up. So, now Stephen has the chance, and it's all about that one red ball. Stephen, if he had got that over the bag. And to be perfectly honest, we are the way it is right now. Stephen's balls, I think, 45 in play is a big place just now mm. for Stephen. It's 
not a lot separating these in this match. I'd say Stephen Campbell was favourite, but he's at four to five. He's an oh, was an oh, big favourite now. Yeah, big FEV. I'm just going to play here. You know, the red to the left of the white. I think that goes through. So I think they're all there. <laughs> oh my god. god. Oh wow. Yeah, he's taking this red. It's all about this shot, really, now. Bottom left. How the bottom red, if it stays out as well. It doesn't matter if it, if it don't drop. Um, what's he going to yeah. do, really? to go one step further than the last event. Yeah. His first amateur event, he got to the semi-final. And got beat by the eventual winner, Greg Batten. So he's going to look to go at least one step further this time. He's just going to screw on and off the cushion here. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, he's got these. The thread being able to go to the middle as well, it's yeah. really, really nice. One to four. Yeah. Someone give me four grand right now, please. Yeah, I wish I had some money in my bank. <laughs> I'd um, have a little go One to four, he's one to thirty right like now. Three balls, that's guaranteed. He oh. cannot miss these, come on. And Scott's disappointed with himself, he's had the chances. Yeah, and that's it. One to ten now. All over. It's been a great match, and I think it's tough to go all the way to the side. I tell you what, this is. It's had everything. Brilliant match, hasn't it? Potting, tension, misses, safety, excellent match. Great advert for the IPA and for the oh amateurs. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's a little knocking in the black. And Brilliant. Well there done. There we go. Well done to both players there. Very well done. Lucky Scott Dunbar. Well done, Stephen Gamble, who will be in the final. Yep. Do we know what match is coming up after this? Right, we'll just uh, keep it here and we'll let you know as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. See you next time.
Uh, Well, welcome uh, back to uh, Erskine Bridge, where we've got the uh, final of the amateur event coming up for you now, and um, it's another England-Scotland battle, so it looks like it's going to be a cracking match. Uh, first up, from England, we've got Matty Challen. <laughs> Matty, uh, got to the final, how are you feeling now? Um, a bit nervous, didn't play great in my semi-final, but looking forward to the final. It was a tough old battle in the semi against Zach, wasn't it, 7-6? Yeah. He's been for a few, but that was, I think it was my first one. But hopefully he won't run it this close this in, the, in this match. So, um, first IPA final, what would it mean to you to be uh, the uh, amateur champion here up in Scotland? Um, mean the world, because it's my first one. I've had three events and hopefully win this. OK, well, uh, well done so far, Matty, and play well in the final. Matty Challen. And his opponent, a um, local boy from Scotland, it's... Stephen Campbell. <laughs> Stephen, apologies, it's, it's been a long day. Um, first final here in the IP, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm happy to get to the final. We've got to semis as the last one, so happy to make it that wee bit further and hopefully go all the way this time. Tough battle against a uh, fellow countryman, uh, yep. Scott Dunbar, in the final. Yeah, it was. Um, both of us were not our best, but I'm just happy to go over the line. So what would it mean to you to become a uh, Scottish amateur champion here, here in your home territory? Yeah, it means a lot being in Scotland, so it good, good one to win. Okay, and good uh, good local crowd watching you on, on the stream? Yeah, yeah, I've got some, some family there, so and, and also there's lots of guys back home watching. Okay, well, uh, play well in the final, yes. Stephen. Stephen Campbell, everyone. <laughs> and the man in the middle who will be referee, referee in this one is Scott McMillan. OK, just a reminder, it's first to seven uh, in this best of 13 encounter, so we'll hand you over to the commentary box.
Welcome, uh, everyone, to the uh, final of the amateur event. I'll try not to forget your name as well, uh, <laughs> Bob. Oh, and then Kev. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't do any prep and you just not foot it from uh, umping tables. You forget who, who you're announcing. <laughs> well, another England Scotland battle. We had a great one last night. That's right, Stephen. I'm sure we're going to get another one now. Matty Challen from England against Stephen Campbell from Scotland. Wow, he's got a big break, hasn't he? Massive break. It's huge. It's been unlucky, really, not to be on here. An easier yellow. <laughs> yes, Phil, it was a mare. I forgot his name. <laughs> Kevin, I've had a mare all weekend to be fair so it's yeah, just about been, it's not been great <laughs> I don't know much about Stephen but I've heard some great things about him and he has done uh, pretty well in his first couple of events in the RPA like he said he got, he got to the semis of the last one and when you see the strength in depth of these amateur competitions uh, to get to a semi and then a final you're a good player yeah Oh yeah, I'm pleased I'm not in that uh, category anymore, thank God. <laughs> it's a nightmare in there. It's hard to pick a winner as well, really hard. Yeah, and uh, Matty again, he's a, a newcomer this year on the on the IPA tour, so he's absolutely uh, buzzing to get to the final. It's a black on. It's gone safe. Stephen is a, a very attacking player, uh, not one to mess around. So let's see what he's going to do with this. Uh, mm. nice. I mean, top left hand corner, I'm looking at where there's potentially big bag. It's whether he can see enough of that black to uh, double it up there. Oof, it's queuing up here. Have two cushions. Oh, wow. Look at the gear on that one. Oh. That's unlucky, that is. I think that tells us everything we need to know about Stephen Campbell. That shot. Yes, it does. What a great attempt that was. He's even looking at getting this, isn't he? Has he been to the uh, Simon Ward <laughs> School of. Uh, where's that white going? Okay, well, Matty. First, good chance for him now. Yeah, he's going there. Uh, he's keeping the pressure on, isn't he? Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I suppose that red near the black is uh, looks pretty tight. Um, but, uh, oh, I thought we could be looking from the camera angle. I'm sure we can get that. It's a good hit as well, mm, isn't it? Not, has he left that one? Top mm. left. He's not going to be uh, playing any more snookers now, I don't think. No, that's all he wanted. He just wanted a better opportunity. Doesn't really bother if he, if he got two shots or not. He just wanted. First time I've seen Matty play, so interesting to see how he copes with the uh, with the pressure. Yeah, but the, both these players are hanging about, aren't they? I can't see this far. The last mark, well, not even an hour. He's a bit undercooked, that one. Yeah, the red that's nearest, the uh, uh, the white, that's going to be his last ball. Doesn't want to be short on this one. No, he's playing a Good shot. Both look like confident cures, don't they? Yeah, oh yeah, they've both had a great start, haven't they? Just, uh, like just a bit of composure now to... Uh, not perfect, I think the word is. Yeah, just be drawing this back, six inch. Bit of adrenaline there, it's come back a foot, but uh, shouldn't be a problem. Straight down. Straight down and one nil. There we go. First frame. 
a stick and you pay the price. See the old prices are up already. Uh, four to five on Matty Challen. Even money on Stephen Campbell. Yep. Coin flip between these two from first impressions. Both look like excellent players. I hope they don't turn professional. <laughs> yeah. well, that puts us in both of your time, <laughs> thank God. Oh, what we've seen so far. We've seen some great pool this weekend. Really have. Yeah, we have been pool. spoiled, haven't we? Been spoiled. Certainly we've got some more left though, Kev. We're not giving up yet. No, but those tables don't move themselves. So our friends at Corals see that Matty is just a very marginal favourite. He won that one that frame against the serve, so uh, let's see what uh, what Matty's break's like. Stevens was pretty sledgehammering. I'll have to wear a helmet at the back here soon. We're in danger zone. Controlled. Yep. Oh, no ball there. It's unlucky. Mm. So, we'll be having a little uh, look at yellows. Corals can't split them now. I've said it many times before, but the, the strength in depth of the amateur game is absolutely ridiculous. And I think the uh, the professional ranks in the next couple of years are going to be uh, it's going to be a, I know it's a minefield now, but it's going to be a double minefield. Oh yeah, definitely. There's some massive quality coming up. I think what's happening at the AP events were exposing this talent that's probably been around for a while and is probably known locally. But not not to the wider audience. But uh, the wider audience are going to be in for a treat over the next few years, I think. Oh God, yes. The Jordan Templetons, the Stephen Campbells, the Matty Challens. I mean, I could probably reel off about forty names to be honest. Oh God, yeah. I mean, the, uh, the players are not even in this latter stages. They got knocked out in the early round. You know, they've all had previous sort of wins, haven't they? Yeah. gone slightly wrong as that still got the clip in the middle I think he still needs a bit of control though oh, yeah he's going to need to land perfect on this uh, one into the left middle after he's putting this one into the right middle big shot he's shot and he's missed it so he's just uh, just not quite settled um, Stephen Scottish amateur champion in your own backyard. Yeah, Mark, Mark Boyle won this uh, last year, didn't he? He did, yeah. And I think it was, was it Ross Fern in the year before that? I think he beat Scott Ross in the final, didn't he? Did he? I mm. think so, yeah. Just uh, look, looking at one of the results on the other tables, um, just waiting for a quarter final to be finished between Andy McDonald and Luke Sanders. That's 7 7. And uh, and the the other semi final of the pro event between Salmon Ward and Mark Farnsworth that's uh, well in progress and uh, Mark's winning that five frames to three at the moment. Yep, there the uh, last match is on, so we're just going to see a little bit of safety now from Matty. He's playing good match play, Paul. Clint Ayanson waits for the winner of uh, Andy McDonald and Luke Sanchez. That's a 
little careless from Stephen. So block ball rules, he can can pick the white up. Thirty seconds. His two shots don't his first visit is what we call a free visit. So he can pretty much do anything apart from pot the black. And then it's just one visit after that. Quite played that as well as he would have liked, but does that go between them two reds? It looks like it does. Possible. So if I doubt he's going for it anyway. That's loads of red. And I think that uh, red near the centre goes fairly comfortably, so he'll probably just play on that one as his, as his last ball. He's got to play this one uh, along this cushion with a bit of confidence, hasn't he? Because mm -hmm. he needs to not be leaving too much of an angle on that uh, second to last red. Missed it. Yeah. They're not as easy as they look, then. Seems better off trying to punch that in, then, wouldn't he? Instead of just trying to drop it in, but, you know. Everyone sees it different. <sighs> Took the aggressive option there. Mm -hmm. He's got another chance straight away, so uh, he needs to be taking this one. Straightforward from here, but I want you down there. Shot to yours to drop that in the middle. It's perfect on this. Oh, he's rattled it. Well, what was he playing there? Hmm. There's a bit of. Uh... and plays the winner of Mandy McDonald and Luke Sanchez. And he's at the table. Yeah, he is. He's on a clearance. This is off Luke's break as well. He's on his last ball. I can't see where the block is. Middle bag. He's got away with that again. safe and leave the uh, white on the right hand side of the table I think yeah that's the uh, safer shot yeah that's what he's done and I think Matty will be trying to leave the uh, white top left somewhere I think it's not an easy shot, Cap, but uh, yeah, that's where he needs to be. 
There's not many safe places on the table. Oh, he's got taking the bull by the arms. He's left that. Andy McDonald's won eight seven. He has. So they'll be starting their semi final in uh, in a couple of minutes. Winner will play the winner of Mark Farns with Simon Ward. Currently six three to uh, the number one player at the moment, Mark Farnsworth. Can he do the double this weekend? Yeah, well. Gareth Ebbett did it two years ago. Or three years ago, was it? No, definitely two. Was it two? Yeah, definitely two. Some achievement, that. If he does. He's obviously setting his sights on it, isn't he? Because he's coming fresh this morning as well. I know he went out last night, but uh, he still looked fresh this morning. He wanted this as well, didn't he? Yep. He's hungry. Must have bought a new trophy cabinet. Wants to fill it. I doubt he's got room for another one. The referee, Scott McMillan. <sighs> Break. It's deafening. But dry. <laughs> it is, it is. See, there was a bit of movement on there, but I think he was trying to pinch a bit of the bag. Do you reckon he was feeding it a little bit as well, possibly? I mean, it is a bit of a stage up there, isn't it? Yep, these guys are under a lot of pressure. There's a, bit, there's a big title on the line, and they both want it. Is he going to go upstairs for this? Have we got that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that later. <laughs> He's going now. No, he can't go now, can he? It looks quite tight, that top left, but it must go easy. If it does, he's played a good shot there. Yeah, very controlled. Definitely goes. Straight, hasn't he? There's enough cap there behind that red. I think I think he needs to hit the cushion just to flick the red out. It's got the perfect angle, I think, with that. Pinched it the other way, didn't he? Mm. Just to leave himself a definite shot. Probably a sensible uh, option at this stage of the uh, match. Six. So 
overclipped it. So I'm at it. Big chance. Big yeah. ch had a big chance last frame. Didn't quite get it. He'll be keen to uh, take these out. Get that confidence back. I'll try and keep it simple, aren't you, at this stage? Yep. Yeah, it's not always about ability at this stage, it's just about who can uh, keep it all together. Mark Farnsworth has beaten Simon Ward. I'll let you know the score in a minute. Uh, so he's into the final now. Eight frames to three. So now I'll be waiting for the winner of Clint Ianson and uh, Andy MacDonald. Uh, they haven't currently started yet, so uh, should be out on in the next couple of minutes or so. Just being shouted out now as we're talking about it. I think it's time for a sandwich, don't you? <laughs> yeah, well, up to this, where, where Dave could go home early as well. I told him we've got another two matches after this one. We're doing a flyer after this. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody out in the, in the Scotland sort of scenery who wants to come in and have a part of this flyer? Then oh, great shot. Brilliant. Great shot. Yeah, no, that was a joke, everyone, about the flyer. If you're <laughs> yeah, local no. and you're thinking of bobbing down. Uh. Yeah, there's no flyers today. So he got himself out of trouble there. Right. Make him feel a little bit better. Yep. Obviously these guys are, uh, you know, they're wanting to impress people. They know there's a lot of people watching. And uh, they want to win the title, but they want to do it in style as well. And uh, Something that they're not, you know, not that used to doing. No. Have a look at the odds on that. Still can't split them up. 10 to 11 on both of them. Well, familiar name in the world of pull for those who are a little bit older than probably Mark Wayne Fryer who's uh, hopefully going to be playing at Warwick great to see him again one of the uh, great players from probably 20 years ago Wayne is it? 90s he was a great player might still be
It was 20 years too early. If he'd been playing black ball when he was at his pump, my goodness. Take this one up the rail. He's played for it, so. No? Hmm. Not sure about that one. No, oh, he's going to get it out then, is he? Has he got a shot to get it out? Huh? Unless, it, unless he's confident he goes past the red, but uh, it looks a little bit tight. I mean, you're down on that shot there, can you? Do you think it does, or...? I think it does, actually, looking from here. Yeah, it doesn't, on the camera, it doesn't give it to... The camera, it doesn't. It's Dave's cheap cameras. <laughs> but they're making the bags look smaller. I'll tell you what, you're probably right, this does go, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, look now. It's a bit late to be looking now. I know Scott's kept a close eye on him, you know. Yep. Oh, mm. has that stayed out? Mm. Ow! So Stephen's turn to uh, have a look for safety or play it some aggressive. I mean, there's obviously a skill shot option, but. Uh, Something uh, he's going to play the skill shot sooner or later, I think. Probably not from there, though. Bit in no man's land. Mm. He's got plenty of balls around to, to get onto that skill shot. My other half has just enjoyed a roast lamb dinner with my mum and dad. It's alright for some, isn't it? Was there an empty seat, was there? You should you have been there? <laughs> yeah, I said I'd be home at half four. <laughs> you said a lot of things this weekend, Kev. <laughs> you haven't stood to any of them. <laughs> roast lamb dinner. What would you eat for a roast lamb dinner? Sounds good to me. I've had enough cooked breakfast this week, have you? Yeah, I certainly have. Every morning. <laughs> if, Dave's, if Dave's other half's listening, Jane... Dave's not been anywhere near the cook breakfast. He's he's just been having fruit. He's playing the skill shop. Got the best view in the house of this shop. Should be a little easier because that yellow is right in. Between them again. Two all. So uh, Coral's uh, just making uh, Stephen a fraction favourite. enjoyed the coverage uh, we've brought you this weekend it's uh, it has been a great event it has, I know I'm biased but it has been a great event oh yeah there's been quite a lot of talk about it as well haven't there you know, when you're at the bar and that you, you can hear people just talking about it it's, it's, we allege this this sort of event now isn't it so yeah been some great matches on the stream Stephen's dry again State of them, bit of mess, <laughs> bit messy though. Yeah, they are. But yeah, it, uh, it 
has been a great event. We've all got a few weeks off now until uh, the next one in Warwick. Early August. And if you want to uh, be a part of it, there are a few places left uh, for Warwick. Let's uh, give a Matty a little sniff at these now. Yeah, so if you want to uh, put yourselves up against these boys, then uh, just send us a message on Facebook or... Uh, Email us at uh, chairman at ipapool.com. And it could be you on the stream on the Sunday afternoon. Late Sunday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. okay. The action on this hill is gone. Yep. Red's gone. See, not a foul in black ball rules as long as you uh, hit your own ball first and you you can pot yours and your opponents at the same time. Very attacking as he opens, trying to cover the back. Oh, he's No, oh, what's that? So that's a clever shot. It's not left Stephen much, but he's uh, just put that red up there so he can try and develop that red that's tied up. So thinking, thinking good. I think you can see that. Careless there from uh, Stephen. He had a, a big area that he could have snooked him there. So we've been asked the uh, the question: What are the rules regarding playing events arranged by both federations IPA and WEPF? Um, will players get banned from IPA for playing both? Well, simple answer to that one is no. The IPA do not have any banning po uh, policy in place. Uh, for us, our, our view is that you can play, you should be allowed to play in uh, any event you choose. So uh, that's our view on it. Um, as for the other uh, organisations' views on life, then uh, I wouldn't like to comment. <laughs> Because um, that's their business. I don't know their rules, really. I mean, I've not heard of the WEPF banning people, but I have heard of some of the nations within WEPF banning people. Um, but, obviously, I can't speak for them. I can only speak for the IPA, and, uh, you know, we uh, our events are open to anyone. 
and uh, that's it. Not sure about that shot. Um, you tried to do a, a little bit too much there. You could see what he was trying to do. Yeah, just open the game up for himself. But what to get a good safety as well? Will he's uh, he's give Matty a chance now? Yeah. Well, not easy. What's he doing? He's going for a double. That looks tight of the game. That's close. That's in. That is. Oh, that's a great shot. Well, there wasn't much room there, was there? There wasn't any mushrooms. kind of player isn't he Matty he just uh, but he seems to have a good uh, bit of an all round game yeah he seems to be starting into this match now so uh, he's hostile uh, though. I've seen him wiping his face quite uh, often so uh, it must be quite heated up here I don't know a few players have said that it must be Dave's lights again getting involved oh he's getting it right sometime <laughs> are they tanning lights Dave <laughs> I think we're going to have to provide some ambrosia there <laughs> to the players. <laughs> Factor uh, 20. <laughs> but yeah, the setup here, I mean, you can't see it on camera, but um, where we're sat, uh, just behind Scott, there's these three big, huge uh, lights. Um, I've no idea what, well, obviously they provide light, but um, I think it provides, a, is, it, is it a specific type of light? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so... These guys will probably think that they're, uh, you know, playing on TV with, with the setup up here. He's not gone dry again, has he? He has, he's gone dry again. He's not part of the ball yet in this final of his break. He'll be disappointed, but uh, he is winning 3 2. I think that's it, isn't it? That's the, uh, the mentality. He's, he's got to tell himself that you know, I'm 3 2 ahead. Just wait, Dave. He'll update it in a second. Too busy admiring his lights. I think he's switched off from, isn't he? Is, is he still here? <laughs> Has he got another break? <laughs> he's gone to find another English breakfast. Stephen it's always different in a final isn't it never quite uh, it's never quite as easy as you, as you want it isn't it mm, dear let's miss that one just getting a bit loose isn't he well, I think we've got a picture there we might be able to see Dave's lights oh right is, it, is that why he's put it up is, is that why he's been so busy Where's he been to get that? <laughs> that this weekend? It is, isn't it? Must be, yeah. Yeah, Gareth and Scott Gillespie. Yeah. We'll show you that picture in a minute. Oh, oh callous one from uh, Martino. So it's gone really scrappy. Dave wants us to show all of his setup, doesn't he? It's just showing off now. Yeah, even the box of wires. <laughs> <laughs> they're not just any wires. No, they're not. The we Marks and Spencer's wires. <laughs> Undercook that one as well. Try a 
I, this will be some clip. Oh, great Good shot. shot. That looks pretty good, that does. Just play into that red at the top. Leave myself a shot anyway. I think so. As long as you don't go behind it, but, uh, which is possible, but... Be unlucky if he did. Is this Harry? Are we bringing us coffee? Oh, thanks, Harry. Oh, no, he's just walking straight past him. I think he has sneaking yeah. himself a curse of the gods. Yeah. Wow. Oh, dear, he's completely taken his eye off of that one. A bit of frustration there. Mm. I'll give it the respect it needed. Yeah, a bit of frustration, just talking to himself. Just, um... You've just got to dig in, haven't you? When it's you know, when it's just not happening for you, you've just got to dig in. You can't play your A game every match possible. Unless you might find with machine. Because it's not a uh, straightforward plant, is I don't know how it goes. I think he's trying for the plant. Well, I think he's glad it didn't go because he'd have. Uh Right, this day when you can tell some of those shots were. Just needs to uh, regroup. for his lamb dinner. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, it's 4-2. Uh, he's just gone for a comfort break. You notice he's, uh, he's wearing a long sleeve top. So no wonder he's warm. He must, have, he must be playing pool in cold places, that top on. Mm, I think he... Uh, there's the... Uh, set up that Dave's got there, so you see those those big floodlights that uh, he bought from a football stadium Dave sits in front of the computer he's, you, he's not pictured have you noticed Dave's not there? <laughs> where's he again? I think he had another break look how active it is in the arena and Dave's not there <laughs> I, think, I think Dave was playing on table 18 hanging off one of the lights I think been caught. Has, been, has he been caught twice for that now? Swinging on that. The, the never. <laughs> oh dear, someone's uh, putting some choice language on there. That's not allowed. They'll be getting deleted. They've gone. So, what? Well, I was going back to the. Uh, I thought we didn't ban people. 
<laughs> just from chats. Go on, strange. So, what were they saying? Well, that's it, Jamie. I mean, like I say, we, we can't speak for other bodies. Um, we don't ban people. It's as simple as that. You know, players have choices where they want to play. If you want to play for people who support one, then that's your choice. Absolutely fine with us. Don't have a problem. Uh, Stephen Joyce is asking, can you explain the difference in the balls uh, that we're using and the regular balls? Okay, well the balls we use are called Pro Cups. Um, the ones that you would uh, normally see in the pubs and clubs are called casino balls, all made by uh, Aramith. And apart from the slight colour differences, obviously these are a, a slightly deeper red. Uh, the yellows are a bit richer as well. Uh, they are heavier. They are slightly heavier and made from uh, better quality materials than the, than the, the cheaper version. So they do play slightly different. Now the whites are heavier than the, than the normal white ball that you'd, you'd play with, but it's in proportion to the weight of the balls. Um, so that's pretty much the main differences. Personally, I just think they look amazing. Aramith, one of our partners, I've been since the start. because uh, he wanted it to stop all. Will he be skilling or just covering? It's covering. And Matt is not really letting this lead slip it straight away, is he? So he's trying to protect it. skill shot here for Matty if he wants it take it on yellow above their black left corner glide that white across to the uh, right corner no. I think he's playing the right shot there definitely that yellow at the top was just useless didn't do anything did it well you see I'd say he's, he's given he's given now Stephen a free go at least I mean he can plant this and get that red out 
The crown, the black goes. Well, depending if that red goes. Can we just see if that, that red goes down? It doesn't look too. like it does. I've just already looked at camera two. Oh, God, that's tight. Mm. Get down straight away. Oh, play on it now, bro. Where's the white? Don't want the knuckle. He was obviously playing in the other corner, wasn't he? Yeah, he was using that yellow as a guide. That's on the right cushion. That's what he was aiming for. He's got an angle. He's got a good, good angle. Yeah, very good. You drop on it? You've got to, haven't you? So he's oh, using that yellow as a guide. He doesn't want to... Oh, oh my God. God. Goodness that. me, that is so unlucky. That is so unlucky. He's played he's played a, an excellent shot. He's, he's, he's aimed for that yellow. But just to sit on it like that is is cruel luck. It's a problem with a small base game, isn't it? There's a can go wrong. You're being asked about the is it a good shot? I can't see because he's in the way. Can we get him to move? I can't believe he stood in the way. <laughs> uh, we've been asked about what time the pro final's going to be. Um, well, if it all goes to plan, it'll be uh, right after this match. About half oh, past ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. There won't be any commentators here. It'll just be Dave. <laughs> Dave and his setup. Yeah. The, the Phil makes a good point there on the uh, on the YouTube chat that the, the white ball is, is so much better than uh, the white balls in the old sets. Just looking at the latest score in that uh, semi final of the pro event, it's only one nil to Andy McDonald at the moment. I think it's two nil now. Oh, is it spotting up? Oh. He's a battler, is that Andrew MacDonald, I tell you. When he gets the bit between his teeth, he's a match for anyone. Good so shot. Good. Yeah, very good. in charge now in this final the cloth is uh, yeah struck in gold Get back to reality, game, don't you? I do. <laughs> it's a rest, is it? <laughs> They're hard work, these events, I tell you. Did you know I'm 50 next year? Oh, yeah? 50 next year. I thought you already had it. 
Is it a long walk back to Leeds for you? <laughs> we'll be without a car. <laughs> <laughs> Might have a party, but you won't be invited. No, no thanks a lot. <laughs> well, he's potted one. He's potted two, like buses. It's got the yellow in the middle. Is that a plant on those two yellows? It looks like it is. It definitely looks like it. He so wants reds. He can't have them. Oh, he's looking at a ridiculous clip. Oh, he's looking to clip this back in the middle. Be a ridiculous shot. He's got it. Wow. Oh, that is a great shot. That's a great shot. <laughs> this is to put him on the hill. I say it's the first time I've seen Matty play. I'm very impressed. He's settled down nicely now, hasn't he? He's letting his arm go. I just hope he uh, continues this. Just needs to be careful with this positional shot. It's not guaranteed. Oh, what a shot! But it is many shots like that. Yeah, that's confidence. That's precision pool, is that? That's a great clearance, Matty Chellen. Stephen's going to be feeling a bit sick. He came into this match as a uh, favourite. And to be honest, he's, I think apart from the first frame, he's not really, uh, he's not really been at the races. There's not a lot you can do when you're just sat down watching, is there? Well, yeah. Hello, Bronny. You've been quiet for a while. Too much shopping. Emily, I was only joking. Don't take it personally. She was right, then. <laughs> she was very right. <laughs> she was. <laughs> yeah, Farns was the man to beat, without a doubt. He is... Um, He's uh, on fire at the moment. Someone on here just um, on this chat, they just wanted to say, oh, we'd love to see a Fawns with Clint Williamson rematch, because we had that last year, didn't we? We did, and what, what an ending to it. <laughs> oh, my God. If you didn't watch the stream last year, I would advise you watch the final on YouTube, particularly the final frame, Clint against uh, Mark. And the black that Clint pulls out, if that's the right word, to uh, win the final. It was, um, let's just say it wasn't his first choice of pocket that he aimed for. And it was rememberable. Everyone's been talking about it again this weekend. It's over a year ago. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, Monty Challen is five balls away from becoming the Scottish amateur champion. He's not showing any signs of nerves, but I tell you what, he'll be feeling it. Looks like uh, we've got some of his friends on the chat as well. Panda, is that his nickname then? We, I, I weren't going to mention it, guys. <laughs> yeah, that put on his shirt. The, oh. pot, the potting panda. Oh, I wouldn't have to ask him about that in the interview. <laughs> tell you what, he's just going about it, he's like he's down the club. Yep. Oh, he's played that perfect. This is it. Two pots away. He's got to hold himself together. Wow. Oh, is it he's not on is it. Is he snookered? He is. He can't get that in that top left. Top right? Yeah, top left. What, you reckon a double? Only shot. Only shot he's got. A double. You'd play the treble here, wouldn't you? I do like a treble. Yeah? Yeah. 
That's right, Chris. I definitely don't look old enough to be 50. It's twice he's put that on there now. I'm, uh, Are you I, texting that in there? I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm having my passport checked because I'm not, I'm not quite... I'm not quite certain it's right, my birth certificate. Is it that? No. Oh, no, it's my step. There's it's, life. That's all the one in line, isn't it? The panda just broke down. Bob Dean's asking what was the odds on Coral and Mark doing a double? Wow. Not something we've all looked at, isn't it? What's Bronnie saying? Just a, just a bit further up. I can't see what she says. Grandma duties. Uh, I know what you mean. Had that last week. Granddad duties. It's harder work than coming to one of these events. I bet Bruns introduced her grandchild to shopping at a very early age. Three to one and Stephen come to win the match. You do get a bit longer odds on that, wouldn't you? Well, we've seen things turn around. No, oh, yeah. In these things. Oh, I missed, missed it. it. And that's it. Oh, and that is yeah, it. Me. He's conceded. Well done, Marty oh Chalden is the champion. Oh. Unlucky Stephen Campbell. Just wasn't your day, but well done, Matty. So we'll uh, just do a quick presentation and uh, grab a few words with them. Testing, testing. Okay, well, welcome to the uh, presentation ceremony for the uh, Scottish Amateur Final. And um, it was a great final uh, between two great competitors. Unfortunately, there had to be a loser, and uh, but he's had a great weekend. It's Stephen Campbell. Stephen, really disappointed, but um, must be pleased with the performance overall. Yeah, I'm happy to get to the final, just a bit disappointed that I never turned up in the final, but Matty played well, so he deserved to win. You started off well in the final, but then uh, things just didn't quite go your way. Yeah, I just didn't, didn't feel comfortable at all at the table, so just never turned up. Well, um, you did well at um, in the previous event at Bradford. Um, you got to the final here and hopefully one step further in Warwick. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, well, uh, unlucky uh, Stephen, but great performance and less yeah. great performance. Stephen Campbell.
And the winner of the uh, Scottish Amateur Open is Matty Challen. <laughs> Matty, well done. Well done. How does it feel? Um, unbelievable. Didn't play great. Well, played all right. Break killed me in the first uh, three or four breaks. And then I had breaking dish to go I think it's six, two. And then obviously he gave me the last one, really. You uh, didn't look nervous in the final at all. You seemed to be playing uh, fairly free-flowing. No, no. Incredibly nervous. <laughs> Unbelievably. But, uh, yeah, if I don't look at them, fair enough. But terrible. So you are the uh, Scottish Open champion. What does that mean? Um, unbelievable. I'm looking forward to the next one now. OK, well, well played. You are the uh, 2016 Scottish Amateur Champion. Well done. Okay, Matty Challen. So well done Matty, uh, he'll be back in Warwick uh, in August to try and uh, win another uh, amateur event. Uh, we've got the final of the pro event coming up, uh, probably in about 30 minutes, so um, join us again then.